Jesus Christ called Peter to walk on the sea. The first thing Peter did that enabled him to walk on the sea for the first time in his entire life was to get rid of fear. He was not looking at circumstances. You that are where you are considering the circumstances that are surrounding your finances, your marriage, your health, and your family. Are you not seeing the reason why you are sinking into the water of trials and temptation? Peter began to sink the moment he paid attention to the waves that were contrary to his forward movement toward Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is calling you and is taking you out of sickness, out of of poverty, out of failure, out of setback, out of limitation and generational curses. But because you are busy fixing your physical eyes on the happenings around you, fixing your mind on the circumstances of life, particularly the impossibilities that are around you, Life is very easy when it is lived in the word of God. Why can't you fix your eyes on something that is unseen, which is the living and eternal word of God? You may think it's just normal fear. Anytime you go for contract, suddenly you become afraid and you say to yourself, it will not work out as usual. Only to get there, and finally get yourself disappointed. And you come back with the same old story of failure. Women would say, and ladies would say, this is another chance, another man. I've had so many of them in my life. And this one is coming again. It will become the same story. You have suddenly fixed your eyes on your normal life of disappointments. And that is why you continue to have them. As I said, life is very easy when it is left in the word of God. The blessings you are looking for are not in your unpleasant circumstances of life, but in the word of God. Who is the word of God? Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, the son of the living God, is the word of God. The word of God contains God's wonderful promises not just for you, I mean not just for your life, but also for other people's lives. Why are you not fixing your eyes on them? You say that your family is poor and nobody has ever made it. And you fix your eyes on poverty. When will you get out of that poverty? You say it's normal for people to be burning in your family. And your own barrenness is just natural. It's a normal thing. When will you get out of barrenness? You must choose to do what you hate doing so you can create the future that God has planned for you. Not the future you want. Your fear is creating the future you want now. And that is why you're facing what you're facing. Repent. All of us cannot be fearful. David said, don't worry. You are panicking already. Don't worry. I will go and confront the giant and get him defeated. And he did. Everybody came around to celebrate when he did that. All of us cannot be poor. All of us cannot be sick. All of us cannot be barren. All of us cannot be fearful. All of us cannot be panicking. If you cannot, God can if you are serving the devil, and as a result of that, you cannot do anything good, that does not mean that the children of God who are serving God in truth and spirit will not be able to do them. Make haste. This is the right time for you to get above your fears. You may be thinking that it's just a little prophecy. Unless this man is delivered from the spirit of fear, he will not make any 
way forward. That was why the Spirit of God told me, look, tell him to get above here and I've delivered the message. How can you get above fear? What brings fear? Lies of sin in you brings fears in you. Fears in you will prevent you from making a very important decision that would change your life for good. If it is time to go to a place that will bless your business, fear will tell you, don't go. How many people went there and make it? Then you withdraw. You will only get to know that someone went and it has become very, very successful. The same fear will tell you, don't study this course in university. Go and get a very easy one and study. You say, I don't want to stress myself. Let me go for easy subjects. And you just discover that people who got rid of their fears doubled into such course, studied the course, paid the genuine price of which boldness is one. And today they are doing very, very well. And you are busy pointing accusing fingers on your uncles at home. Siblings at home, aged mother, your father. Some of you will say, is that idol in the family? Anything you place in your heart above God becomes your very idol. For instance, that very fear you have placed in your heart above God have become your own idol. And you have become an idol worshiper. What comes from idol goes back to idol. There is no blessing in idolatry, divination, sorcery. Your fears in your heart are idols in you, dominating your life and preventing you from moving forward and receiving the blessings of God. Peter reached to Jesus by faith and on the way he sank because of fear. Jesus was moved by faith to rescue him and said to him, why did you fear, O oh, you of little faith? Why did you doubt? Why are you panicking? Did you fear at the beginning? We are you not walking on water at the beginning? Why did you sink? That was because you panicked, you feared, and you doubted. Fear and doubt are husband and wife. Fear and what? Doubt are what? Husband and wife. You need to break that union, evil union between your heart and fear, between your heart and doubt, between your heart and unbelief. He will try those good things he has been trying to do in the past without any fruitful outcome and the Spirit of God would help him to regain all his lost blessings and glory this time around. The nation America and all Americans should be on guard and do all they can to take care of homeland security. It is not a bad thing for you to go through everyone's record and make sure you monitor everybody so that the eternal security will be protected. Lives of people will not be wasted. This will help you to stop further attacks that are coming from wrong indoctrination. Did you hear what I said? Attacks that are coming from what? Wrong indoctrination. People whose minds are polluted to believe that they can just go to the midst of people with 
explosive devices with man-made weapons and other harmful items or weapons to kill other people and themselves. They should also take good care of their forests to avoid some people going in there to set fire there that will cause massive destruction. The same prophetic advice goes to European countries. Which countries? Can I hear you? All European countries. Be on guard. Watch your neighbor and see that lives are protected. We are praying for other continents as well. Like Asia, Africa, and Australia. Don't allow yourselves to be used by evil spirits to promote war or blood shed. Put an end to terrorism. Put an end to what? Because you can. You don't want your own life to be destroyed. So also, don't be used by evil spirits to destroy other people's lives or nations. The nation Israel and the people of Israel should know that they are God's choice. And as God's choice, they need to continue to have the nature of God that will not promote killing, stealing, and destruction. There are negative consequences when it comes to blood shed. God is a merciful father and has overlooked the wrongs that are done already. God has promised you a new beginning. Forgive yourself and forgive other people and let there be peace in your region. In Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Shalom. You say you're bold because you can smoke anything smokable, get addicted to anything, and post anything and say anything without minding the consequences. That is satanic. You say you're bold and have become a terrorist, an armed robber, a kidnapper, wasting people's lives and blood. And you call that one boldness, that is purely satanic. I hope viewers you are learning. How many people have you successfully made to lose their jobs? At the end of the day, you came back to your senses and you are now regretting. How many people have you caused to have broken homes to separate from their God's given marriages? And now you are regretting. How many leaders have you used your own words to destroy only to realize that the person who praised to be in that position has become worse than the person you have destroyed with your words and works? Here you are regretting. What is the difference between you and what you are hearing now? Everyone has to repent. No matter the religious group you belong to. No matter the kind of tribe you come from. No matter your position in the system of leadership or governance. 
You have to work out your own salvation, not tomorrow, but now. It is what you sow, you will reap. Imagine how many sorries you have received. Imagine how many times you yourself went to somebody to say sorry. Somebody you have caused his downfall. Imagine how many times you've gone to ministers of God to say sorry sir. We were once your blasphemers. We posted terrible things on social media handles that destroyed your image. We were only being led by evil spirit, the devil. How many times? What about the posting? Have you pulled them down? If you have pulled them down on social media handles, have you also deleted them from the minds and memories of people? If you are to be punished according to your wrongdoings, do you think you will live to see today? We are alive by the mercy of God. You are alive. Because God decided to allow his divine verdict to speak for you. And to stand to defend you. Viewers, as you're watching, ask yourself, how many people have I caused to suffer in this physical world? Are you a leader? There are jobless people everywhere. Orphans are crying. Youths are lamenting. No infrastructure. No development. Corruption is at the highest level. What are you doing to stop this social menace? You are still saying that you have not shed any blood. Are you not saying that your unwillingness to be used by God to solve problems in your own country is causing many to die and leave this world. Whenever you are sick, you want to be treated and you want to recover. What about people that are sick without means to do that? And you are in a position to help and put things right. And you are just becoming tribalistic. You are becoming religious. You are becoming hard-hearted. Extremely wicked. And unwilling to proffer any tangible solution. What is the difference between you and what you are listening to now? Repent! So for those of you that used to hide and said, or rather say, I will not go to the city of Jesus International Ministry because there is camera everywhere. I will not go to the city of Jesus International Ministry because people will get to know what happened to me, what I did in the past, and what I'm doing. Why do you also allow yourself to be used to cage your life and destiny. If there is no genuine confession, if there is no genuine revelation, will there be anything like solution or salvation? Repent. You thought because you are a public figure, you thought because you are a famous person or you are very, very rich, You thought because you are well known on social media. That is why you are hiding. Those things that are causing you to hide are the things that will lead you to hell. 
on the last day. Which one is better? No one cares whether you're famous or not. No one cares whether you're rich or not. No one even cares whether you're poor or not. What people care about is your salvation. And the day of salvation is now. Social media handles are created to propagate the good news of the kingdom of God. Your salvation is part of this good news. Why are you delaying the day of your own salvation? Why are you not repenting now? If you are not afraid to commit sin, why are you afraid to confess them? Why? Have you ever asked yourself that question? If these things are being committed privately by me, why are they not being confessed publicly by me? Why am I hiding? Who can hide from the Spirit of God? That thing you are hiding now will be exposed. The Bible says there is nothing that is hidden that will not be exposed. Meaning, there is nothing that is hidden that will not be revealed. If you hide all your sins now, will they also be hidden from God on the last day? The answer is no. Why not get rid of them so you can move closer to God and his heavenly blessings? Why? You are fond of watching like this and you are listening to other people receiving their own salvation. In the name of your association, in the name of your faith, in the name of your wealth or position in the world, you are sitting down in the kingdom of darkness. You are sitting down with your sins and sinful desires. You are sitting down with Satan and all his evil agents. You know very well that you have already handed over your soul to Satan. If you hand over something to someone, you can as well take it back. Why are you not willing to take back your soul that you secretly handed over to Satan? If your wife tells you come to church, you begin to abuse your wife or your husband will tell you, let's go to church. You begin to threaten your husband or your dad will tell you, come, let us go to church. You are ready to fight and even run away from home. Where can you run to? Where can you hide from the spirit of God? Nobody will work out your own salvation for you. It is your personal assignment. An assignment that is given to you by God. You cannot afford to fail God. As you are running, you cannot hide. Why are you not going to living ministries where you can be set free for the salvation of your soul? Why? You say you got your right to live and you're smoking, drinking alcohol, joining secret courts. You are ready to sacrifice your parents in the name of money ritual and getting rich. And nobody ever believed that you are into such secret acts and you're hiding in your house. When they talk about church, you get offended. You criticize ministers of God. How long will you continue to do that? That position you're occupying, how long will it last? Think about your life. Say you're a public figure. Will you continue to be a public figure forever? There are ex-public figure. Go and find out. If you are currently a public figure, you will soon become an ex-public figure. Why can't you use that position? To honor God. Why can't you receive your salvation and use that position to solve problems? Anytime you want to vie for political position, you go deeper into secret societies and have satanic covenants. Covenants that will not allow you to bring in development to your own nation, 
development to your own tribe, development to your own family members. You can see how stingy you are. You can see how religious you are. You have become an ethnic person to the core, promoting tribalism at the highest level. People that are working with you, check. Where do they come from? What purpose are they working for you? Because of how you want to enrich your personal account. Siphon everything to your personal interest and account. That is why you are selecting the people you are selecting and putting in a position to work with you. I'm speaking to all of you. You know yourself. Repent! You that used to say that your husband is not going to the church, you are attending. Because of that, you have become aggressive, not humble, not willing to do your duty as a wife at home. Whose agent are you? And you that used to say that your wife is not attending the same church you are going. And you know that you two that are going to a place, you are addicted, living lives of sin. And you say, I'm the man. You must follow me to my church. And your wife is looking at your lives of sin and say, are you truly going to church? I can see addictions in you. And you know you have been addicted doing this and doing that. You say, no, I'm a man. Nobody should speak to me. You start fighting with your wife and start hating her pastor or her minister. When they say anything about the church of your wife, you get angry. I say, don't mind them. They are the same. The person is fake. Even when you know that you yourself are the fake one. Repent. We are not fighting against ourselves. We are brothers and sisters. When I go to this, this church and I go to the other church, we are but what? A team. One in God, in Jesus Christ, and in the Holy Spirit. We are baptized with one baptism. We have a common father, our God in heaven. Sometimes you see somebody who is talented, and he can offer gifts to another place. You say, no, that place is not my church. I need to be paid money. Who gave you the gift? Yourself? people around you, or Satan, if that gift comes from God, and you know God is everywhere, you can use it anywhere to render free and full services to God for God's sake. What separates true children of God from the fake one? The true children of God have received gifts from God freely, and they have been instructed by Jesus Christ to give out those gifts freely to other people. Why are you segregating? Why are you causing confusion? Services should be rendered freely in the presence of God so that God can mark your work and give you your reward. What should be the reward of a genuine child of God? The reward of every genuine child of God is the Holy Spirit. If you love money, you will never have money. If you hate money, money will love you and you will have money. Those who hate money promote integrity, hard work, honesty, sincerity, truthfulness, and the like. On the contrary, those who merely love money but hate God, rendered as full services for the sake of money. They don't mind anything called integrity, good name. For instance, you see people that are saying, I don't have contract. These are people that God blessed with one before. But because of mismanagement, love of money, inability to see beyond they decided to use their lives of sin to destroy that relationship 
that enabled them to have the contract. How many people that gave you contracts that you are still communicating with, at peace with? How many contracts that you have received have you successfully completed, delivered the way it should be? If you are given a contract, awarded a contract, and you have troubles with everybody, you are not even rendering efficient services, how would a person call you back or even refer you to someone else? Everyone is connected. That person that has given you contract has so many other people he can easily refer you to. But once you are not able to manage that relationship very well and give out efficient service or services to the person, you will by yourself close that door. And you'll be the one to run back to God and say, I need contract. I'm no more getting contract. God will be looking at you and seemingly asking you, what about the one I gave you in the past? How did you lose that, that connection? If you love money, money will hate you and you will never have money. If you do not love money, you will protect your integrity. You will render efficient service or services. And that alone will allow more opportunities to be given to you that will enable you to have more money. This should go viral to everybody. Especially those of you that are seeking for what you have once had in the past. Maintain your relationship. Use your gift to render quality services, not just to yourself and to your neighbor, but also to God. The problem many people have is when you tell them the truth, they will work against that truth. If you tell them this is your problem, they will say, no, it's not. We are as it is. The Bible has heavenly standards. And you shall know the truth, and the truth will do what? Set you free. You cannot be set free without knowing the truth. Prophetic messages are messages of truth, raw truth from God. Now I will tell you what was, what is, and what will happen. If you have been told what was, and you know that that was actually true, or that is actually true, and you are saying no, just because you don't want people to hear. Maybe you have hidden such sickness or disease or problem from every other person. You say no. It is not true. You are saying no. You don't need solution. Because you shall know the truth. And the truth will do what? Set you free. You must know that this is a lie. And avoid lying. You must know that sins and sinful desires are your enemies. And you must avoid them. If you don't know, you will continue to commit them. That is why you see people going to church and going back to bars to drink alcohol. Going back to places or even in their own house to drink alcohol, smoke, and live lives of sin. This is just because they don't know. If you tell them that living a life of sin is bad, they will say, no, we have our right to live. If it is the wife, they will tell the wife, remember I paid your dowry. If you don't want this kind of lifestyle, then you can go. If it is the wife, the wife might say, oh, see, I am still a young woman. After all, I pay this bill and pay that bill. Marriage is not by force. It is not a do or die issue. Instead of you to kill me, you can leave. Let us separate. Why are you marrying and remarrying? Why? You are a single mother here. You are a single father here. Repent. It is not love 
that cause separation or divorce. It must to be something that is opposite to love. It is not faithfulness that cause divorce or separation. It must be something that is completely opposite to faithfulness, like adultery or the so-called infidelity. These are the things that can cause all these things. If you are being told, you are going too far, breaking the marriage covenant. You get angry and go and fight for divorce. You keep having the child here and that child there. All of us cannot be the same. If your life is like that, it does not mean that someone else's life must be like that. Repent now. That is why many people have tagged a lot of ministers of God. The same. If where you worshipped allows lies of sin, we don't allow it here. At the city of Jesus International Ministry, you cannot use money to buy anything here. The church was built without your money. You never contributed anything. Nobody asked you for anything here. You cannot come here and say you want to give this amount and give this amount and begin to control the ministers of God in the city of Jesus international ministry. It is not allowed. I will never be allowed. You that are moving freely, physically, whereas you are tied up spiritually. Are you not seeing what is happening to your finances, spiritual life, health, marriage, and the like? Nothing is working out. Evil spirits will enter blasphemous to stop you from going to any living ministry. Where God himself, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit will use genuine ministers of God to set you free. That is why you see them quickly going on social media handles to paint living ministries black. Living ministers black on social media handles. Satan cannot attack his agents. You see them painting their own agents white so that you will say this is a living ministry whereas such a ministry needs deliverance they want you to see genuine ministers as fake and fake ministers are genuine and you are seemingly being deceived after the publication do you know how many people that sent emails to me called sent messages and charts and apologized. And they said, when you came out, a lot of campaign of calumny against you. We wanted to support and help. But when we saw the publications and many terrible things that are said against you and your ministry, we held our peace, decided to sit on the fence. But now we have known the truth. No turning back. This can only be done by Jesus Christ. Bringing the souls of the unsaved to a place of salvation. Clap for Jesus for that. <laughs> Are you not seeing that the so-called blasphemy and works of Satan are together being used to move this ministry to the highest level where God wants it to be. Let's clap for God for that. A lot of workers and members that we are sitting on the face only coming to spy. They were even the agents of the woman. They sent message apologizing. How they have been communicating all the messages, all the things they have been discussing with the same woman. Apologizing that they never knew that all these things were fake and false. They are going to pledge their loyalty to God. 
Let us clap for God for that. If this thing did not happen in this manner to glorify God, a lot of fake people would have continued to live with me. Walk in my ministry. Pretend to be close with hypocritical lifestyle. But God allowed everything to happen so that the wheat could be separated from the chaff. They are still free to worship God in spirit and in truth and even attend services and do the work of God. For I do not have anything against any flesh and blood. I understand my spiritual warfare. It is purely spiritual. We are waging constant spiritual war against Satan, against Lucifer, against snake, against witches and wizards, against occultic kingdoms and powers, against idols of all ranks, powers and authorities, against the queen of the coast, Leviathan, Dacumba, ancient dragon, ancient beast, spirit of antichrist or end time. We are waging war constantly against sins and sinful desires. And we are on the winning side forever. Someone are just asking me, what is the account of your ministry? We stopped supporting. We never wanted to support because of the rumors. We just goggled and we saw terrible things. And we decided to sit on the fence. But now, we want, if you are led by God, do you not know our website? If truly you are led by God, do you need to send a message to me? The website is there. And you have the original information on our website. www.cojim.org www.logif.org Find the right information and allow the Holy Spirit to direct you. Why are you coming to me? You did not come to me and everything is completed. And more things are coming. If you are genuine, do you need to come to me? Do the right thing. I'm doing the right thing, please. Do the right thing. You know the right thing. We attend to people here, free of charge. We will never, never charge money to attend to anybody here. That is why God is working here. Don't begin to inform me and say, where is your account? Did I tell you that I need money? Where is your account? What is your business with my account? I'm speaking to all of you. Repent. My God is not mammon. My God is not money. My God is the living God Almighty, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. And you are addicted. If you are a member and you have these kind of lives of sin that God Himself does not want, what makes you a member? What makes you a member is not unrighteousness, but righteousness. You cannot be saying that you're a member when you have lies of sin in you. You've got to repent. 
the people you are seeing are not members here. They came for the first time. But this offers an opportunity to address everybody. You say, oh, I want to be a member of Kojim. Anybody is invited to join Kojim membership. But there are conditions. Christ has spelled out. Number one, you must live a life that is free from what? Sins and sinful desires. That is number one. That will enable you to make God's word the foundation of your life. You must learn not to see your fellow human beings as enemies. But Satan and his evil agents. You must learn to love your neighbor as yourself. And then love God above all. You must learn to care for other people around you. Being a member is like using everything God has given to you to help the less privileged, the orphans, the widows. If you are not ready to respond to such spiritual tasks, why are you claiming to be a member of a ministry like this? You don't live a life without sins and sinful desires. You are not even ready to love your neighbors. You are busy accusing your siblings, your parents, uncles. You are busy speaking against other political parties. These are not qualities that can make you a member of the city of Jesus International Ministry. This ministry is not a political ground. It's not what? This is a place where God lives through his word and by his spirit. God accepts everyone and loves everyone. If you are a member and you don't pay your tithe or do your responsibilities in the house of God, what makes you a member? If you don't give anything to God, you give everything to Satan. To Satan. Satan does not need to give you a tithe card. Satan does not need to preach to you. He does not even need to let you know. He will collect everything by force. He knows how he goes about that. His sicknesses and diseases. Tell me how many times you've been to the hospital to buy this or that. To pay for this or that. Tell me how many misfortunes that has, have taken place in your own business. What you've been gathering for years. You just found out that he's been lost within a twinkle of an eye. Who did you think that collected those money? God can send his ministers to remind you. But well, Satan does not need to send anybody to remind you. He comes at his time he wants it or wants them and take them by force. Malachi chapter 3 from verses 10. Bring the tithe into the storehouse. Test me in this and see if I will not open the floodgates of heaven. And pour on you the blessings that your storeroom will not be enough to contain them. Verses 11, he said, I will rebuke the devourers. Who are those devourers? They are talking about setback, near success syndrome, barrenness. Sickness, disease, nightmares. Who will help you to rebuke the devourers of your life? If God does not rebuke them, if you like, fast for 200 years, 400 days, from year to year. If you like, go and lie down in the prayer mountain. That prayer will not be answered until you do the right thing. Blessings are only given to the obedient ones. The blessings are meant to seek and find you. The Bible says, these blessings will follow you if you carefully observe and obey the voice of the Lord your God. That God himself is commanding you today. If you are a member of a ministry like this and you have no single responsibility here, you will have many responsibilities for Satan. 
Are you a member or not? By your own fruit, you shall be known. This building was built. Nobody came out to say, bring this or bring that. Nobody came out to say, I will supply trailer of cement. I will buy musical instrument. I will buy this or buy that. You only came and everything is completed like this. And you're seated. Even the chair you're sitting down, check. The cost of one chair. If you are a member and you don't have any single responsibility, what kind of a member are you? It is very important. If I say I'm a man of God and I have gotten no responsibility, what kind of a minister of God am I? Someone who only collects and collects, but does not give out spiritual things, physical things, and the like. We are in a generation where people, anytime they see a ministry that gives charitably to people, you will see members of such a ministry and say, why is it not done to me? You will see members of the ministry saying, this is a mighty ocean. I will not take the little I have and put in a mighty ocean. This is a generation where people, instead of helping ministers of God, they work against them become extremely stingy and discourage every other person from doing the work of God. A member is someone Shalom viewers all around the world. You are all welcome to today's live program. is coming to you from the city of Jesus International Ministry in Jesus Christ's name. We are here to remind ourselves Of what the Bible says. The Bible says, let us come to the house of God with praises and thanksgiving. And appreciation. So with the joy of the Holy Spirit in our hearts, Let us thank God. Let us thank let us thank Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit for what they have done. For what they are doing and for what they will do. We 
remember that testifiers are those who appreciate God and value his being. Testifiers are those who appreciate Jesus Christ and value his being. And testifiers are those who appreciate the Holy Spirit and value his being. So as testifiers, let us give thanks to God for the gift of life, for his mercy, his love and kindness, and for his protection. Let us pray. Jesus Christ's name we pray. Let us come before the Lord. As sinners in need of his mercy. And confess our sins. Confess your sins and ask God to show you mercy. And also ask for the grace to forgive others. For the Bible said, forgive our sins. as we forgive those who sin against us. So ask God to show you mercy and grant you the grace to forgive others.
the man of God, Christopher Oji, will always say, the best way to revenge is to forgive. Let us pray. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Let us commit the ministers of God into the hand of God. Commits the minister of God, Christopher Oji, into the hand of God. Let us pray for fresh anointing upon him. Let us pray that God will empower him Let us pray that God will protect him and strengthen him Let us pray that the grace will be with him always. And pray that God will take him from strength to strength, from glory to glory. And let us pray for the city of Jesus International Ministry. Let us pray for God's protection. 
and pray. For more anointing upon this land. And let us pray for all the partners of this ministry. Those that have decided to partner with Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. Let us pray that the grace will never depart from them. And their household. And let us pray for all the members. The viewers. And all the lovers of this ministry. That the hands of God will, will rest upon them. And also commit the workers into the throne of grace. You know, ask God to strengthen all the workers. And grant us the grace to work for him and him alone. And the grace to achieve heaven at last. Let us commit to this service. Before the throne of grace. And ask God to take control today. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Oh Heavenly Father, we have gathered to join the host of heaven to return all the glory to you. We have gathered to say thank you for your love, thank you for your mercy. Father, thank you for making yourself available today. And thank you for answering our prayers.
we say, may your name be blessed. May your name be highly exalted. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. We soak today's service in the blood of Jesus Christ. And we soak the servant of God, Christopher Oji, in the blood of Jesus Christ. And we soak this arena in the blood of Jesus Christ. And we declare today's service open in the name of the Father. In the name of the Son. And in the name of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. And we say shalom everyone. Oh, turn to your neighbor and greet your neighbor. Shalom. Oh, shalom is our covering greeting and that means peace. we say let the peace of the Lord rest upon us now and forevermore in Jesus Christ's name Today is the day that the Lord has made that we should rejoice and be glad in Him. So please, if you are happy to be, you know, in the house of your father, You know, please, if you are happy that you are not in the hospital, you are in the house of your father, you know, it's time to celebrate the King of Kings. Oh, celebrate the King of Kings! Celebrate the King of Kings! It's all about Jesus Christ. It's all about Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Celebrate Him. You are alive today because the grace has kept you. Celebrate the King of Kings. He's the only King that seated in the throne of grace. He's the I am that I am, the Alpha and Omega. The beginning and the end. The only true God. The only God that seated in the throne of Jasper. There's none to compare to my father. Celebrate the King of Kings. It's worthy to be praised. It's worthy to be praised. Oh, thank him for fighting your battles. Thank him for standing out. Oh, celebrate Jesus Christ. Celebrate Jesus Christ. You are alive today because His mercy has kept you. Oh, celebrate God. Oh, I can't stop loving God. 
I can't stop loving the King of Kings because I know that I'm my love today because His mercy have kept me. Oh, celebrate Jesus Christ. It's all about His love. It's all about His mercy. It's all about His kindness. Oh God, I thank you. Oh Father, we bless your name. Oh Father, thank you for giving up all for our sake. Oh, thank you Lord for being faithful even when we are not. Oh, Father, we can't stop loving you. Oh, thank you for paying the price. Oh, may your name be blessed. Oh, Father, Father, may your name be highly exalted. Oh, be thou exalted, Father. Oh, Father, thank you for what you have done. Oh, thank you for what, for what you are doing. Oh, thank you for what you are about to do. Oh, we return all the glory to you. Indeed, it's all about you. Indeed, it's all about Jesus Christ. The son of the living God. Oh, thank you for showing yourself strong. May your name be blessed. Oh, thank you for your servant, Christopher Oji. Oh, oh, Father, thank you for releasing him in this state. Oh, we can't stop thanking you. In Jesus Christ's name. So the service have started. Please don't wait till the man of God, Christopher Orji, mounts the pulpit. You know, it's not all about him. You know, it's all about the God in him. It's all about Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. So the host of heaven, they are here already. So all you need to do is just to connect in spirit. You know, and watch God in action. Just connect in spirit, you will feel the 
کویس So please, if you are just coming, all the viewers, if you are just joining us. want to remind ourselves the best way to disgrace this to disgrace the center and all its evil works If you really want God to step in, you know, and change things, please, it's time to let go. You know, it's time to let go of sin and sinful desires. You can't bribe the Holy Spirit. And you can't fight the devil with sin. It's not possible. So and it's time to forgive everyone that have wronged you. So it's time for us to stop fighting the wrong battle. You know, as the man of God, Christopher Audrey, will always say. So our enemies, they are, you know, it's not, it's not our brothers or sisters. Is the devil himself. So please, it's time to forgive. You know, it's time to let go of the pain of the past. One of the best quotable quotes of the man of God, Christopher Orge. He says, the best way to revenge is to forgive. It's the best way. If you really want to revenge, just forgive. So as we do so, we pray and believe that our case will not escape today's anointing in Jesus Christ's name. We leave you with Jesus Christ. In Jesus Christ's name. Amen. God bless you all.
she didn't want heaven without us. Was greater. Us now, what a beautiful name it is! What a wonderful name it is! The name of Jesus Christ the King. What a wonderful name it is! And nothing comes, and nothing compares. Let's go. Oh, what a powerful name it is. Let me hear you. What a powerful name it is. What a powerful name. What a powerful name. Nothing compares. Oh, what a powerful name it is. The name. I want to hear your voice. What a powerful name. Oh, what a powerful name. Oh, what a powerful name. Jesus Christ. The King wept to Jesus. Oh, what a powerful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a powerful name it is. The name. One with God, the Lord Most High, one of the Most High. Your glory in creation, now revealed in you. Oh, Christ, what a beautiful name, what a beautiful name. Beautiful name. Ooh, yeah. It is the name of Jesus. See, she didn't want heaven without us. So, Jesus, you brought heaven. You brought heaven. Your love 
was greater
Your spirit leads me on Find your love Lord, unveil my eyes Let me see you face to face the knowledge of your love as you lead me oh oh Lord renew my mind as your will unfolds in my life Every day, power of your love. Hey, hey, hey. Hold, me close. hold me close. So right. Can you bring? Jesus, hey, 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 hey. and as I wait, I'll rise up like an eagle. Hey, he goes, and I will so with you. Your spirit leads me on.
is heaven Treasures of my heart are not my soul. Yeah, 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 yeah. Treasures of my heart are not my soul. And of my soul, yeah. There's nothing like your presence. There's nothing like your presence. Sing your presence. It's heaven to me. There's nothing like your presence. Your presence is heaven. There's nothing like your presence. There's nothing like your presence. Your to me. Oh Jesus. Oh Jesus. Your presence is heaven to me, oh Jesus, oh Jesus. Let me hear you. Let me hear you sing. Presence, it's my way. Let's go, 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 oh Jesus, oh Jesus. Your presence. I want to hear you one more time. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. Your presence is heaven. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fail me. All my days. I've been held in your ass From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head And I will see Of the goodness of God Let's go again I love you, Lord For your mercies never failed me all my days I've been held in your hands From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head And I will see Of the goodness of God I know my life Oh my I've been faithful, Jesus. All my life you have been so, so good. In every breath that I am able, and I will see of the goodness of God. I love your voice. Listen. He has led you through the fire In darkest night You were close like no other Lord, I know you as a father I know you as a friend And I have been Of the goodness of God And all my life
go back. I love your voice. Help me. Ha! You have led me through the fire in darkest night. You were close like no other. I don't know you as a father. you as a father. Oh. oh, oh. is running out is running after me your goodness is running out is running after me with my heart laid I'm serene that now I give you everything oh your goodness is running after is this goodness running after you I want you to hear you say your goodness is running it's running. It is running after me. It is running. Oh, oh, oh. Hey, running after me. Hey. So keep on in your Jesus, you're my Lord. I want to hear you sing. Oh, you're my Lord. So keep on in Hey, on in Jesus, you're my Lord. Are you ready for this? Is he your helper? Do you really see him as your helper? Okay, let me tell you why. Jesus, my Lord. Now listen. Jesus, my Lord. Hey, so give on in Jesus Christ. Hey, Jesus, come! I want you to sing it for the last time with your strength, with your heart. Hey, hey, come on! Jesus, my holy Lord, hallelujah. In you I live and have my being. Jesus, my holy 
Somebody make a joyful noise to the King of Kings. Raise your hands and come on, give him a wave of free. Come on, give the Lord a big shout. If you have something, wave it to Jesus. Come on, wave it to Jesus. Wave your banner to Jesus. Come on. Are you ready to give him some praise? Come on. Wherever you're watching it from, come on, put your hands together like this. Like this, yeah. Somebody make some noise. Put your hands together like this, yeah. Come on. Come on. Like this, yeah. Like this, yeah. Like this, yeah. Come on. Like this, yeah. We serve the God that is coming soon. Are you ready to receive him? These are the days of Elijah. Hey! Declaring the words of the Lord, yeah. These are the days of your servant Moses. Righteousness being in restored. And these are the days of great trials. Of famine and darkness and so hey, we are the voice in the days that's crying. Prepare ye the ways of the Lord. Say, behold ye. You know the song, yeah. Hey, come on, come on. At a strong best call. Lift your voice. It's a year of jubilee. You know the song? These are the days of Elijah. Let's sing it together. The words of the Lord. These are the days. These are the days of your servant Moses. Righteousness being restored. These are the days. These are the days of great trial. Of farming and that. Farming and that. It's all over the screen. It's all over the screen. We are the voice and the. I want you to sing it loud to Jesus. Words of the Lord. We're gonna sing it again. Yeah. I want to hear your voices. Over the nations. Come on. Lift your voice. We're gonna sing it, everybody. One more time. These are the days, say. These are the days of Elijah. Declaring the words, declaring the words of the Lord. These are the days of Elijah. These are the days of your son. Moses, more righteous, righteousness being restored. These are the days, these are the days of great trial, of famine, of famine and darkness and so we are the voice. We are the voice in the. I am the voice in the days of. Behold, they come. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's riding on the cloud. Hey, shining like the sun. Lift your voice. Hey, it's a year of jubilee. Year of jubilee. Hey, hey, hey. You know the verse too. We're gonna sing the verse too. Listen to me. These are the days of Ezekiel. The dry bones becoming as flesh. Hey! These are the days of your servant David rebuilding the temple of praise. You know the song? These are the days of your servant. Right things and sadness and so. So we are the laborers in your vineyard, declaring the words of the Lord. One more time, behold ye, come on, shining like the sun, and the trumpets call, lift, lift your voice, year of jubilee, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, we're gonna come back to verse two. Are you ready? These are the days. These are the days of Ezekiel. He's on the screen. Dry bones becoming as flesh. 
These are the days of your servant David rebuilding the temple of praise. And these are the days of great triumph. The fields are all right in the world. So we are the voice in the days of crying. Prepare ye the ways of the Lord. Everybody sing me holy. Come on, everybody. Let me hear you sing it loud now. Let me hear you sing it loud now. Let me hear you sing it loud now. Yeah. If you know there's no God like Jesus, we serve the living God. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Raise a shout to the King of Glory. Hey, there's no God like our God. Hey, come on, come on. Are you ready to declare Him King of all? Listen, listen. There's no God like Jehovah. Hey, there's no God like Jehovah. Can I hear you? Lift your voice. I want to hear you. Come on. Your voices. No God like Jesus. Nobody like you, Lord. Nobody like you, Lord. Lift your voice. Lift your voice tonight. Testify this morning. Nobody like you, Lord. Nobody, nobody, nobody. Lift your voice. Testify. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Lift your voice. There's no God like him. There's no God like him. Oh, boss. Hey, nobody, 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 nobody can do me like you do, God. Can love me like you love me, God. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Behold thee, go, riding on the cloud, singing off, at the trumpet star. Listen to this one. Come on, listen to this one. Put your hands like this, like this. Come on. Somebody give him a mighty shout of praise. I want to sing this one to you. Are you ready now? Come on. Listen. Sing praises to the king, for he is the king of kings. Sing praises to the king, for he is the king of kings. Say. Sing praises to the king, for he is the king of kings. Say. Give him glory for he. For he is the king of kings, say, give him glory. Lift your voice, sir. Are you ready now? He is the king of kings and lord of lords. We serve a mighty God, yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, sing praises to king of kings. King praises to the king. He is the king of kings. Let me begin. Sing praises to for he is the king. Sing praises to the king. He is the king of kings. Everybody say. Sing praises to the king. For he is the king of kings. Sing praises to the king. Give him glory. He is the king of kings. Give him glory. Listen. All hail Jesus. All hail, all hail King Jesus. Hey, come on, come on, come on, come on. All hail him on the set. All hail King Jesus. Lift the voice. All hail. All hail Emmanuel. Christ the sovereign God. All hail Emmanuel, say. 
He reigns for us. He reigns forever. Say, He reigns forever. Forever and ever. Forever and ever. And evermore. Say, say, He reigns forever. Lift your voice. He reigns. And never. He reigns. 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 He reigns for he reigns forever and nevermore. I want you to learn it. He reigns forever. Church. He reigns. Lifted high, lift him, exalt his holy name, lift him up, exalt his holy. Okay, for the last time, listen. See, celebrate Jesus, celebrate. Hey, say, celebrate. Jesus, celebrate. I want to hear you song. Everybody, where you are, sing celebrate. Celebrate, Jesus, celebrate. Celebrate, Jesus, celebrate. You sing, yeah. Celebrate, Jesus, celebrate. He is risen. He is risen. Hey, he is risen. And he lives forevermore. Sing it on. He is risen. Hey, hey, okay. Come on, celebrate. Come on, celebrate. Celebrate. Come on, celebrate. The resurrection of the Lord. The resurrection. See, praising my Lord in victory. I'm praising my Lord in victory. I'm praising my Lord in victory. Hallelujah. You know the song. Praising my, praising my Lord. In victory, I'm praising my Lord. Now the last song, listen. See, every praise is to our God. Lift of us, every word of worship in one our call. Every praise, every praise. And one of God, yeah, yeah, every praise. This is the last one. Listen, God, my Savior, hey, God, my healer, God, my deliverer. Yes, He is. Yes, he is God, my Savior. God, my 
healer. Come on, deliver. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. God, my Savior. God, my healer. You sing along. God, my deliverer. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. God, my Savior. Lift your hands and sing to the King. God, my healer. He's my healer. He's my provider. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. For the last time, God, my Savior. God, my maker. God, my deliverer. Yes, he is. Somebody make some noise. Hallelujah to the King of Kings. Christ called Peter to walk on the sea. The first thing Peter did that enabled him to walk on the sea for the first time in his entire life was to get rid of fear. He was not looking at circumstances. You that are where you are considering the circumstances that are surrounding your finances, your marriage, your health, and your family. Are you not seeing the reason why you are sinking into the water of trials and temptation? Peter began to sink the moment he paid attention to the waves that were contrary to his forward movements toward Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is calling you and is taking you out of sickness, out of poverty, out of failure, out of setback, out of limitation and generational curses. But because you are busy fixing your physical eyes on the happenings around you, fixing your mind on the circumstances of life, particularly the impossibilities that are around you. Life is very easy when it is lived in the word of God. Why can't you fix your eyes on something that is unseen, which is the living and eternal word of God? You may think it's just normal fear, 
Anytime you go for contract, suddenly you became afraid and you say to yourself, it will not work out as usual. Only to get there and finally get yourself disappointed. And you come back with the same old story of failure. Women would say, and ladies would say, this is another chance, another man. I've had so many of them in my life. And this one is coming again. It will become the same story. You have suddenly fixed your eyes on your normal life of disappointments. And that is why you continue to have them. As I said, life is very easy when it is left in the word of God. The blessings you are looking for are not in your unpleasant circumstances of life, but in the word of God. Who is the word of God? Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, the son of the living God, is the word of God. The word of God contains God's wonderful promises, not just for you, I mean, not just for your life, but also for other people's lives. Why are you not fixing your eyes on them? You say that your family is poor and nobody has ever made it. And you fix your eyes on poverty. When will you get out of that poverty? You said it's normal for people to be barren in your family. And your own barrenness is just natural. It's a normal thing. When will you get out of barrenness? You must choose to do what you hate doing. So you can create the future that God has planned for you. Not the future you want. Your fear is creating the future you want now. And that is why you're facing what you're facing. Repent. All of hey, Co. Jim, just wanted to give a, a brief testimony. Something that I've noticed is that the man of God was giving this message about the ancient root of poverty, probably about three months ago or so. And I was watching this and kind of realizing that for myself, oftentimes I have wanted to give in the past. I've been a Christian for probably about 15 to 20 years. Um, and I gave significantly um, certain times when I was younger. But um, at certain times, I guess I would say that I became disheartened. Um, sometimes I'd see how the church is maybe using the funds or this missions group that I was giving to. And I would just, you know, assume that... Uh, it just didn't seem like it was something that I wanted to give to anymore. It seems like there was maybe mismanagement on the way that I was perceiving it. So after watching the man of God, Christopher Orgy, um, delivering somebody and the um, person, the demon that was talking about why they cause poverty um, because people aren't uh, freely giving from their heart, I suddenly was starting to realize that I had been listening to those same voices um, in my heart and my wife had been faithfully giving, but for myself, I was holding back and, um, you know, paying off debts, um, those types of things. And I have a really decent job as a manager. I'm a sales manager, um, for a large company, um, called sleep country in Canada. And uh, I was just noticing, even though I'm doing really well, um, there's definitely been an increase in how I've noticed us giving for the last three months specifically and consistently that there has been a real boost in sales as well as just noticing that customers would cancel um, oftentimes and I would always feel like I'm being stolen from or I'm just it's like the circumstances or something just isn't quite right so I noticed that after giving significantly and expecting God, um, there was a um, specific phrase that I believe the man of God was talking about where when you're giving, you're giving to God and God would, oh, I remember this demon was talking about how when people are giving, they should give to God so that God can give it back to them and they can abundantly keep giving more. That's the whole purpose is that we give so that God can give back to us and we can keep giving more and more in an increased way. And so just me psychologically, just thinking about how the kingdom of God operates that way was really inspiring because I want to be able to give to the kingdom and I want to be able to, to be faithful in that way. And, and the man of God was just talking about how uh, in Malachi, just um, like talking about how we're stealing from him um, and how... In terms of ministries, there's lots of ministers that 
are not really receiving what they should be. And that's something that I was also feeling conviction about is that I used to also be in ministry for a short period of time, two or three years as a missionary. Um, and I just, I felt almost just like I wasn't even being provided for. So it's almost the same thing that I was doing uh, that I was uh, not receiving. I end up doing to others. And so I, I wanted to break that and as well as be able to be generous in my heart and just let that part of my heart flow that had been stopped up. Ever since then, I feel like I've noticed a change in terms of sales. Um, it's been a significant increase. Um, and uh, each year I typically win an award at my company. Um, and so this year I won the one of the runner-up awards um, that just happened. Um, I was a third um, out of the company uh, in our region of about 22 associates. And so I just wanted to give a testimony about that as well, that um, the year before that, I was the runner up uh, for this award. And the year before that, I was the um, winner of the entire um, uh, province. And so I had received that after going to um, Greece. And I just noticed that there was a really massive uh, increase as, in terms of favor on my life. <clears throat> so I just wanted to give glory for, to God for that and for that change of heart um, and just repenting for, it seems like 10 years of not being able to give to God um, or not just not for me, not giving to God and just recognizing that that is uh, really wrong. So I just feel really grateful to hear that message. I've been sharing it with my friends and um, hopefully that can continue on so that the man of God's message can continue to reach out to other people. And so I'm excited to be able to share that as well as in my heart. My wife and I um, have been praying um, the proclamations. There was an email that was sent out. We've been praying those, uh, at least I have anyways. And um, I want to be a landlord. I want God to be able to bless us so that we can not only have a family, but we can also be um, those that are good stewards of what we have. And we can multiply and increase it in such a way that Jesus really just does have um, faithful givers in his kingdom. So uh, we just want to be able to give in that way. So hallelujah. Amen. And so we are just so grateful uh, to be a part of this ministry and so in Jesus' name, we are just, I want to give glory to Jesus for the message through the man of God. Amen. You that are there, you are watching, you are, you are even saying to yourself, so this is the kind of evil altar that have been tormenting you. You are saying it to yourself now. These are the same people that will turn against. You speak against people, turn against people, get angry, get offended, stop doing what God has sent you to do. If you are doing something for God's sake, do you need to stop? God is faithful, even when we are not faithful. If you have the nature of God, people's inability to appreciate what you are doing, people's inability to love you, people's inability to let other people know the good things they have enjoyed from you, will not stop you from doing good. Why are you no longer faithful, generous, kind, humble, obedient, truthful? Why are you no longer testifying? Why? Ask yourself. Many of you have stopped supporting ministries and ministers due to offense or anger. Many of you have become rebellious to God's given assignment. You are sent to help your fellow human beings, not just with your money, but with your own talents. But you are hiding your talents, hiding everything. You say they don't appreciate me here. Let me go to another place. You've started having alternatives. Repent. This message is for you. These are the evil spirits that possess you. Oh, this ring cannot live. 
Stay that way. This rain cannot be poor. Leave her alone. Which kingdom do you belong to? I'm the daughter of water. This ring cannot be poor. She's my daughter. She's your daughter. Leave her. This ring cannot be poor. She's married to me. Leave her alone. She's all mine. She's all mine. She can never get married. She's married to me. Leave her alone. What have you done to her career? She can never be useful. She can never be useful. Why? She can never be useful. Because she's mine. I have everything for her. What is she looking for again? What do you have for her? What you claim you have for her? I have all riches, all wealth, all riches for her. Yeah. What is she looking for? In my kingdom. Which kingdom? In the waters. In the water? I am in all the seven waters. So you can't find me. Leave her alone. God finds everyone. Nobody is hidden from God. And we are all breaking back. Leave her alone. Leave her alone. I want to warn you again. Leave her alone. Now I send fire to all the seven waters. And I send fire to the prince and kings of battle. In the seven waters. Seven. I mention where you are located. How do you operate? You king of the seven waters. How? How? We move everywhere. We get married. Want to go? I want to go. I want to go. What have you done to her? I want to kill. I want to kill. I want to kill. Tell the devil Jesus Christ. Why do you want to kill her? I don't want her to marry. I don't want her to marry. I want to kill her. I want to kill her. I want to kill her. Leave me, let me kill her. Leave me, let me kill her. Leave me, let me kill her. Tell the devil Jesus Christ. Who are you that wants to kill her? Powers from my father's house. Powers from my father's house. Powers from my father's house. I want to kill her. Leave me alone. Leave me. Leave How me. many of you are living in her? Me. Powers from my father's house. 
Me? Powers for my father's house. What lies of sin did you cause her to live? <laughs> she can lie. <laughs> she can lie. Leave me. Leave me. Let me kill Who this girl. Who pushed her to be lying? <laughs> it's me now. What other lies of sin did you push her to be living? It's me now. Me now. Anger. Anger. She used to get angry. She used to get angry. <laughs> she used to get angry. <laughs> <laughs> what about stubbornness and fornication? She's a Christian now. She cannot fornicate. She's a Christian. She cannot fornicate. <laughs> Leave me now. Did you push her out to be stubborn? <laughs> There's stubbornness in the family now. Eh? There's stubbornness there. Eh? What have you been pushing members of the family that made them to be extremely stubborn? Do I know for them? Do I know? Eh? Do I know? Leave me to kill her. What have you done to her career, her health, and her spiritual life? No job. No job. What is she doing? No job. No job. No job. <laughs> she studied economics now. Eh? In which university? In a, in, in a suit now. Leave me now. Leave me alone, please. How did you stop her from getting a job? What did you use? Do I know? Is it not disappointment? Eh? Oh, that's who get, she will not get. That's who get job. She will not get. I want her to get a job. What assignment did you prepare her to be doing for you? I want to destroy her. That's what I want to do. I want to destroy her. Leave me. Let me destroy her. How did you destroy members of our family as ancestral spirits? How? I'm destroying everything now. Everything I like? will destroy. I destroy. I destroy. I destroy. Where are the destroy. family members? <sighs> they came here now. Didn't you see them? Didn't you see the mom and the two sisters? They came here. Look for them now. The mom and who? The mom and the two sisters now. What did you do to them? They are here. <sighs> I don't have their time. Are they all possessed by you? I want to destroy this one. <laughs> she wants to shine. <laughs> she wants to shine. Mm -hmm. Eh? She wants to shine. Oh, yeah, now. Let her come and shine. Let her come and shine. Let me see. <laughs> Let her come and shine. What this did one. you find in this name? <laughs> that made you to be destroying her, targeting to destroy her. What did you find in Because here? I don't want her to shine. I don't want her to shine. I don't want her to shine. <laughs> Who is she destined to become? <laughs> She's a great woman now. Eh? Powerful woman. Eh? Look at her now. Look at her. Eh? Why do you hate people that have great destiny and stars? Why? <laughs> They're causing me trouble. They're causing me trouble. What trouble? They're causing me trouble. Eh? They want to make it. Eh? So they'll praise God. <laughs> Look at her. She has shined. Hey, thank be to her God. <laughs> now check this one. Look at Esther here. Uh -huh. Leave me alone. What have you done to her? Leave me now. And her career? I don't have their time now. This is my first target. This one. How did you possess this lady? How did you possess her? From her father's house. Through what means did you enter? When they were living in their former compound, eh? I took what baby now. Don't you know, dear? Go and check. Ask now. What is in that compound <laughs> that opened doors for you, evil spirit, to be possessing people <laughs> in that family? Covenant! Covenant, do I know? Leave me now! Ah, leave me! What leave me covenant? Me <laughs> hey, foundational covenant now. Was eh? there any charm that was buried there? <sighs> no charm. Any sacrifice or no any charm. idol? No charm, just covenant. Just covenant. Ancestral covenant. Everybody belongs to them. How Everybody. was that covenant made? Mm. And when was it made? I don't know now. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. What did they mm. use to make that covenant? Do I know now? Do I know? If you did not know, why did you now enter and possess and begin to destroy people? Trying to kill them. Because I want to destroy this one. <laughs> I want to destroy this one. Mm. What can you say about what you are hearing? Madam, especially you, what do you know? Everything she says, uh, the, that's the place we are living at in Ugungu before our former compound. It's called Ugungu, baby. And uh, many girls in that family, 
they are possessed, many of them. Even some marry her, and they come back from their husband's house. Let them come and marry now. Yeah. Let them come, come and marry. Back from their husband's house. <laughs> let them come yeah. and marry. Come and marry now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, let us ask you, what lives of sin have you been pushing them to live that have been making it easy for them to divorce, <laughs> separate from their husbands? Anger. But the mother of this lady is saying that, no, they live a good life. Anger. <laughs> Let them be angry now. Let them anger. And they will scatter things. <laughs> anger, anger. Angry. Look at the siblings here. All of them are laughing when you mentioned anger. Does it mean that they too, they have spirit of anger? I gave them now. I gave them anger. Leave me now. Leave me. Let us hear from you one by one. What do you know leave about the spirit now. of anger? We should well, leave for me, me I'm, I'm married and in my home, there was no peace before I was delivered here. I used to fight with my husband all the time. Leave because me. of what? Anger. Small Leave thing, I'll get angry. Leave me now. Let's hear from you, madam. <laughs> it's true. My, I have that spirit of anger too. Let's hear from you. It's true, sir. Yes. If I get angry, I can break things in the house. You can break everything. <laughs> break and scatter. <laughs> mention those things. She's finding it difficult to mention that. Mention my bread now. Bleach. Yes, yes. The robot. Yes. Huh? Now, what do you have to say? Why did you not mention that? I was trying to call. You don't think you can hide it? <laughs> no, sir. There is no hiding place. Say things the way they are. That is what God wants, so you can be set free. How many <sighs> years are you? Since! I've been there since in that family. Leave me, I want to go. Leave me, I want to go. What is in the city of Jesus International Ministry that exposed you now and will get all of you destroyed and set everybody in that family free? There is light here and there is truth. There is truth here. <laughs> there is light and truth. Light and truth. That's what I'm seeing. Light and truth. Light why do you not love light? light, light. light and and why do you not love the truth? Truth. Truth will set you free. I don't want her to be free. I don't want her to be free. I don't want her to be free. Truth will set her free. Leave me alone. Oh. What have you not said? That you have done to her? What about her health? What have you done to her health? <laughs> I give her heart pain. <laughs> Look at her. <laughs> uh, what is the purpose of giving her that heart pain? Heart pain, heartache. So she will not have a peaceful delivery when she marry. Eh? She wants to have a peaceful delivery when she marry. Oh yeah now. Oh yeah now. Come and have a peaceful delivery. Oh yeah now. Many women have hypertension and so now. many heart related sicknesses and diseases that used to make it impossible for them to naturally give birth to children. Are you saying that you ancestral spirits are the cause? Yes, I gave it to her. I gave it to her. I gave it to her. You are... So she will die when she's delivering. <laughs> she will die. <laughs> she will die when she's delivering. I'll kill her dear. Mm. Many she women at a point of delivery she used to die and leave their child. And some of them die with their children or with their child. Leave Who me. is the cause? Leave me now. It's me. Powers from her father's house. Look at Meaning him. ancestral spirits. Yes. In various families. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What if other people are just saying it's just natural death? It has nothing to do with spiritual connection. It's just normal. It's natural death. Who pushed them to believe that? Things like that that are caused by you. They did not like put it there so I can cure them. They did not know. How will they know? Yeah, tell me. How will they know? Many people have become orphans as a result of this. At the point of delivery, their mother died. And the child graciously survived and is now orphan. Mm -hmm. Because I want to kill her. Yes. Now that you are exposed now and you will be destroyed, what will happen to your evil pain? It will go when now. When she gets married. You self, you know it will go now. You. Who will take that pain away and destroy you? It will you know your truth and your light will take it. Leave me now. Leave me. He knows that his truth and light will take it out. There was a lady I told to go and confess her sins. Look at her there. She's sitting down there and she's not willing to open up. She's becoming very stubborn. Who has hardened her heart? Do I know for them? <laughs> you talked about two things you have witnessed here. Number one, truth and light. Yes, truth and light is She is giving a message of truth, what she should do, so she can get freedom. And she is hiding. And now, they used to harden their hearts. Who hardened her heart? Evil powers. Evil powers. 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 And she eventually opens up, confesses all her sins, confirms the prophecy. 
what will be happening to this lady? What will happen to her health, her career, her destiny, her marriage, and her future? Truth and light will come in now. When the truth and light come in into her life, what will be happening to everything about her? So she will start shining now. She will start shining now. What if she finally says, no, I will not confirm. And let me go. I don't want to expose myself. What will be happening to her? We will hold her. We will hold her now. Who are you that used to hold them? I had in their heart not to. Powers. 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 Powers everywhere. Powers. Evil powers? Yes, we we'll enter. We we'll enter and destroy. You are not going at your will. Ah, she saw you in her dream now. <laughs> what? She saw you in her dream. She saw you now. Eh? Eh? So you set her free, eh? And she got married. <laughs> Whom did she see? She see, see you. She saw you telling her. <laughs> After Tuesday, <laughs> your husband people will come. <laughs> that's what that's what you told her in that dream. That's what you told her. <laughs> Who told her? Who I made them her? late. I made them late here today. Okay. So they will go back now. We came very late. And that's where in the day they get married after the week. Hey, wait. And we wanted to go. My yeah. my my daughter is saying that we should go, we should yes. go. Yes. And then they let us wait. Uh, you know whether they will call so us. That that we say let's oh. we are late, we are not coming. So that what she told her will not come to pass now. She's the one telling us to go because she has come for the first time. We have never come before. Uh, he wants her husband people to come. Hey. That's what he wants. Yeah. Because they are preparing to come. We now want them to come. Hmm. Eh? Leave me. What is the name of the man of God that uh, appeared to her in the dream? You now. Minister Christopher G came to her in the night. She was saying, thank you, Jesus, in her bed. Thank you, Jesus, I must come here today. Did she tell anybody no. about this dream? No, I don't want them. I don't want her to tell them. So that they will not force her to come now. Mm. Eh? I hide that dream. <laughs> I kept it in her hands. Mm. I told her, Pim. You told her what? Pim. What do you mean by Pim? Shh, don't tell them. Don't tell them. If you tell them, they'll tell you, okay, let's go, let's go, let's go now. Let's go. <laughs> I told them. Does it mean that you have been preventing this particular lady? from coming to the city of Jesus International Ministry She's a sister that for deliverance. Her. Why did she take her now? Which eh? of the sisters? That one. That one she's living with. Wait. That one. That Are one. you the one? Yes. My name is Ugo Irene. Mm -hmm. She's my immediate younger sister. And she's living with me. She's the one that brought her here. Why will she? Why will she bring her here? Why will she bring her here? So she will be set free. That's what you people want. You people want to set her free. How many people have you stopped from coming to the city of Jesus International <laughs> Ministry? Me, I don't know. It's her that talked about that city of Jesus in that house. Look at her. She's the one that started talking about it. Come to Koji. Go to Koji. Where do they live? They live at Ugo. So they came all the way from Ugo? Yes. To this place? Yes. What if they did not come today? What would have happened? What would you have done to this lady and the family? <laughs> I'll be happy now. Our husband people will not come again. Our husband people will not come again. How old is this lady you are possessed? How old is she? She starts two now. Leave me alone. She starts two. As this deliverance is going on now, and here at the City of Jesus International Ministries Prayer Room, what is happening to the mind of the husband and the family members of the husband? They are preparing to come. That's what I'm saying. They want to come. He won't come. What did you use to delay them from coming before? A lot of things. Like, mention those things you have been telling them. What have you been speaking to their minds? A lot of things. Wait, wait, cool down. People should not rush. Eh, cool, cool down. Hmm? Why are people rushing? Relax. 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 Relax now. Is there any other reasons why they have not come to carry out their responsibilities? No, there's no reason. No. They don't have any reason. If they finally come and this marriage finally takes place, what will be happening to the marriage? The husband and both families. What will be happening? The husband will shine. She wants to bring light into that family now. Leave me. Leave me. She wants to take light there. That's what she wants to do. I don't want her to take light there. I don't want her to take light there. Why? I want to kill her. I want to kill her. I want to kill her. 
<laughs> is there any other sickness you give into her apart from the heart pain <laughs> that will be destroyed now? Any other sickness? That's the one I know. Right now, I send fire to you, ancestral spirits. Your wicked power of death, power of killing, stealing, and destruction. Evil heartache, heart pain, pain in any part of our body, and pain in the life of people you are possessed all around the world. I command you and your evil pains to be destroyed. By the fire of the Holy Spirit. Holy Ghost, fire the name of Jesus Christ. Now pull out your covenant and make this. You begin spirit to Put them out. I leave my heart. Remove the rings. Fire the rings. The rings, the rings. The rings. Let the marriage go through. Why are you removing The ring. I'm removing it. Pull all of them out. I'm removing the pain now. Uh, I'm removing the pain. All of them. I'm removing now the pain. Of He's here. He's here. Inability to deliver children. Put them out. Turn the blame of Jesus Christ. All anti marriage spirits, evil spirits that cause separation, divorce. Single parent root. Mm. Mm. I command all of you mm. to be consumed by the fire of the Holy Spirit. Fire the devil! Jesus Christ! I send fire to the entire family. Body, male and female. Old and young. Poor and rich. And I command them to be separated from all activities of ancestors. Ah, 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 I sent her to that particular compound where the covenant was made. And I command the Spirit of God to destroy the forces of darkness, satanic covenants. Right now, Holy Ghost, turn the name of Jesus Christ. What is happening to your evil oh. Check. Mm. Check. Fire. 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 That's why I told her not to come. That's why I told her not to come. You that have received several dreams showing you places you can go to be set free. Who are you waiting for? Why are you delaying? Why are you hiding the whole thing? Why do you hate total freedom? You have seen for yourself the nature of dreams she had that enabled her to come to a place like this, the city of Jesus International Ministry, and today she's totally set free. What about you? You want to come, but you listen to rumors of people. You look at your own circumstances. Some of you are saying, I don't have transport money. Some of you have, but you are saying, I will come next time. Repent, work out your own salvation, with fear and trembling. Holy Ghost, fire in the name of Jesus Christ. I will go. You have no grace to go. I want to go now. Me you go. are undergoing complete spiritual destruction. Fire in the name of Jesus Christ. Fire! <sighs> You cannot enter any one of them. Fire! Fire! Fire in the name of Jesus Christ! Fire in the name of Jesus Christ! Thank you, Lord, for our freedom. Fire in the name of Jesus 
Christ. Good afternoon, man of God. Thank you, Jesus. What was the dream you had? In my dream, I saw you because my sister have already told me they used to. to us. Tell us your name, where you're coming from, what you do for a living, and also kindly introduce the lady standing next to you. Shalom, people of God. Shalom, people of God. My name is Annie Chinecherem. I'm, I'm coming from Ugu in this Enugu state, and currently I'm not doing anything. The person standing beside me is my elder sister. Sister, we're happy to have you in the presence of God once again. Can you please, we watched a video a few minutes ago. Can you let us know where the one we just watched being delivered by the power of the Holy Spirit? Yes, I'm the one. We believe you're here to share your testimony of what God has done for you. Please go ahead. Shalom, people of God. I, I want to thank God Almighty for what he did for me at the City of Jesus International Ministry. Firstly, my elder sister here, she has been planning to go to synagogue. But one day she came back from work and she told me about City of Jesus International Ministry. And she said she's going to try it out. She came the first day and when she came back, she told me that I'm going to follow her and come here. That there is something here that she has never seen in her entire life before. I was like, okay, well, let's go. So we came, but something wonderful happened on that Tuesday prayer, uh, mountain prayer. Immediately, the man of God touched me. I, I didn't even know where I was again. I was like, there was something that, that happened to me that has never happened to me in my life before. 
I didn't know that there were that the powers from my father's house that had been causing me disappointments and delays in my marriage. But after the deliverance, there was a total breakthrough in my marital life and in my health and in my career. Hallelujah. Can we celebrate Jesus? Sister, we thank God Almighty for your life. We understand you're excited to share your testimony. During your deliverance, this evil spirit manifested as powers from your father's house and from your mother's house. First of all, we want to know, were you aware that you were possessed by this evil spirit in the past? No, I wasn't aware. Okay, can you go on ahead and explain to us the negative circumstances and situations you still seen surrounded, surrounding your life? This evil spirit mentioned how it destroyed your life in so many ways, ranging from your career, your marital life, and your health also. So please go, go ahead and tell us the negative effects you still seen around your life. I, I experienced a lot of disappointment in my marriage. It was like... If I'm into a relationship, when the person, immediately the person says, I want to come and see your parent, the whole thing will just flip. The person will just like turn around and, be, and become somebody I didn't even know. The person won't even answer my call. So the whole thing keeps on going. I didn't even know that it was not normal. And uh, in, my, in, my, in my health, I used to have this heart pain. I didn't even know that it was the spirit that gave me the heart pain. Because the pain, whenever it comes, it was so severe. I wouldn't even do anything until I take any um, pain relief drug. That is when I would start getting myself. And for, for a very long time, when, when I finished my youth service, I came back to this Enugu state. That was when I moved closer to God and... One thing that I experienced is in my dream, I used to have this, something that used to press me down. Whenever I'm sleeping, I'll be struggling to get up. I don't even know that there was something behind it. So, anytime that impressed me down, if I am at, at the edge of getting something, it will be like everything scattered. There will be problem, there will be disappointment, there will be failure. And this thing keeps on going, but I didn't know what to do and why. So it was when we came to this City of Jesus International Ministry that after my deliverance, I didn't experience something like that again. Hallelujah. This evil spirit mentioned that it destroyed your career also, causing... It's difficult for you to land a job after studies. What can you say about this man? Yes. The, the, I used to face a lot of disappointment anytime I go for interviews or other job appointment. There was a time we went for UBA um, interview. Almost everybody that I came with got a job, but I didn't. I didn't even know what was wrong. There was a time we applied in the local government, still the same thing. So there was a lot of disappointment and failures, but I didn't even know that it was the evil spirit that was responsible for all those problems in my life. So did you try finding any solution on your own, since you were not aware that there were negative forces of darkness responsible for these various disappointments you were facing in your life? What did you try to do to find solution on your own to these problems? The only solution that I, 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 I tried to find on my own was go to make sure I go to, to programs in the church and do my extra prayer. Maybe when we finish our morning devotion or, or family prayer, I would like to pray extra. But after the whole thing, the, the situation continues. We believe that the prayers that you've offered in the past, all this led up to this very moment where you received your deliverance. While you were praying, you were preparing your heart to receive this mighty deliverance that you received today. The powers of darkness also mentioned that it gave you spirit of anger, serious spirit of anger, not just you, but your entire family. This was the life of sin 
that it used to create this evil covenant, it used to torment your life and also that of your family. What can you say about this man? Yes, there is, we used to, me, my other sister, my junior sister, we used to get angry. It's like anger runs in the family. Small thing, somebody is already angry. Small thing, there is shouting. There is small thing, there is contention. And me, I noticed that I used to lie a lot, but I don't know why. Small thing you ask me, something that you know even beat me, I will lie on top of it. I don't even know that it was the spirit that made me to be lying like that. Viewers all around the world, people seated, you are listening to this mighty testimony. The evil spirit that once possessed her in the past mentioned how it used this spirit of anger, serious spirit of anger and lying to hold the family hostage and to torment their lives in several ways. But we thank God Almighty for our sister's deliverance today. The evil spirit also mentioned that it caused you to be resistant to come to a place where you can receive your deliverance. Even when you had a dream, you were quiet about it. Can you throw more light on that? Um, early damn Tuesday morning, when I woke up, something in me share the testing, share the dream with your sisters. Because anytime I had a dream, I'll call them and say, see what I see my dream. But that morning, I don't know what shut me up. I couldn't even talk. What dream was that? Can you explain? Okay, in my dream, I saw Minister Christopher G. We are all lined up in the dream. And the ones I can remember now is that he tapped me and told me that your husband's people will come. That was exactly what he told me in that dream. And I woke up. So that morning, the evil spirit also mentioned that it tried making you come late to church. In fact, you came late to church and you guys were almost leaving. You and your family, you were almost leaving until God intervened and you came in and you were able to receive your deliverance. What can you say, man? Yes, we were delayed at the, um, the filling station. Uh, um, my husband's sister's ATM card got, pro uh, got problem with the POS there. I don't know, they were trying it, trying it, so, so that he can, he can be able to pay. But I don't even know that it was the spirit that made the whole ATM there, not the whole POS machine there not to work. So I don't know that the spirit cost us um, lateness so that we would turn back. Because when we came, we were very late. They have shut the gate. And my sister was like, let's go. Let's go. We have cost it for ourselves today now. So... But the man at the gate told us, wait, just wait. Maybe they will call you people back inside. By the time he finished it, we are, by the special grace of God, we are allowed inside that, that Tuesday morning. Hallelujah. Brethren, you are listening to this mighty testimony. First of all, let us note that her deliverance happened spiritually before physically. She had a dream where she received her deliverance through the man of God, Christopher Oji, but she needed to come physically so that her deliverance would be cemented and be permanent. The agents of darkness tried stopping her, first of all, by making her hide such a powerful dream and an encounter from her family. This should encourage us not to hide anything good in our lives. Secondly, also by making them almost come late, come late to service that morning. A man of God, Christopher Oji, would always tell us, especially when you're coming for service, prepare your heart, come early with a prepared heart. We thank God Almighty for our sister, for God's intervention, and her receiving her deliverance that very day. Okay, sister, kindly tell us, what was your encounter that day when you were being prayed for? What did you feel? And the changes you still experiencing in your life thereafter? When I was being prayed for, there was like, I know something left me. I know, I know my life, I know that that day, something that I will never forget in my life happened. There was this great encounter. There was this great spiritual, spiritual war that went that I didn't know. But I know that something went out from me because after the deliverance, I find it very difficult to lie. And there's nothing that you make do to me now that will make me get angry like that again. Can we celebrate Jesus? <clears throat> what of in your marital life, the evil spirit mentioned how it's 
subdued every suitor that would come to keep you at home and stop you from getting married. What began to happen in your marital life after? Hallelujah. After my deliverance, I was dating my, my husband now. We met in, um, in, in April, in March. So a week when we met, he told me like, I want to come and see your people. I was like, wait, it's too early. Just relax for now. Why are you called rushing? That was, I was like calming him down. So after I told him that, he, it's like now that he now decided, he doesn't talk about it again. It was like they switched, up, switched it off. I was like, is it the guy that was telling me, I want to come, I want to come, that is now delaying like this? I didn't know there was something, something behind it. But immediately after that, my deliverance, the whole thing, both my relationship with him and the, there was a great change. In fact, I don't know how I will, I will explain it because after that deliverance, he was now the one, he now told me, if, if I am delaying, that he's not delaying again, that he wants to come today and tomorrow and do all my marital right things. So after the deliverance, there was a great turnaround. There was a great change. Um, I, I don't know how to explain, but I just want to. Sister, we thank God Almighty for your life. Before your deliverance, what will happen in the past with the suitors? Would they, did they ever get to the point where they would want to come and perform the marital rites in the past before your deliverance? Before your deliverance, what will happen to suitors when they come? Okay, before my deliverance, what will happen to suitors is that before, the immediate, like I said before, immediately I'll, the person will talk about coming to see my parents. The whole thing will just stop like that. Hallelujah. You can see the drastic change in her life from being delivered from spirit of anger, lies first, to the marital rights being performed. This is something that the enemy confessed that he has hindered greatly in her life, refusing her to get married. To the glory of God, you can see that change in the life of our sister. Sister, we also want to know what of your spiritual life, your relationship with God, how has it been after your deliverance? After my deliverance, it's like, I want more of Jesus in everything that I'm doing. I move so close to him and I keep on experiencing him all every days of my life. Can we celebrate Jesus? This is the most beautiful thing about deliverance. Deliverance sets you on a path where your relationship with God goes stronger and stronger and stronger. Sister, we thank God Almighty for your life, for this beautiful deliverance you have received. Before you give us a word of advice, let's hear from your sister standing next to you. Shalom, Ma, you're welcome to the City of Jesus International Ministry in Jesus' name. Amen. Introduce yourself to us and tell us who the person standing next to you is to you. Church, Shalom. My name is Ugu Irene. I'm from this Enugu state. And the person standing next to me is my young, immediate younger sister. What do you have to say about her deliverance, the deliverance that she has received, the changes you still see in her life? You also, you were graced, and you also received deliverance here at the City of Jesus International Ministry. What would you say has still happening in your lives generally as a family and also in her life personally? Well, this place is a blessing. It's, it's an awesome place, and... I and my family coming here is by divine mercy. Because all this while, I know that my life needed a special touch from God. But I have always known that there is a place like this, but I can't see myself coming. I don't know. I was planning to go to Lagos, but it was so difficult, you know, you know the finance and all that and the, the person that would take me. So one day I was in my office 
And I was so depressed. I was like, God, I need your help. I need, I need a touch. How can you help me to get to Synagogue Church of All Nations? So I was there in the office and I heard a voice so clearly that said, what you are looking for in Lagos is in Enugu. Immediately I was... Immediately, there is this calm, calmness inside of me. So when I, when I get to the house, I called my husband and told him, see, see the voice I heard in the office. I, I'm, I, we are going to go. He said, no problem, that he would take me. So that fateful day, that was on 13th of August, 2023. He drove me to this place. I came in, and by the special grace of God, I was delivered. They were watching me at home. So... After that day, I, come, I came home. I was telling my sister, CEO, hmm, because I know that this my sister prays a lot. She's prayer fire. So I was telling her one day, my dear, you need to come with me. Oh. You need to come and experience what I experienced. She was like, God is everywhere. Oh. So that day I was like, ah, ah, God, I know God is everywhere. I'm not telling you so that you will say that God is everywhere. Just for you to come. I was, the way she said it, she was like, ah, ah. She was like, leave me, God is every, we know, something like that. So, I kept on telling her, you need to come with me, oh, you need to come with me, oh. So, by the special grace of God, that day, another Sunday, everybody, my family members, all of us came. Because on Tuesday, after that 13th of August, the man of God said to me, bring your family. So, I started telling everybody. I brought my mom, my sisters, we came. Then on Tuesday of that Sunday that all of us came, she was delivered. Well, the experience after that deliverance for me has been awesome. In my home, there was no peace. We quarreled a lot, me and my husband. Every time he would be begging me, simple thing, I would get annoyed. You know, within me, I can't stop it. The anger, it, it kind of overwhelms me. I will see that he has not done anything to me, but I will just be angry. Reason why I am angry, I don't know. So, the thing has been bothering me a lot. So, after my deliverance, now the anger is gone. There is peace in my home. We understand each other. And I give God all the glory. Then, for my sister here, yeah, you know, like she said before, there is this anger in the family. We don't understand each other very well. But since our deliverance, there is peace, we understand each other. That heart problem that she has been complaining about. So because of my profession, I used to tell her, you don't, you are, you don't have hypertension and you are complaining of heart pain. And you are too young for such, you know, um, problem. But I don't know. I thank God, we didn't know that it was the evil spirit that gave her the heart pain. But after the deliverance, the heart pain is gone. She has never complained of it since that day till today. And for her marriage, the husband people have, they have paid the, 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 um, the bride's rights. They have done the rights for the marriage. And we are waiting for the man to come back so that the traditional marriage will now take place. So we give God all the glory for what he has done for me, my sister, and all the members of my family. Shalom. Hallelujah. So we thank God Almighty for your life and for your family. Indeed, we are grateful to God for this mighty deliverance that you have received, not just you, but your entire family. We'd like you to kindly give a word of advice to viewers around the world listening to you right now. There are so many women that have the spirit of anger, but they don't believe that there's a problem. They don't believe they are possessed. Not just women, but men alike. Now that you've received your deliverance, what would you say to them? And also, after receiving your deliverance, you found out that your sister, your family members, they also need deliverance. And you invited them to a place where they can receive their deliverance. Doing this, what would you say to other people as well? My advice to viewers all over the world and the people in this church watching me this morning is that 
Everyone needs the divine touch of the Lord in form of deliverance. Because some people will tell you they have been Christians for a very long time and because of that, that when you are in Christ, you're a new creature, that they don't need deliverance. I want to assure you that you needed a divine touch from God in form of deliverance for you to be able to move forward. For that negative characters, for you to, for, for, for you to stop experiencing them. And also, I just want to let everyone know that there is a special grace in City of Jesus International Ministry. What... What is difficult in other places, when you step your feet in this place, it's more than easy. Because as I'm standing here, I am a living witness of God's divine touch upon me and my entire family. Now, there is joy in my heart. And I want you to also experience what I am experiencing. And I want you to also know that distance is not a barrier. As you are, keep having that thought in your heart to come. I want you to also believe that as you join online, that God will visit you and transform your life. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Ma, for that wonderful word of advice. Sister, let's hear from you directing, directly now. What of that chest pain? Do you still feel it now that you've received your deliverance? No, I don't used to feel it. After my deliverance, I've never felt it again. Hallelujah. We thank God Almighty for your life. We want you to give a word of advice. Before you do that, what do you have to say about the power of God that has set you free here at the City of Jesus International Ministry? Then go ahead to give a word of advice to viewers all around the world listening to you right now. There is, there is light in this place and there is truth. I don't even know that I'm going to confess that day. Even if you gave me the whole money in the world, I won't even open my mouth. But immediately the man of God touched me. Something happened. Something supernatural. Something I've never experienced. Something I've never seen. And I want to give God all the glory for using the man of God, Christopher G, to deliver my life, my marriage, and my family. And my word, my word of advice to everybody in the church and viewers, especially viewers, wherever you are, try and make out and be here. Try and come to city of Jesus and experience Jesus himself. Me, I'm a living witness. Me and my family, we're a living witness. And whatever situation that you are passing through and you are here, believe. The Bible says that when you seek me with all your heart, you will find me. If you are here, seek him with all your heart and he will definitely show up for you. Hallelujah. All glory to Jesus. Sister, we thank God Almighty for your life. Once again, we encourage you as a man of God, Christo Borgi will teach. He would always say that if you have been set free, you should be able to identify those things that you have been set free from and stay away from them. God has delivered you from the evil covenants of death. The devil has come to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But God has broken such evil covenants in your life. So we encourage you to stay away from the lives of sin that you've been delivered from. And every other manner of life of sin and sinful desires, make the word of God the foundation of your life. And surely we are seeing great changes in your life. And you coming back for greater testimonies in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.
they are attacking your bone, your waist, your legs, this side of your body. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. They're attacking it. It's paining me very well. It's paining me all both here. They are yes. trying to give you a stroke. Take it easy. The matter is already settled. Yeah, ma'am. Free today. Amen. In Jesus Amen. Christ's name. Amen. Make sure that you are praying. Reject everything that is given to you by Satan. Reject everything. Everything. Hey, welcome to the City of Jesus International Ministry in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please introduce yourself, tell us your name, where you're coming from, what you do for a living, and introduce them. Sir, you're welcome to the City of Jesus International Ministry. <laughs> Sir, you're welcome to the City of Jesus International Ministry in Jesus. Amen. Jesus' name. Amen. Kindly introduce yourself by telling us your name, where you're from, and what you do for a living. Okay, my name is Dennis Eze. I'm living at uh, Abakpa in Enugu here, but I'm doing business in uh, our at market, Enugu. So, sir, we just watched the clip on the screen. Were you the one that we just watched now, right now on the screen? Yes, I'm the one. So, sir, we believe you're here to share your wonderful testimony to the people of God. Kindly go ahead and share your wonderful testimony. Amen. Shalom, everybody. Shalom. Shalom, everybody. Shalom. In fact, my coming here last two Sundays is a wonderful thing that has happened to me and my family. Before coming here, in fact, I don't know how to put it. All my bones, my hands, everything, we are under attack. Pains all over, all over here. I will stay like this. I will see this, my hand, coming together like this. It's like something is drawing it, trying to make it like this. I was like, what is all these things? So I begin to think that one day I will wake up and see myself not working again. And I was troubled. I begin to think where to go. So many thoughts came to me. Then I remembered that I have come here about four or five weeks ago. And God touched me that day. But I say, let me go back again. When I'm coming, I was telling God, touch me one more time. Touch me more one time. That was what I'm saying. This is where I'm sitting here, just here. When they were the the Songs we are, we are going on. I was telling God, today is my turn. Touch me one more time. I must, not, I must not go here without you touching me, that I must not carry this pains and go. Even before I'm coming here, I was seeing my hand doing like this, as if it's going to turn. I feel like, I, I was seeing like something like plank is here. All of a sudden, within that week, the thing begins to go down. And it's, it's coming down like this. If I want to greet somebody, if I want to greet somebody, instead of doing like this, this is how the thing ends. If I want to go, go like this, it will not go. 
In short, I, was, I, I wasn't myself. But I told myself that if I come here and, that, and the man of God locate me, that all my pr- problem is over. And to me that day, in fact, before I decided coming, this pain came with a fever. I was like, ah, this thing that I have prepared, I, uh, this thing that I have prepared to come, it's like I will not go. But I say no. Maybe this may be a kind of uh, Satan trying to push me back. I went and took some uh, my routine drugs, and I take it. I, 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 then I, I I had the courage to come. Immediately I come when immediately the man of God started uh, ministering. I was the first to be touched. In fact, the man of God said everything. All my ways, all my ways. There is this too much pain. That even to wake up in the morning is trouble. When I'm sleeping, here, if I, if I want to, if, if, I, if I take this way to sleep, what I'll be seeing is just pains, nightmares. That is, I cannot just tell what is happening to me. Then, before the man located me, in fact, I was saying that if only this man would touch me, that I have seen him in the screen, that when he touched me, everything will go. And that day he said everything. Even my business was on, is under attack. My finances, everything about me. This thing that he's saying that you walk at a, like an elephant and rip, rip like an ant, it just is happening to me. I will toil, toil, toil from January to December. I will not see anything. I will not see anything positive. The next year, we jump into toiling again. But when I came that day, even I didn't, it's now that I'm hearing the man of God saying something about my, my finances, my family. In short, everything about me is under trouble. But I thank God for that day. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay, sir, we thank God for this wonderful testimony you're sharing. So, sir, how long have you been having this health issue, the waist pain, the bone problem? How long have you been having it? The health issue started, some of those issues started uh, years ago, but the thing hit me on 2018. I went so many places for healing, for, for deliverance, and uh, I, I also went to native doctors. All they do, I, I cannot, they, 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 they did their best, but I did not get my, I did not get myself. Or the, the pain is still within me. By, by, from that 2018 to 2020, I was going to one native doctor or the other, looking for help. But that 2020, I stopped going any, any place, saying that if I, don't get my, if I don't get my healing in the church, I will not go any place again. From that time, it was a battle. At times, it will come, it will, I will be like, go to this place, but I say I will not go. Even this, my neighbor used to witness it. Go here, go here, I say I will not go. Go there, I will, I say I will not go. Until, it, they have been telling me about this ministry since, since the last two years. I cannot deny it. But it was this year, around uh, last, either by September, they started telling me again. Then it's come. We are seeing you dying. You are not like this before. Come so that God will deliver you and, and set you free. Then I begin to give it a thought. Until last month, I did, I, until it's, it was early this month. Until last month that I came. Then this month, I came last two weeks and God located me. Shall we put our hands together for Jesus? So, so how did this health issue affect your life, affect your family, affect everything around you? How did it affect you? Uh, it has de- dealt with me seriously. Even my, my wife is complaining that I'm no longer doing what I used to do before. That is, eh? Before I wake up, hmm, it will be like a, it's a, it's a struggle. Even when I wake up, for me to get myself, I will relax for about one hour or two hours, or even three hours before preparing to go to market. At times, my coming to market will be around 12 o'clock, 
11 o'clock, 1 o'clock. What is happening to me, I don't know. But this is what I find myself doing. For over, getting to two years now, or even more. That is how it has, it has, it has uh, it affected me, yes. Kisan, now you said you had this health issue for the past two years. What really happened to you the day you came to the City of Jesus International Ministry? Two years. It's not just... The day I came, uh, when I went home, it was all joyful because of, because of the, the location of the man of God. But I took time to come on Tuesday. That was when the thing really happened. That Tuesday, uh, it was something else. The other time that I came, I came on Tuesday. But what happened that day is that there was much pain in my body that I went and sit down. When I sit down, when, when, when I was there, the man of God came and discharged us just very quickly. I didn't even know what happened. Then I went back and told, and told the wife that I came home, but we are discharged. She said to me, no, 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 that I should stand up. Whether, 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 whether the thing is paining me or not, that I should stand up. Then when I come back, came back the other Tuesday, they were like giving me seat. No, I told them, say, I, I will not sit, that I can stand. Then I went to stand at the, at, the, at the third line, waiting for the man of God. I was having pain. I was having pains, but I, took my, I, I stood my ground. I must, see, I must see the end today. So when the man of God came, ah, it was awesome. He touched me more than six times. The first one the heart, she, she touched me, I find myself in the ground. Boom. The second round, the same thing happened. The third one, the same thing happened. The, third one, the, third, the fourth one, he came and took my hand like this, put in my waist, begin to beat every part of me, both in my hands, hitting my hands everywhere. The sixth time, the same thing he did. After the deliverance, I was opportune to see the man of God. Then we were given some card. When I came in, the man of God declared me free. That I am free. That is... Okay. He declared me free that I should come and testify with my family. I'm coming for the mega testimony, but I said, let me just give this uh, testimony because the word of God made me to understand that we overcome by the word of our mouth and the blood of Jesus. That is why I'm here now. I will still come with my family for the mega testimony. Praise the Lord. So, sir, we thank God for this wonderful testimony you're sharing. So, sir, can you show us those things that you were not able to do before that you're able to do now after receiving your healing from the man of God, Christopher Ojo, through Jesus Christ? Okay, praise the Lord. Before I, came, before I came that day, okay, before I came that day, huh, in short, I told you that this is my hand. At times, at times I will be seeing it. It will be coming like, coming like this. It will be coming like this. This is my leg. At times I will see something drawing this my leg like this. Eh? This two, there's a, a, a vein here. It will stand, stand like this. For him to go down, it will take like five minutes before he goes down. I was saying, I was like, what is happening to me? Is it, like, is it that people are somewhere remoting me? I don't know. At times he will come to my, this my, my two veins here. You see it stand up like this. I will be pressing it, pressing it, pressing it for him to go down. It will not go down. I don't know. In short, I was saying, what is happening to me? That is all. Then, if I want to greet somebody, hey, good morning, I will do like this. The person will not even know that something is happening. But now I can wave it. I can raise it high. You see? I can raise it high. Before that day, I was seeing my, my hand trying to do like this. That is true. That, is my, that was my fear that made me to begin to think, where do I go? Then I remember the city of Jesus International Ministry. Then I come. From that day, the pains we are there. Even after the deliverance, when I came to the market, I asked the wife, some people are telling me to go and get something and begin to rub on it or something like that. He said, he told me, no, I should not do anything. I can tell you from that day, I have not taken any medicine. 
for this thing to heal. But now, I don't feel anything here now. Even the, way, the pains in my, in my ways have disappeared. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We thank God Almighty for that wonderful healing. This is our brother that came all the way to City of Jesus International Ministry with a problem of severe waist pain, bone problem, and spiritual attacks. But God Almighty located him through our man of God, Christopher Oji, by giving him a prophetic message. And today he's testifying about what God Almighty has done. Shall we put our hands together for Jesus? <laughs> so, sir, I would like to hear a word or two, but can you introduce the person standing next to you? Okay. Is this, uh, the person standing to me here is like a father to me. In fact, when I came to that line, he has been my mentor. And m most of the things I do, I may not tell him, but I look at his character and I follow his character. So anything he tells me, I took it that that is the way it is. Praise the Lord. He's my next neighbor at my right hand at uh, Wet and Market there. Thank you, sir, for introducing him. Let's hear a word or two from him. Sir, you're welcome to the City of Jesus International Ministry in Jesus' name. Shalom. Sir, can you introduce yourself? Tell us your name, where you're from, and what to do for a living. And also introduce the person standing next to you. Okay. Shalom, church. My name is Mr. Ernest Meto Osigidu. I'm from Amuku Orodo in Mbitolu, local government area of Imo State. The person standing behind me is my neighbor, Denko, by name. We call him Denko at Obete Market. Thank you. Sir, we believe you're here to testify about what God Almighty has done in his life. Can you go ahead and testify? Yes. Uh, this young man you have seen here, I've known him for a long time. When we came into the market, at the time we come from New Market, we all at Obete Market. He's doing very nice. This he lose 911 from Lagos. The problem started when he, one of his vehicle, uh, his 911 got burnt at Benin in um, Lagos Road. That one is not there. There's an accident that he has, even one of his servants dies. The one that happens recently at Ababa, the accident that happened about 12 people, 14 people, his boy is one of them. At least how many people died? About 14 people died. His child is one of the person that saved. Had it been that that child died in that vehicle, I don't, he, I don't think it will be a small thing on his own side. I've been seeing this young man coming down, dying. When he come uh, to come to market, at least by, uh, the market opens by 7.30, 8 o'clock. But every day he comes to market by 12 o'clock, 11.30. I asked him what is happening. He told me he's having waist pain. That when he wake up in the morning, that he can be unable to stand up, he will stay Massaging himself until when he got himself, he come to the market late and every day. So he leave his business to children. They just do it as they like. So I continue to tell this my young man, you need deliverance. The problem people are having today, you will have a problem. But to, how to handle it, you will not know. If somebody gives you a nice advice, they will not accept because they, they have having a lot of advice from a lot of people, some from native doctors, from all these prayer mountains. There was a, I've been warning him, telling him to come to this place. Even when we were going to Lagos with my wife, people say, uh -uh, are you a, a, a church, a, a harlot? How can all churches in, in Enugu here, every day you and your family will enter plane, go to Lagos church? What type of church is that? So when this... He knows all these things. Even the uh, Emmanuel television is permanent in, my, in our own shop. Look at his shop. Look at my own. 
You see all these times we discuss about synagogue. When the city of Jesus Christ started here, I continue to tell my man, we are having a lot of problems. He told me that he has his church, there's a church he's attending now, that he even they made him an usher. Even the wife is usher, the children, usher. Every member of his family, they had just occupied him. So there was a day he said that they, they, they put him on the altar because when the thing is too much, he complained to the, the man of God there. They just placed him on the altar, just tell him to sleep on the altar while the church is going on. This is all this is a ceremonial something. So after all said and done, he's still suffering. So this time around, I tell the man, come to city. You, you, nobody will t- and all these things, they take a lot of money from him. Say, come. Nobody will charge you. Come and receive your, your deliverance free. So that day he, 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 he just managed to come the first day he came here. And so, you know, a lot of people, they give God time. A lot of people go give God time instead of for God to give them time. That first time he came, he didn't receive any deliverance or something. He just went and realized again, the problem continues. Then even my wife told her, then go, come to deliverance. This time around, maybe the water has reached the tongue that made him to come this last one. This last one, he was here. The first thing, the first person man of God touched, he just manifest. The prophecy he gave to him, I was so much happy. After that, he confessed that the hand problem this is no more. Then he took appointment on Tuesday. That day is the battle. That is the final battle that happens. And after that, he is a delivered person. I am happy. God has done it for him. Okay, sir. What is your word of advice to people? who are still finding it difficult to believe in God Almighty. And we thank you so much for helping our brother and introducing him to this wonderful ministry. So, sir, what's your word of advice? Okay, my word of advice to viewers and people here, more especially people that are here in Enugu State. I know it is difficult for people to understand God this way. It is difficult. But if you experience it, you will know that God is very simple for us. There is a lot of problems and we don't know how to handle it. Please, please, God has made it simple for me and you here in the city of Jesus International Ministry under leadership of man of God, Prophet Christopher O.J. Christopher O.J. is a product of synagogue. In short, I'm seeing him as an incarnate Incarnate of T.B. Joshua. He is an incarnate. So I'm advising you people, come. Come. He is every time telling us that freely he receives. And exactly he is giving it to us free of charge. Without asking you money for registration, money for a uh, uh, prayer line, nothing. Everything is free. Come and receive it free for your own good and good of your own family. Praise the Lord. Shall we put our hands together? Thank you, sir, for the wonderful advice. So, sir, what can you say about the power of God here at the City of Jesus International Ministry? Wonderful. In fact, what I saw here overwhelmed me. Really, in, in the past, going from one church to the other have been our custom. Maybe if, if you have this challenge or the other. But here in the city of my God, it was a different thing. Let me tell you, if you go to other churches and see how they parade their, their deliverance, even before seeing the man of God, that is, you will see that many things are going into the ministry. Praise the Lord. But here, it was something else. 
Freely you receive, freely you give. I could not, I, I, in short, I don't know how to put it, but I can tell you right now that what is happening within me have, have just uh, enveloped everything. In my family today, my wife will have been with me here, but she went somewhere. Maybe on my next coming, she will be here. She was more than happy when I gave her the testimony and when she saw the results. She was, she's, the, she's the one that will have told you everything about what is happening to me now and what has happened to me before. Even though she's not where I'm delivered, but she's testifying that there is God here. So viewers and everybody, I'm just telling you, seeing is believing. Do not just wait with your problem or start going to one native doctor or the other. There's no help they will give you. What they do is they will take from you and give you more. And that is what I have been seeing. In fact, the one that treated me last, I overheard him quarreling with the wife. When the wife told him to discharge me, he said, he said no. They don't know that I'm hearing what they are saying. At a back click here. The, Bible told, the wife told him, discharge this man. This man is already seeing what you are doing. He said no. If we are discharge him, what will I be using to eat? That day, when you were going to him, but so it was it was something else. But I really thank God for what He's doing. This man, I have taken so many people to him, but all they will get is quarrel. So I, I stopped sending people to him. At the same time, he began to tell me, "Then go." I know they see your hand again. I say, I will, you know you see my hand because all the people I have sent to you is either they come out quarreling with you or fighting with you. So how can I send people to you? Even me to yourself, I'm tired. One of these times, I, be, I, I went there. He told me, there was a pain in my leg. <laughs> Something happened that day and that was the last day I went there. That pain was here in my leg. Immediately I come, I come. What he used to do is that he will hit on your leg, hit like, like this, he begin to remove stones, um, pin, nail in, 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 in my legs. So he, he started hitting my leg. Bawai, bawai, bawai. After he began to remove, I told him, I have, here we are touching, I have not seen any pain there. The one that, um, that, that, that brought me here, you have never touched it. He tell me, eh, so you don't begin to see what, what I see. Small time now, you begin, you go begin work like uh, they work. Eh? Okay. He tell me, say, thank you. You don't they see the thing where they see now. Small time, you go begin to remove, remove him by yourself. Eh? Now, so you don't come, you come to, you come, I, I just, I begin to laugh at him. I say, I tell him, no, there's nothing like that. So, so after he has done all those things. So, for the sake of the viewers, can you interpret what he said? Okay. The interpretation is that going to native doctor or going to all these herbalists, it doesn't work. They will, they will, they, they will produce, they will do something to free you. But when you go home, you carry more trouble. Praise the Lord. And I'm advising people, they should not do that. Me, I'm a living witness. What I pass through in, the, in their hand is too much. After that, see, the pain is still increasing and increasing. So I'm telling the whole world, if you are looking for your deliverance, here in Kojim, City of Jesus International Ministry. Jesus is here. In, in, in fact, by now, I, 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 when I sleep, I sleep well. I no longer have so much nightmares. Or if, since then, I have not, never had any nightmare about seeing myself backward or seeing myself where I left 
30 years ago. That is what has been happening to me. But all those dreams have stopped. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Shall we put our hands together for Jesus? So, sir, you made mention that you went to places in order to get solution, and most of them requested a lot of things from you. So, the healing you receive here at the, spam, at the City of Jesus International Ministry, did they tell you to pay anything to receive this wonderful healing? No, to my greatest surprise, nothing has been asked to me. Nothing has been said to me to give this or give that. Praise the Lord. So, sir, I would like to encourage you and give you a word of advice that... The, the healing you just received is from God Almighty. Um, the ministries you went to in order to get solution as a true ministry of God, those are the places that also led you to come over to the City of Jesus International Ministry for you to receive your permanent healing. And brother, we encourage you that whatever God, God Almighty, whatever Satan and all his evil agents can destroy, God Almighty can restore. So we believe that this healing you've received will remain permanent and the deliverance you receive will remain permanent in Jesus' name. And we see you coming back for great and mighty testimony in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Shalom. Shalom, everybody. Thank you, Jesus. International Ministry in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Shalom, church. Shalom, church. Shalom. Hallelujah. My name is Chidi Anakbe. I'm a salesman, a sales manager. I live in Worry, Delta States. That's where I work. Um, I was here in August to give a testimony concerning uh, how God gave me a job. Before I, came to the, before I came to the City of Jesus International Ministry, I had no job. I was searching for job everywhere I couldn't find. I talked to a lot of people that I knew to assist me, but all to no avail. So for a long time, I was there I and my family, we are feeding from heart to mouth. But to God be the glory, the man that just testified, Mr. Ernest, I met him in the market and he invited me to the City of Jesus International Ministry. I came that last year, around November, December. To God be the glory, in as much as I I've had contact with uh, the ministry online. I decided to give it my best. I started following the teachings of the man of God, Christopher Oji, in full. I joined the partnership. I joined the membership of the church. I became a full member. And uh, I was living my life like the man of God had taught us. To God be the glory, in a short while, it wasn't up to a month I joined the ministry. I started getting interview offers. Before that time, <laughs> hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. Yes, before that time, before I joined the ministry, there was, 
I was applying to a lot of places, but there was no interview offer. There was just nothing. But to God be the glory, one month as I joined the ministry, interview offer started coming in. I started having some interviews, and I started having hope. I kept on believing God, knowing fully well that he will eventually do it. Then in um, May 2023, that's this year, God eventually did it. He gave me a good job, a good paying job, that with that job, at least feeding from hand to mouth was a thing of the past. I came out here in August and I testified. I apologized to God for coming out late because I got the job in May and testified in August. A man of God was always hammering that we should give our testimonies timely. So I said, yes, thank God for what he has done. And I know that our people will always say, ne ke ne ke na komel, so when you thank God for what he has done, he will do another. So I kept on believing God, kept on coming, kept on doing the things that we learned here, things that we have been taught. And to God be the glory. I said, okay, God, this is um, five months I've been in this job. It's been helpful. But God, I want something better. Because I know indeed you can give me something better. So I came for one of the prayer lines at the prayer mountain on a Tuesday. So I wrote, I scribbled some prayer requests on a piece of paper. Having scribbled the prayer request, I told myself that all I need is just for the man of God to lay his hand on those prayer requests and they will be as good as answered. So to God be the glory, he came, he came to my turn. He laid hands on me, he prayed for me. He also laid hands on the prayer request. And one of the things I put in that prayer request is that I want another job that is better than the one I'm having now. And to God be the glory, God who sees our hearts and knows our thoughts and knows our needs, eventually God Almighty, in less than a month, gave me two brand new jobs. And I was left in a kind of dilemma to choose between the two because the two jobs were supposed to pay me more than double of what the other one I was, the place I was at that point was paying me. So I went to God in prayer and um, I asked God to direct me because I know, yes, both monies are big, but I want a place that I will become that will be calm for me, a place that will not trouble me so much. To God be the glory, God directed me to this one that you can see on the screen already. And to God be the glory, this job is paying more than two times of what I had before, and I've come to give God all the glory. Hallelujah. If you know that clap is for God, you can do better than that. Yes, our brother is here to share with the wonderful people of God his testimony, his testifying, based on the beautiful things that God has done in his life. We listen to our brother say that he came to the city of Jesus International Ministry jobless and received prayers from the man of God, Christopher Oji, and shared his testimony. A man of God who let us know that testimonies open door for more greater miracles in our lives. And many of us are seated here holding our testimonies. So I believe at the end of this testimony, all of us will come and share our wonderful testimonies to the glory of God in Jesus Christ's name. Shalom, church. Shalom, church. Uh, many of us that are Nigerians will understand what it is or how it is to get a job in Nigeria. It's not easy to get a job here. I know even before the prayer from the man of God, what I tried, what I did, but to no avail. So changing jobs in Nigeria is not just it's a miracle. And not just changing, but changing to something that is far more better than what you were doing. And see the catch again in it. I had two of them that were so good that I had to choose from the two. Even the one I chose is a little bit lower in terms of 
uh, monetary allowance. But I had to choose that one because that is where God led me to go to. So I want to give God all the glory for this wonderful opportunity to be part of this ministry, Christopher, Christopher Orgy International Ministry or Christ, Jesus, City of Jesus International Ministry, sorry. I always confuse it. Thank God for being part of this ministry, City of Jesus International Ministry. God has been so faithful to me, to my family, and indeed, I've come again to say, thank you, Lord, knowing fully well that as I've come to thank him, that surely more heights are available for me to reach in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. All right, brother, I would like to hear a word of advice to people listening to you, people who are seated here, people who are listening to you on their television sets. What do you have to say to them? My word of advice is simple. The first one will come from Matthew 6, 33. It says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness, and every other thing shall be added unto you. So seek ye that kingdom of God. Seek ye the things of God. Let the things of God bother you. Let the things of God, you know, let them make you, let them be part of your life and see what God will do in your life. Another part of the advice is, there is something I've noticed. Yes, people seek the kingdom of God, but many of them don't seek it in the right way. They don't go to the right places. They prefer where they will be bamboozled and uh, maybe deceived with certain uh, things. But here, in the City of Jesus International Ministry, whatever you are being told to do is clear-cut, scripture-based. Nobody will harass you. Nobody will ask you to part with your money. Nobody will, you know, ask you for any form of uh, uh, whatever before you can be prayed for. I came here freely. I was prayed for freely. Everything that I got here was free of charge. So, let us always be careful of the places we go to for prayer. Bible said in Matthew 7, 20, he said, by their fruits, you shall know them. The fruits here in City of Justice International Ministry is very clear. There is love. There is righteousness. There is forgiveness. There is holiness. The man of God keeps hammering on these things and not just preaching on them. They are evident all over to be seen. So those places, you know that you see the fruits of the living God. Please, especially the City of Justice International Ministry, bring yourself, bring your family, and come and see God Almighty changing your story for good in Jesus' precious name. Hallelujah. Brother, we thank God for your life. We thank God for the mighty thing he has done in your life, and we are believing that he will do more. We want to encourage you to make the word of God the foundation of your life. Stay away from every form of sin and sinful desire. Meditate on the word of God day and night. And we see you coming back for more bigger and greater testimonies in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Shalom. became disheartened uh, say that I became disheartened um, sometimes I'd see how the church is maybe using the funds or this missions group that I was giving to and I would just you know assume that uh, it just didn't seem like it was something that I wanted to give to anymore it seems like there was maybe mismanagement on the way that I was perceiving it so after watching the man of God Christopher Orgy um, delivering somebody and the um, person the demon that was talking about why they cause poverty um, because people aren't uh, freely giving from their heart. 
I suddenly was starting to realize that I had been listening to those same voices um, in my heart. And my wife had been faithfully giving, but for myself, I was holding back and um, you know paying off debts, um, those types of things. And I have a really decent job as a manager. I'm a sales manager um, for a large company um, called Sleep Country in Canada. And uh, I was just noticing, even though I'm doing really well, um, there's definitely been an increase in how I've noticed us giving for the last three months, specifically and consistently, that there has been a real boost in sales, as well as just noticing that customers would cancel um, oftentimes. And I would always feel like I'm being stolen from, or I'm just, it's like the circumstances or something just isn't quite right. So I noticed that after giving significantly and expecting God, um, there was a um, specific phrase that I believe the man of God was talking about where when you're giving, you're giving to God and God would, oh, I remember this demon was talking about how when people are giving, they should give to God so that God can give it back to them and they can abundantly keep giving more. That's the whole purpose is that we give so that God can give back to us and we can keep giving more and more in an increased way. And so just me psychologically, just thinking about how the kingdom of God operates that way was really inspiring because I want to be able to give to the kingdom and I want to be able to, to be faithful in that way. And, and the man of God was just talking about how uh, in Malachi, just um, like talking about how we're stealing from him um, and how in terms of ministries, there's lots of ministers that are not really receiving what they should be. And that's something that I was also feeling conviction about is that I used to also be in ministry for a short period of time, two or three years as a missionary. Um, and I just, I felt almost just like I wasn't even being provided for. So it's almost the same thing that I was doing uh, that I was uh, not receiving. I end up doing to others. And so I I wanted to break that and as well as be able to be generous in my heart and just let that part of my heart flow that had been stopped up. Ever since then, I feel like I've noticed a change in terms of sales. Um, it's been a significant increase. Um, and uh, each year I typically win an award at my company. Um, and so this year I won the one of the runner up awards um, that just happened. Um, I was uh, third um, out of the company uh, in our region of about 22 associates. And so I just wanted to give a testimony about that as well, that um, the year before that, I was the runner up uh, for this award. And the year before that, I was the um, winner of the entire um, uh, province. And so I had received that after going to um, Greece. And I just noticed that there was a really massive uh, increase as in terms of favor on my life. <clears throat> so I just wanted to give glory for to God for that and for that change of heart um, and just repenting for it seems like 10 years of not being able to give to God um, or not just not for me not giving to God and just recognizing that that is uh, really wrong. So I just feel really grateful to hear that message. I've been sharing it with my friends. And um, hopefully that can continue on so that the man of God's message can continue to reach out to other people. And so I'm excited to be able to share that as well as in my heart. My wife and I um, have been praying um, the proclamations. There was an email that was sent out. We've been praying those, uh, at least I have anyways. And um, I want to be a landlord. I want God to be able to bless us so that we can not only have a family, but we can also be um, those that are good stewards of what we have. And we can multiply and increase it in such a way that Jesus really just does have um, faithful givers in his kingdom. So uh, we just want to be able to give in that way. So hallelujah. Amen. And so we are just so grateful uh, to be a part of this ministry and so in Jesus' name, we are just, I uh, want to give glory to Jesus for the message through the man of God. Amen. Why is it written in Revelation chapter 12, verse 11, that they overcame the devil by the blood of the lamb? And by the words of their testimonies. You that want to wait until you see the result of everything. Before you start sharing your testimonies. Are you not sure 
that you are too far from the word of faith? Are you sure that you are not caged by the spirit of fear, doubt, and unbelief in your heart? Until my contract is finally awarded, until this is completed, before you share your testimonies, you have to repent. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 18. We do not look at things that are seen. We look at things that are not seen. Fix your eyes on the maker of your life. Let your eyes be fixed on things that will never disappoint you and on someone that will never fail. God is not like you. The only thing that pleases him and attracts him to answer your prayers is not your doubt, but your faith in him, his word, and his spirit. Why are you having doubt in your heart? And you're expecting God himself to answer your prayers. Why? Ask yourself, why? How long have you been doubting? Have you received answers to your prayers? If the answer is no, then you have to do away with doubt. Let such a person who doubts not expect to receive anything from the Lord. For he is like the wave of the sea being tossed to and fro. Better said, he's like a man who examines himself on a mirror and after some time goes away and forgets to know the kind of person he or she is. Only for the person to come back and say, how do I look like? Let me confirm again. All right, this is the way I look like. That is what you are doing to God. Repent. If a minister of God is led by the Spirit of God to tell you, why are you saying this? You are not like this. This is whom you are. And you finally see the result. What are you supposed to have done? You come back and do what? Share your testimonies. How many people have been delivered online? Life. Prayed for. Online. Live and direct. And they received prayers of faith. Many of them got delivered, blessed and saved. How many of you have actually returned back? To give glory to God who has set you free. In the first place, you registered to be prayed for without paying any money. Without registering with money. You did not pay anything. You were attended to free of charge. We are completely delivered free of charge. Cancelled free of charge. Prophetically attended to free of charge. One-on-one -on -one consultation, free of charge. God has answered your prayers. Why are you keeping them? Nobody told you. See, we are building a church. We want to pray for you. Give us money. You never heard anything like that. And you will never write it down. You will never hear anything like that. Freely I have received and freely God has commissioned me to give. And you are one of them. You have received Share your testimonies. How can somebody respond when you, yourself, you know you are not useful to yourself and you are not useful to your family? You are sent to school to study and you began to allow spirit of lust to control your mind only for you to decide to travel out. Many of you are like that. You want to travel out without quality education. You want to travel out without having a very good handiwork. You want to travel out with lives of sins and sinful desires. Why do you want to travel where you have not repented? You see yourself carrying passport, you want to travel, and you are still smoking. You are a prostitute, and you know you are going there to become a prostitute. You are a scammer, you carry a passport, you want to travel. And you know you are a scammer. And you want to go outside the country to start scamming people. And you believe God will close his eyes and answer this kind of evil prayers. It will never happen, unless you repent. Even if you travel with such lives, how will you make it in God's own way? Anything that comes from evil spirits 
will also go back to evil spirits. That is why you see many of them traveled and they cannot come back because they don't have the means to return back. Many traveled and they're spending their entire time and life in prison, even as we are speaking now. What led them to the prison? Lies of sins and sinful desires. Drug, kidnapping activities, illegal businesses, lies of scamming, prostitution, gambling, <laughs> and the like. Uh, you two are saying you want to travel, you want to travel without repentance. Your spiritual life is much more important than your mere wishful thinking. What you desire rather than God. It is not where you are. It is who you are. Meaning the life you are living where you are. If you like, be in the village. As long as you are obedient to God's word, the blessings of God will seek and find you. Amen. Why are you borrowing? In the name of you want to travel, you dupe your brother, collect money. Say, I want to travel. You go to another sister, you collect money. And say, you want to travel. You go to friends, borrow this and borrow that. And say that you want to travel. The Israelites were enabled by God after sanctification to embark on their journey to the promised land. You can see they were told to kill the first lamb, use the blood to place on their doors. That signifies spiritual sanctification. That was then when the blood of Jesus Christ was not shed. Now Jesus Christ had or has already shed his own blood to separate you from lives of sins and sinful desires so you can start living for God. Why do you want to move without repentance? Why? There is no true spiritual exodus in sin. Remember why the Israelites were in Egypt, their beliefs in God, we are contaminated. Contaminated by the spirit of idolatry, divination, sorceries. They dabbled into worshiping other gods. Small G-O-D-S. That made them unclean spiritually. What about you? You are lying, fornicating, scamming people. You are a prostitute and you want to travel outside with that kind of lies of sin. There is no real spiritual exodus in sin. That is why you go to another country with generational curses. That generational curses are wicked spiritual chains that have been used by evil spirits in the kingdom of darkness to tie you down there. So that anytime you try to move, they would use that generational curses to pull you back. Generational curses cannot and will never operate where there is holiness. If anyone is in Christ, the person is a new creation. Amen. The old things are gone Amen. and the new ones have come. Amen. If you live a life of holiness, you are automatically separated from generational curses. Amen. Amen. Why are you not willing to live a life of holiness? But you just want to travel. You are traveling with lives of sin, and you see the enemy is pulling you back. When they see vehicle crossing, they will just pull you to that vehicle spiritually, and you have accidents. They see you flying, they just crash the plane because of you. <laughs> Look at the case of Jonah, where the life of sin, of arrogance, disobedience to God's word, he decided to take a journey to escape. Satan said, no, you, you have disobeyed your master. And with this act of disobedience, here is the spiritual chain that will be used to connect you to death. While he was in the boat on a journey, 
<laughs> Satan decided to take him out through his evil agents and send him to the belly of whale. What about you? Check your business. Something has swallowed up your business. Check your marriage. Something has swallowed up your blessings. Are you fruitful? Can you give account? Where is your peace? Where is your affection? Where is the love in your marriage? Something has swallowed them up. And you say, I'm not Jonah. But you are living the life of Jonah. Check your health. Something has swallowed up your good health. You have become the photocopy of yourself. You that used to be vibrant, you can run, you can do everything without pain. Are you still doing them without pain? Don't embark on any journey where you know that you are not ready to disconnect yourself from sins and sinful desires. There is no real spiritual exodus in sin or in sinful desire. Satan tried to hold Jesus back from moving from the world we can see with our physical eyes, the seen world, to the unseen world. He hardened his heart and tried to cause him to become offended and refused to forgive other people. Jesus identified the spiritual chains and said, No, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they're doing. He was able to move from the physical world and handed over his spirit to God in heaven. You want to move from poverty to blessing with anger, envy, jealousy, evil suspicion, kidnapping, and lies of sin. <coughs> you are smoking, you want to be prosperous. You are a drunkard, you want to be prosperous. You don't even mind again. Are you really moving forward? Life is not only to be spent in this physical world, but also in the world to come, which is unseen. Where will you spend your own life? Will you be stuck here? Look at Satan. He is stuck on earth, moving up and down because of sin. You cannot move. You try to jump. No, God, I don't want to be in your presence. Send me down. I have my empire. And he was sent <coughs> down and he stopped here. You see him moving everywhere, tormenting people everywhere. There is no real spiritual exodus in sins and sinful desires. Get that clear. So when your husband is provoking you, why can't you do away with anger, revenge, unforgiveness, offense, hatred, rejection, name calling? Evil speaking, evil suspicion. These are the chains Satan is using to tie you, tie your womb, give you sickness. But you are busy saying, my uncle is the cause of my barrenness. My stepmother is the cause of this and that. You <coughs> are the cause. You have to repent. Repent. It is very important. Look at his case now. Life is in stages. You don't just jump. You have to start it and move from one stage to another stage. From another stage to another stage. You that want to travel, have you repented? If the answer is no, you have to repent. You that want to travel, what can you do? What do you know how to do? If you don't know anything, you have to start learning something now. You that want to travel, you have to equip yourself so you can be able to communicate with the people you are likely to meet where you are going. You are not ready to go to school. And your parents are ready to send you to school. People are ready to help you. We have even seen people that want scholarship. They never had anybody that would sponsor them, but they want scholarship because they humbled themselves, became the best, and other people came in to assist them. Why are you not doing that? Why are you not useful to yourself and members of your family? Repent. 
You need to repent. It is not too late for you. You have heard this and you are seeing hearing now. You can start your life all over again. Take the step of what? Repentance. That's number one. See what you can do, not just to have faith in God, but to have works that will enable you to back up your faith. <laughs> See what you can do, not just to have works, but also to have godly faith that will back up your works. Faith and works, meaning faith and good works, always go together. One is not complete without the other. Do the right thing. Don't just say, my uncle is not helping me. I want to travel. How many people have you helped? Are you not created to help other people? If you say you don't have anything, what about your love, your obedience to God and to your parents? Your respect, your humility, your self-control, your patience, your hard work. Your discipline. Why are you not having all these things? You just want to jump. And you want people to be helping you. Listen to me. How many people have you helped? Why are you not helping them? You are created to help people. Not only to be helped. You are created to help other people. It is the help you give out that will serve as your divine seed which will be given back to you. Meaning whatever you plant, that is what you will reap. You are not ready to plant. You just want to bump into someone else's farm and start reaping. Repent. You cannot just bump into someone else's farm and begin to reap or tap into <laughs> someone else's oil and say, no, I need to use it to fill my own lamp. Look at the ten virgins. Only five of them that had enough oil, we are allowed to witness the wedding. The foolish ones that never had oil, which symbolizes godly character, did not experience that. Work out your own salvation. See what you can do to become useful to yourself, because you can. Right now, I stretch my hand to you, and I command your heart to receive the spirit of forgiveness. Amen. Amen. You receive the grace of genuine repentance. Amen. Grace of salvation. Amen. You receive eternal life. Amen. Receive. Amen. Receive. Amen. I command your destiny to be sanctified by God. Amen. Highly anointed by God. Amen. And permanently blessed by God forever. Amen. Receive the grace. Amen. Receive the grace. Amen. Receive. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 together for Jesus. If you still have your... Hey, Co. Jim, just wanted to give a, a brief testimony. Something that I've noticed is that the man of God was giving this message about the ancient root of poverty probably about three months ago or so. And I was watching this and kind of realizing that for myself, oftentimes I have wanted to give in the past. I've been a Christian for probably about 15 to 20 years. Um, and I gave significantly um, 
certain times when I was younger, but um, at certain times, I guess I would say that I became disheartened. Um, sometimes I'd see how the church is maybe using the funds or this missions group that I was giving to. And I would just, you know, assume that uh, it just didn't seem like it was something that I wanted to give to anymore. It seems like there was maybe mismanagement on the way that I was perceiving it. So after watching the man of God, Christopher Orgy, um, delivering somebody and the um, person, the demon that was talking about why they cause poverty um, because people aren't uh, freely giving from their heart, I suddenly was starting to realize that I had been listening to those same voices um, in my heart. And my wife had been faithfully giving, but for myself, I was holding back and um, you know paying off debts, um, those types of things. And... I have a really decent job as a manager. I'm a sales manager um, for a large company um, called Sleep Country in Canada. And uh, I was just noticing, even though I'm doing really well, um, there's definitely been an increase in how I've noticed us giving for the last three months, specifically and consistently, that there has been a real boost in sales, as well as just noticing that customers would cancel um, oftentimes, and I would always feel like I'm being stolen from, or I'm just, it's like the circumstances or something just isn't quite right. So I noticed that after giving significantly and expecting God, um, there was a um, specific phrase that I believe the man of God was talking about where when you're giving, you're giving to God, and God would, oh, I remember this demon was talking about how when people are giving, they should give to God so that God can give it back to them and they can abundantly keep giving more. That's the whole purpose, is that we give so that God can give back to us and we can keep giving more and more in an increased way. And so just me psychologically, just thinking about how the kingdom of God operates that way was really inspiring because I want to be able to give to the kingdom and I want to be able to to be faithful in that way. And, and the man of God was just talking about how uh, in Malachi, just um, like talking about how we're stealing from him um, and how in terms of ministries, there's lots of ministers that are not really receiving what they should be. And that's something that I was also feeling conviction about is that I used to also be in ministry for a short period of time, two or three years as a missionary. Um, and I just I felt almost just like I wasn't even being provided for. So it's almost the same thing that I was doing that I was uh, not receiving, I end up doing to others. And so I, I wanted to break that and as well as be able to be generous in my heart and just let that part of my heart flow that had been stopped up. Ever since then, I feel like I've noticed a change in terms of sales. Um, it's been a significant increase. Um, and uh, each year I typically win an award at my company. Um, and so this year I won the one of the runner-up awards um, that just happened. Um, I was uh, third um, out of the company uh, in our region of about 22 associates. And so I just wanted to give a testimony about that as well, that um, the year before that, I was the runner up uh, for this award. And the year before that, I was the um, winner of the entire um, uh, province. And so I had received that after going to um, Greece. And I just noticed that there was a really massive uh, increase as, in terms of favor on my life. <clears throat> so I just wanted to give glory for to God for that and for that change of heart um, and just repenting for, it seems like, 10 years of not being able to give to God. Um, or not just not for me, not giving to God and just recognizing that that is uh, really wrong. So I just feel really grateful to hear that message. I've been sharing it with my friends and um, hopefully that can continue on so that the man of God's message can continue to reach out to other people. And so I'm excited to be able to share that as well as in my heart. My wife and I um, have been praying um, the proclamations. There was an email that was sent out. We've been praying those, uh, at least I have anyways. And um, I want to be a landlord. I want God to be able to bless us so that we can not only have a family, but we can also be um, those that are good stewards of what we have. And we can multiply and increase it in such a way that Jesus really just does have um, faithful givers in his kingdom. So uh, we just want to be able to give in that way. So hallelujah. Amen. And so we are just so grateful uh, to be a part of this ministry and so in Jesus' name, we are just, I want to give glory to Jesus for the message through the man of God. Amen.
Oh, my God. my daughter. This ring cannot live. Stay happy. This ring cannot be poor. Leave her alone. Which kingdom do you belong to? My daughter's of water. This ring cannot be poor. She's my daughter. She's your daughter. Leave her. This ring cannot be poor. She's married to me. Leave her alone. She's all mine. She's all mine. She can never get married. She's married to me. Leave her alone. What have you done to her career? <laughs> she can never be useful. She can never be useful. Why? She can never be useful. Because she's mine. I have everything for her. What is she looking for again? What do you have for her? What you claim you have everything for her? I have all riches, all wealth. All oh, riches for her. Yeah. What is she looking for? In my kingdom. Which kingdom? In the waters. In the water? I am in all the seven waters. So you can't find me. Leave her alone. God finds everyone. No one is from God. And we are all waiting for you. Leave her alone. Leave her alone. I want to warn you again. Leave her alone. Now I send fire to all the seven waters. <laughs> and I send fire to the prince and kings of battle. In the seven waters. I mention where you are located. How do you operate? You king of the seven waters. How? How? We move everywhere. We get married to them when they are young. You get married to male or female or both of them? Two females. Uh -huh. When they are young. When they are young. Yes. How? Where? Where do you conduct your evil marriage? Where? In the sea. In the, in the sea. sea. We come at night and take them away. In the sea they belong to us. How do you appear in the night? What form do you normally take to appear? I come like a snake. Mm -hmm. I come like a lizard. I come anywhere like. Do you appear physically or spiritually, you wicked king from the seven waters? I appear physically. Physically. I'm both spiritual. I do whatever I want. How do you appear whatever. physically? You said you appear physically, both. Physically, I enter into someone. Yeah. You enter people? Yes. Male or female? Male. Male. Yes. What do you normally enter male to do? To approach my daughter and talk to her. When she has saved them, I will let it go for like a year, then I will scatter it. That's how I move. How many females have you possessed in this manner, caused them to live lives of sin, life of fornication and adultery, and scatter their marriage life, their health, their career, their destiny, their blessings and future? How many people? They are much. They are all with my rings. They can't get married. Physical rings or spiritual rings? Spiritual ring, it's in their blood. They cannot. How do you normally insert that spiritual rings? By into biting them? them. By biting them. You... I can come in some form of anything to bite them. Whatever that thing is there. Many have been bitten by mosquito and other insects. Many have been bitten by rats and other rodent animals. Yes. Many have been bitten by dogs and other animals. Yes. Are you the one that used to send these animals to attack people in this manner? Yes, and I'm through that means possess them. Yes, I'm the one. Who are you once again? I'm the king of the water. Don't ask me again. What is your real name in the water as the king of the seven waters? What is your real name? King Jesse. King Jesse, that's my name. How do you, you mean? You can't do anything to me. King Jesse, that's God my name. God has already captured King you Jesse, for final destruction. My name. King Jesse, that's my name. <laughs> King Jesse, that's my name. You cannot fight here. Now explain. How long have you been existing? You wicked king from the seven waters. How many years altogether? For a million years, you can't count. What are you doing now? What is happening to you? And your evil kingdoms? Leave me alone. If you want her, you can take her. But leave me alone. <laughs> now watch. I send fire to the seven waters, your wicked crowns and thrones. Your uh, evil powers in the marine world. And I send fire to all males and females you are possessed all around the world. And I command them to receive deliverance. Holy Ghost, turn the devil, Jesus Christ. 
You can't do me anything. I am so powerful. Now check what is happening to you. I will still come back. You can't do me anything. No one exists to tell these stories. Not even Egyptian soldiers that wanted to destroy the Israelites that lived to tell these stories. I will still come back. You can't do me anything. Now check the air. Check the water. I command the waters to be dried up where you are hiding. Throw the seven waters. You can't do me anything. You really want to confirm it. You can't do me anything. Throw the sand, the water, the way of darkness. You think you can destroy my home? Check your home and you see can't. what is happening to all of them. You have only destroyed two. Let's see how you go again. You can't do anything. Now, Jack. You can't do anything. You I can't do anything. Why is seven you waters to be dried up? All of them. <laughs> there are still waters here. Go no go water. Go. You cannot exist. <laughs> oh, you have destroyed three. I'm saying that. I'm saying that. You will be the one Let's to see. confirm that all of them are totally destroyed. Now, what? They cannot. They cannot. Jack. I'm so powerful. Jack. You can't do that. Jack. I sent fire to the Indian Ocean. Where is sea? Where did you just mention? How do you know that? Where is sea? I sent fire to the Bermuda Triangle, Atlantic Ocean, Pacific Ocean, Mediterranean Sea. Where is sea? My queens are crying. Leave me alone. No, you said you cannot today. destroy anyone. Check. Let me go back Who today. Who do you want to confirm? Try Let me go back today. My queens are crying. Leave me alone. Let me go back today. I command all of them to be destroyed. Go to your queens and kings, queens and princesses, maids, your snacks. My queens are crying. Let me go back today. Try. I send fire to all satanic queens and kings. Let me, let me go back to my queen. You will not escape. You cannot go back to them. Now check your waters. I sent fire to Atlantic Ocean. Let me go back to my queen. River Niger. River Benue. I sent fire to all lakes, oases, streams, canals. Swarms of all kinds and wicked forests. Find the devil, Jesus Christ. You thought you could hide. Now check your waters. What is happening to all of them? My queens are crying. There's no water. And you said the waters no water. cannot be dried up. What happened to the My waters? My queens are crying. There's no water. But you were driving water. here that there are I still need waters. Water. I need water. I need water. Now I need check. Water. I sell fire to the blue sea. The dark water, water of trials, afflictions, and confusion. Turn the devil, Jesus Christ. I send fire to the water of death, and I command all of them to be completely dried up, no about to exist again. You can't dry the water of death. Now check. That's the covenant water. Now check. You can't dry it. Can't there dry is it. only one genuine covenant, the covenant blood of Jesus Christ. The That's new covenant. The covenant water. Now check. You can't dry it. I send fire to water. me. Do not dry my water. River of death. And I command all the evil powers. The evil covenants, not only to be broken, but to be completely dried up you by the fire of the Holy Ghost. You can't dry my water. The fire of the Spirit of God has descended to you, wicked river of death. What just happened? Say the name of Jesus Christ. What just happened? What just happened? Explain. Who are you? Who are you? You have what been encountering happened? others, not here. Okay. You were hiding on Sunday. You've succeeded. You've succeeded. Doing what? What have I succeeded doing? You tried the water. You dare not try the water of riches. There can never be rich on earth. I sound fire to all the river of poverty. Hush it. Turn the devil to Jesus Christ. And I command all of them to be dried up by the fire of the Holy Ghost. Rich 
Riches. Do not let them take you. Riches. You can't do this to me. You want to murder me for this? You can't do this to me. I have gone too far. You can't do this to me. I sent for you to the river of hardship, poverty, generational curses, sicknesses, diseases, pain, sufferings, shame. And I command all of you to be dried up, never to exist anymore. Try in the name of Jesus Christ. You can't do this to me. I command the treasures of Satan to be completely destroyed by the fire of the Holy Spirit. Turn the name of Jesus Christ. You've taken everything from me. What else? I told you, take her and leave me. Take her and leave me. Everything is gone. You know how many years I work hard to get this? It doesn't matter. Why did you do this? Everything that has a beginning always has an end. And the end of your existence you. and everything you have has come. But what I know, my covenant with them can never be destroyed. Now check. I command the fountain of the blood of Jesus to flow down to your wicked covenants. And I command all satanic covenants to be broken. The tree the name of broken. Jesus Christ. It can never be broken. Now check. It can never be broken. It's happening ah! already. Check. Ah! Check. Ah! 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 No. No. You can't do this to me. Check. He's done already. Ah! 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 Why do you want to take away my tree? This tree has been with me for years. I sell fire to the tree of death. No, 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 no. Tree of hardship them. and poverty. You want to free them. Turn the name of Jesus Christ. Christ. Even her mother is there. Everyone is there. I yeah. command all your yeah. tied there from generations to generations. Seeing the creation of the world to be taken out of your wicked evil tree. No, you can't do Place this. Place in You can't do this to me. I will take it. Turn. I will take it. They are loose. I will take it. You can set them free. Now check, they are coming out one by one, all of them. They have come out.
Jesus International Ministry in Jesus Christ's name. Shalom. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Tell us your name, where you're coming from, and what you do for a living. My name is uh, Mispa Omojua. Um, I reside in the United States. Um, I'm a nurse. All right, sister, go ahead and share with us your wonderful testimony. Uh, my testimony, which is for the glory of God, goes like this. Um, when we started, before we came to City of Jesus International, we had some issues, and we have been going to the Synagogue Church of All Nations, but because of the distance from United States coming back here too, because most of us who are in the United States, we focus when it comes to spiritual things, our attention is back home here. So um, we have been coming to City of Jesus International. I will start by talking about the spirit husband issue. It has been troubling me for so long. While I was in synagogue, going to synagogue, is the sticker that I took from there that used to help me as I was praying for some problems that I had. So when the spirit husband, every blessed day, they, when I go to sleep, the spirit husband would like, the spirit husband would visit me. When he sleeps with me, everything would just be falling apart, nothing succeeds. I would just be like a beggar. Used to work farm, go back farm for people to work, to have small, small francs to earn living. But I knew that when I go abroad, things would change for me. When God opened doors for me, I never knew where I would get the money to pay. So I was just coming to go into the synagogue knowing that one day God will open doors as he's opening for other people. But I knew the spirit husband would not let things go smoothly. So when I got the sticker, the day I put the sticker inside my pants, I'd be lying down on the bed. I would see the spirit husband lying down on the bed there, but he would not touch me. Maybe it's because of the sticker. And then I would see fire burning on that sticker. But I would see the spirit husband lying down there. He would not touch me, but the sticker would be in my pants and fire would be catching there. I knew that sticker was helping me. Is it because of the fire that was catching on that sticker that is preventing him from touching me? And I will never go to bed to sleep because I will go to bed, spirit husband will come. So when TB Joshua passed away, things fall apart, things were just making it tight for some time. Glory be to God that we saw um, City of Jesus started. We start coming to man of God and we complain about that issue. But at this time, God has opened up for me, I've gone abroad. And we started complaining to him about the spirit husband because he was still visiting me in the United States. So we started telling man of God that the spirit husband thing is terrible. You appear to my husband, who can even testify because he's sitting right here. The spirit husband will appear to my husband and tell him that I cannot leave your wife because we have three kids. If I leave the wife now, what about the kids? So when he came to me, when my husband started fighting this battle, he started focusing on my husband, going there to, to like, trying to negotiate. My husband would tell him that we can't negotiate. He said, I will kill you. My husband said, how can you kill a spirit? I'm a spirit. I'm already dead in Christ. How can you kill somebody who is already dead? So the spirit husband would go. We started fighting together as husband and wives, joint battle. Then the man of God who also prayed with us. He called us and was praying with us. He told us it would be over. So I saw the spiritual kids that I have. I knew them, I saw them. Each time in my dream, I would see them, they'd they be stoning me. I think it's because of the prayers. When they stone me, when I try to get back and fight, then they run and hide. So when man of God would call, well, how about your dreams? I would tell him. He said, don't worry, it'll be over. So prayers was going on, and I became a partner. I knew that one also facilitated to make things happen for me. And during this time, I was having issues with my job. I just knew that. My village people were pursuing me everywhere I was going. Because when I go for a job, everybody likes me. I'm very intelligent in my job. My patients, they like me. And the patient has the right to say, I don't want to work with this nurse. And you have to leave the job until another job shows up for you. And me too, I have the right to say, I don't want the patient. But since I need the money, I kept going to the job. But one blessed day when I have nightmare in the night, going to my job, the patient will just get up and say, don't want me for no good reason and start fighting me. Just start laying accusations. Before I know, the man of God will call, what's going on? It's like he has seen everything. I say, it's terrible. I'll explain everything. You say, don't worry. Just don't make anything that will be used against you as accusation. 
Three days later, they will call me back in that job and start begging me. I will go back for the job. If the nightmare starts again, I will know that something will happen with my job. Maybe I'll lose the job and go for another job. I'll see a job like this. They say there's no job. I'll call my husband and start crying. He said, don't worry. We'll pray. He started praying and fasting. After prayers and fasting, before they will give me a job. Man of God and the prayer warriors in this church, they have been praying. We too have been playing our part by being faithful partners. Because we know the people that are praying for you by day and by night, they are sacrificing their life for those of us who are out there and for other viewers out there. So I believe that my partnership with this church contributed a lot. It showed God that it showed God my level of determination in following Him alongside the prayers. So that prayer has been going on and on. Finally, that spirit husband was defeated because I no longer see the spirit husband anymore. And it has been like for more than 30 years in my life. I never knew he would leave, but finally it's a thing of the past. So as this coaching was praying for us, I knew that one day I would come here to perfect the deliverance, but I must give glory to God for what has already happened. So with the issues that I had, they were stealing my green cards over and over. When I had the first green card, it was stolen. I had the second one, it was stolen. I had the third one, it was stolen again. I was just like, I'll never have document in my life. Is that they have vowed that I'll never have document. They stole even my ID. So when I applied again, they sent me a letter that is like you are using green cards for business. No further action can be taken. I knew that this one needed just God intervention. As man of God, I've been praying, the church praying, we too, we have been praying without ceasing. To God who made everything happen, I went for the citizenship interview. Um, when I went for the citizenship interview, I first of all contacted a lawyer. He said it's not going to be possible. You have issues with those document issues. So I thought that things would never work. So I contacted the man of God. I told him about a lot of issues. He said, don't worry, just go ahead. Just go ahead and do what you want to do. God is playing his own part. So to, the, to God be the glory, I went for the citizenship. I just passed. They just handed my citizenship. I give glory to God for the life of man of God and for coaching as a whole, even the prayer warriors. So I give God to glory, the glory for that. And while I was in U.S., I remember my daughters were prayed for in this church. Elizabeth, Gillian, and Delight. They were both delivered here. Because they attacked, they were not attacking only me, they were attacking the kids too. They were trying, like, trying to go wayward. But after the deliverance, everybody started focusing in life. So I want to thank God for my deliverance that took place, even though... It was far distance and never been a barrier. So I want to give God the glory for the prayers of Kojim, the prayer warriors, even the, the singers, because when they sing, the Spirit of God moves. I appreciate God for the whole team of this church, the entire congregation, and the, for the viewers that are always joining the church to pray. I want to give glory to God, and I say thank you to everybody. All right, sister, we thank God for your life. We are happy for what God has done for you. And we are also appreciating you for taking the stress to come here to make sure you share your wonderful testimony to the glory of God. All right, sister, we would like to ask, you mentioned earlier that your three daughters were delivered from evil spirits. We would like you to tell us this evil spirits that they were delivered from and how it affected their lives. So... Like some, one was running away from school. I'll pay school fees for one school. After I pay school fees, buy books, everything, boarding school. She get up on the day that school is going. She reach at the gate. She put all the things there, buy a big box of goods, everything. So she will be satisfied with everything. She ran away from there. And wherever she run and go, she will call me and say I should send her money. I say money is not happening. They will go and cash her from there, come back for her to go to school. She changed school. I still go and pay the school fees again. Done everything. She said she want business. I said, I cannot do business. Why are you still small like that? It's a means to go squander money. You have to go to school. The head was not for school. It was just one that was going to school, but it was beginning to go we were wayward. Then the other one was like a kid that just take pick around to help. They were all like trying to go wayward. 
But after the deliverance here, everybody is now studying. The one in university is also picking up. Everybody is focused. Everybody wants to become somebody in future. So I give glory to God. All right, sister, we thank God for your life and the life of your daughters. We would like to know your word of advice to people listening to you right now, people overseas who are facing similar challenges that you are having, and people overseas who received prayers and failed to share their testimonies. What do you have to say to them? Um, some people, like those that know, they are going through some issues. They don't want to be seen on camera. They are ashamed. They say they cannot go there because they will see them on camera. God forbid, but they are dying with some serious situations. I just want to tell them that you can share, you can sell your shame and get your deliverance. It's for you to make a choice. Hiding, hiding will not take you anywhere because you never come out with your freedom. When you are delivered, you are free for life. You don't have to pay anything for that deliverance. They want to sneak and go to churches where they will pray for you behind the doors. And I don't know if that one will actually help because they have been going places like some I know going through terrible situations. But because of the camera, they really ask me, is there going to be camera there? They don't want to come here because there's camera. So I want to advise them. I am a free woman now. I am free. I have joy in my heart now for a lot of things because I've gotten my deliverance. And you must be focused. You can't eat your cake and have it. There are many people claiming they want this, but they are having it behind the doors and hiding, thinking nobody is seeing. God sees even the deepest darkness. You cannot be eating your cake and claim to have it again. So if you want deliverance, you must be sincere. Live a holy life. Stay away from sin and sinful desires. Whatever you are doing, whatever you are doing, God is going to see you through. Thank you, Ma, for this wonderful advice. We can see a video being played on the screen. We would like you to confirm, is it your daughter receiving deliverance? Yes. Hallelujah. Viewers, you can watch the screen of your television. You can see the daughter of the very lady sharing her testimony, receiving deliverance and the power of the Holy Spirit. After which, the lady is here now to come and testify to the glory of God. Let us put our hands beautifully for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. All right, Ma, over to you. Yeah, I have one more testimony. Something happened a few months backward in the United States where I intervened in a case that happened back home. A, a child of three years old was raped by a 15-year-old boy. When they called me and told me, I immediately sent the child to the hospital and asked that child to be taken for examination and then to report it to the police. Then I began re receiving threats from the family of the 15-year-old boy. And he said I should drop the case. I said I can't drop the case. They have to take it to a police so those boys will be prevented from doing it again. And because of that, even though we never went forward with the case, the four, three days later, I was sitting on my bed discussing with my husband on the phone. 12 midnight on dot, I had a slap on my jaw. Pam! But there was nobody around. Immediately, I told my husband what has happened. He told me, drop that phone, let's pray. We started praying immediately. We informed the man of God. And a few days later, I started feeling pain on the entire side of the body with the entire hand. When I complained, he told me they are trying to give me stroke and paralysis. So he said, don't worry, God is on your side and he's fighting for you. And then he prayed for me. He said, you are covered and you have been redeemed. I believe it. And I believe that God actually intervened because since then, nothing happened to me. So I want to give God the glory. Because that was pure witchcraft. That was, that was so idol powers also. Because I, in my dream, I saw idol powers hanging on the walls where I was sleeping in my room in the U.S. They were telling me that those are the gods your parents are worshipping. So... And the thing have been pursuing me to and fro. I always dream see myself in the village back. So I was complaining. They say it's uh, foundational powers. But I can see my life from the life of my siblings, those who are not really sincere with the things of God, I can really see what is happening. I know that truly God is on my side. So this is also to advise people who are serving God that you are serving God is not in vain. 
Just your sincerity in calling upon the name of the Lord. Big trouble will come, even without your knowledge, God will deliver you from it. Just your presence in the house of God will save you a million times from trouble that you will not have been able to fight that problem, if not for God. So I thank God for the presence of God in this place, the contribution of prayers in this place that have saved me all, all the way in the United States. Because just in my dream, seeing the man of God from here in my dream means that prayers from here, they are visiting me in the U.S. and they are working wonders in my life. I give God the glory. Hallelujah. Sister, we thank God for your life. We are also thanking God for the life of your daughters and other members of your family. We want to encourage you to make the word of God the foundation of your life. Continue to live a life of a testifier because testifiers are those who receive God's blessings and give glory to God for what he has done for them. We advise you to live a life that represents the life of Christ by making the word of God the foundation of your life, staying away completely from every form of sin and sinful desire, meditating on the word of God day and night, and we see God doing more greater things in your life in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We can do better for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. What you people hide. You say people used to admire me. If you go out and they don't admire you, you get angry. You go and buy another cloth and you present a fresh list to your husband or to your parents. If you are deeply driven by evil spirits, then you also present such evil lists to immoral boyfriends or girlfriends. These are things that are driving you, especially during festive periods. Look at the kind of hair you want to tie, the kind of dress you want to put on. Just check yourself. Who are you putting all these things on for? You say just no more likeness and you become evil instruments in the hands of Satan and all his evil agents. So we seducing people everywhere. She has the spirit of he and she. Seducing not only men, but also what? Female. Which one is more dangerous? Can I hear you? He and she living in you. And you are calling it normal. Repent. That is why you people normalize everything. You create law. You call it, it's a normal thing. You use that to promote forbidden sins that cost God's anger to wipe away the entire earth and everybody in it. And you are calling it normal. You are the one that promoted the law. You sign it into law. To you is normal. Repent. It is not normal. What is not normal is what? Not normal.
Excellent is your name. Marvelous is your power. Lord, you are wonderful. Excellent is your name. You are beautiful beyond description. All power to your name, Lord. Can you give him some praise? Hallelujah. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. We give him praise at the night, Savior. Come on. Put your hands together for Jesus. Hallelujah. Excellent is your name. Marvelous is your power. Oh, God, you are beautiful. My God, you are excellent. Sing it loud and loud. Oh, marvelous is your power. Oh, Lord, you are wonderful. Alpha, Omega. Alpha, Omega. You are worthy of my praises today. You are worthy of my praises today. Alpha. Alpha, Omega. Come on, sing it out. Alpha, you are worthy, Lord. Yeah. Sing Alpha Omega, Alpha Omega, Alpha Omega, Alpha Omega. Alpha Omega, Alpha Lily of the Valley. You are worthy of my praises today. You are worthy of my praises today. Sing Alpha. Alpha Omega. Give him some praise. Come on. Alpha Omega. You are worthy of my praises today. You are worthy of my praises today. Joy overflows. Joy overflows in my heart. Sing a new song. Sing a new song to the Lord. Joy overflows. Joy overflows. Come on, sing a new song. I will praise your name. I will worship you. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory. Somebody lift him up. Let me see you lift him. in the heavens is alpha is omega beginning the end beginning the end ocean divine father we give you praise oh we give you glory oh we give you glory somebody make some noise come on give him some praise give him your best come on come on come on come on come on, come on. Come on, come on. I will praise him every day. Hey, I will praise the Lord. Praise the Lord now. Are you sure you've got time to praise him? Come on. Everybody praise the Lord now. Every day. Praise the Lord. Of God, praise the Lord now. Praise Him every day. Praise Him every day. Everybody praise the Lord now. Praise Him every day. Praise Him every day. Everybody praise the Lord now. Praise Him every day. Jehovah. Jehovah. Call his name, he can move mountains, he can heal the sick, he can raise the dead. His name is Alpha, his name is Omega, 
His name is Jesus, lover of my soul. Jehovah, 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 Jehovah. I'm not seeing you dancing to the Lord. Come on. For a few minutes, let's give him some praise. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on. Come on. Give him your best praise. Our God is ours our praise and worship. Come on. Tambira Jehovah. Hey. Tambira Jehovah. Tambira Jehovah, Tambira Jehovah, you say Tambira Jehovah, Tambira Jehovah, come on tell your neighbor say, Tambira Jehovah, tell your neighbor say, Tambira Jehovah, yeah, look at what it means, come let's dance to the Lord, that's why I say she's tell him, come let's dance to the Lord, hey, hey, Come, let's dance to the Lord, for He is good. Come, let's dance to, come, let's dance to the Lord. Come, let's dance to the Lord here. For He is good, He is kind. His mercy is in yours forever. Look at me. Can you look at me? What? What? Two? In your Let's go now. Sing it one more time. Come, let's dance to the Lord. Come, let's dance to the Lord. Tell your neighbor, tell your neighbor. Come, let's dance to the Lord. Come on, turn up, person. Come, let's dance to. Come, let's dance to the Lord. Come, let's dance to the Lord. Give a listen to the Lord. Come, let's dance to the Lord. For good and this kind of mercy is in your forever. Come, let's dance to the Lord. Okay, are you? Yelele, 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 yelele. Come, let's dance to the Lord. Yelele, 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 yelele. Hey, yelele, yelele, come, let's dance to the Lord. Hey, yelele, 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 yelele. One more time. Yelele, 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 yelele. Listen, you are God. Hey, Jesus, I say you are not just a big God. You are mighty. You are not just a large God. Hey, Jesus, you are a great God. Sing, you are God. You are God. Declare Jesus. Can we give him some praise for a few minutes? You are a great God. You are big, 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 big. Okay, good. Sing aloud. You are lot. You are You are big, 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 Listen, listen, listen. I come before you today. And that's one thing that I just want to say. You say, thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. See, I come before you today. You know the song. Come on. And that's one thing that I just want to say. You say, thank you, Lord. I just want to Listen, for all you've given to me, 
And for the blessings that I cannot see, yeah. Thank you, Lord. I just wanna thank, thank you, Lord. With a grateful, with a grateful heart. Say, say, with a song of praise, hey. With an outstretched arm, hey. I praise and say thank you. Thank you, Lord. I'm gonna see you grateful. Come on, say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just want to. I want to hear you say. I come before you today. Let's sing it again. And there's one thing that I just want to say. Please shout it loud. I just want to. For all you've given to me. From for the miracles that I enjoy. Say. I can't hear you screaming up. Say. With a grateful heart. With a song of praise. With an outstretched arm. I bless your name. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank I just wanna thank, thank you, Lord. Can I sing one more time? Come on. Somebody shout Jesus. Give me this. Come on. Come on. Come on. Kill him up. 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 One more time. I come before you today. Come on, Jesus. And there's one thing that I just want to say. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Jesus, for all you've given to me, my family, and for the blessings that I enjoy. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Hey, with a grateful heart. With a grateful heart. And a song of praise. We're on our stretch of home. I praise your name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, I just wanna thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on, let me see you dancing. Three minutes. Come on, come on. Glory, honor, power, hey, to the Lamb of God forever. You sing it loud now. Amen. Sing. Amen. Blessings and glory. Blessings. Amen. Be mercy, be the Everybody, let me hear you say. Be mercy, be nigwe. Say, Hana si, Hallelujah. Hey, Hana si, Hallelujah. Jehovah Meliwo. Jehovah Meliwo. Whoa, Meliwo. Everybody say, Hana si, Hallelujah. Hana si, Hallelujah. Jehovah Meliwo. Be mercy, be I will lift up his name. My God is a big God. Yes, 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 yes. My God is a big God. Hey, we serve a mighty God. He lifts me up. Come on, come on, come on. Somebody lift your hands up. Somebody lift your hands up. Come on, come on. Let me see you. Let me see you. Let me see you. Let me see you. And it's on me around. And it's on me around, yeah. And it's on me around, yeah. And it's 
Turn me around. He placed my feet upon a solid rock. I feel like shout. Raise a shout to the King of Glory. Somebody give him your best dance. Hey, hey, hey. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. I want to see you dance, 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 dance. We have limited time. Come on, 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 come on. Let me hear you sing it. Let me see you dance it. Let me see you praise it. Let me see you dance 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 it. Hey, somebody make some noise. I want to see, see you dance. Let me 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 see you dance. Hey, 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 Jehovah Mighty, you are strong and mighty. You are strong and mighty. You are strong and mighty. You are strong and powerful. You are strong and powerful. Somebody make some noise. Carry me go, Jehovah. Carry me there, go, there, go, there, go. Carry me there, go. Come on, we have some little time. Hey, come on, come on. Carry me, 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 carry He's deliverer. Hey, wait, wait, wait. Let me sing this. My God is awesome. He can move mountains. Keep me in the valley. Hide me from the rain. My God is awesome. My God is awesome. Savior, Savior of the whole. Give it up. Give our salvation forever here will reign. Lift some voice, my God. My God is awesome. He can move mount. Keep me in the valley. We now, we now, we now. Jesus, we now, we now, we now. Oh my God, you reign forevermore. Come on, everywhere you are singing out. We now, I want you to lift your voice. Come on. When you call him the winner, come on, mean it. We now. You reign forevermore. Jesus is the winner. He wins every battle. He calms the storm. He raises the dead. Oh, we bless the Lord. You reign forevermore. One more time. Jesus is the winner. My 
Savior, my Savior, He is the winner man. Yeah. Cause in your precious life, you've healed in my life. Oh, raise your hands everywhere. In your failing love, you surrender. Oh, why not you open your mouth and sing this song? Thank you for your grace to love and obey your word. Hey, my God. Everywhere you are, all over the world, lift your voice and declare in your failing love. You surrender. We thank you for your grace. Oh, mighty Jesus, your love and kindness is so amazing, it's so amazing, it's so amazing. I want to live in your will. Oh, church, in your precious life. It's your time of healing. Oh, my God. Come on, everyone. In your... Hey, my God. Oh, thank you for your grace. Is a song of commitment to live to your will. One more time, your time in your precious life. Please raise your voice. Make a pledge to him. Say, let your will be done. Let your kingdom come. You know the song. Let your in my life. Let your will be done. We want to see your kingdom come. Yeah, my Radogosha. To set a home. Let your will be done. Let your kingdom come. Let your power flow. Power flow. To set a home. One more time, everybody. Let your will. Let your will be done. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done. One more time. Let your kingdom come. Please sing it loud. Let your If there's no one who can live and do your will. If there's no one who can live and do your will. You know the song, everyone. Make me Lord to live and do your will. Make me Jesus. Make me Jesus Christ to live and do your will. If there's no one, there's no one who can live, who can live and do your will. 
Jesus cry. Now, when singing this song, I like you to place your hands on your chest. If there's no one, your hands on your chest. Yes. Sing, cry out, cry out. Hey, my God. Cry out to Him, Jesus. Who can live? Let us pray. Father, we thank you. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you. And the Holy Spirit, we thank you for counting us worthy to be in your presence. In your presence, there is peace. In your presence, there is joy. In your presence, there is full forgiveness of sins. We are here to receive forgiveness. We are here to receive joy and everlasting peace. We are also here to receive eternal life. Let these free gifts be our portion forever in the name of Jesus Christ. Tell your neighbor my sins are forgiven. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, my sins are forgiven. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, my sins are forgiven forever. Say, neighbor, my heart is at peace. Say, neighbor, I am filled with the joy of the Holy Spirit. Say, neighbor, my heart is free from worries. Say, neighbor, my heart is free from fear. Say, neighbor, my heart is free from doubt. from doubt. Say, neighbor, neighbor. Are, you aware are you aware that your problems, that your problems are, permanently solved? are permanently solved? Say, neighbor, neighbor. I, am aware I am aware that my problems, that my problems are, totally are totally solved forever. forever. Say, neighbor, neighbor. celebrate. Your problems are permanently solved. Hallelujah. Greet your neighbor, Shalom. Greet the viewers, Shalom. Greet your present situation, Shalom. In Jesus Christ's name. Amen. You may be seated. Turn with me 
to the book of Ephesians chapter 2. Also find time to read the book of the Gospel of John chapter 14. The book of Ephesians chapter 2 Take note of verses 14 to the end. Then the book of the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verses 27. All right, let's read Ephesians chapter 2. And you... He made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience, among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just as the others. But God, who is rich in mercy, because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved and raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. Verses 8, which is very important. For by grace you have been saved through faith. Take note of this. For by grace you have been saved through faith. Grace here is just opposite of merit. Sometimes your situation used to camouflage and look as if it is not redeemable. When you begin to consider your own efforts, the efforts you put in place, or the strength you have, you might be forced not to have faith anymore. The Bible says here in verses 8, for by grace you have been saved through faith, not through doubt. For by grace you have been saved through faith and that not of yourself, the Spirit of God through Apostle Paul made it clear here. And that not of yourself, if you are many, and that not of yourselves. Think about what God is saying here. What you cannot do is what God can easily do. You cannot receive anything from God if you don't believe in him and have faith in him. What you cannot do in your life are there to be done by God. Say neighbor, what you cannot do in your life is there to be done 
by God. Verses 8. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Why is it gift? It is something you do not have. And it is something you cannot give to yourself. You cannot give yourself eternal life. Perfect healing. Salvation. Complete deliverance. There are things you cannot give yourself. These are the things you need to look on to God. Have faith in him and receive. Your faith is a spiritual or heavenly currency through which you receive things that are made available by God. Let us read on. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works. Take note of this. What have you tried to do that you have not been able to do? What have you tried to achieve that you have not been able to achieve by your personal works or efforts? It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. Things that cannot be done by you are there to be done by God, so that all boasting will be excluded. The Bible says, he who glories should not glory in himself, but in the Lord. That's which you cannot do in your life is there to be done by God so you can return all glory to him. Is there anything impossible for God to do? Can I hear you? Is there any disease that God cannot cure? Can I hear you? Is there any sickness that God cannot heal? Is there any problem that God cannot solve? If the answer is no, leave it for him. Stop doubting. Don't doubt yourself. If at all you want to doubt, doubt Satan. Who are you supposed to doubt? Doubt Satan and his doubts in your heart. Satan in his thoughts has limited God. Write it down. So that any time you have some thoughts within you that are limiting God's ability, you should know that those thoughts are satanic. Satan in his thoughts has limited God. And see him as a supernatural being that can only do some certain things. There is no spiritual barrier for God. There is no situation he cannot handle. There is no problem he cannot solve. There is no sickness he cannot heal. There is no disease he cannot cure. There is no case he cannot quietly handle and win. When God is involved in your life, your case is settled. Satan will not want you to believe. And that is why you can even struggle to say amen. When God is involved in your life, when he comes to take over To do that, which you cannot do yourself, your case is settled. Who is going to do that, which you cannot do yourself? Satan? Can I hear your no? Your doubt? Can I hear your no? 
Your fears. No. Can I hear your no? no. Your unbelief. No. Can I hear your no? no. Your friends. No. Your fellow human beings. No. Any pastor. No. Can I hear your no? no? Who is going to do that which you cannot do yourself? No. Call his name louder. Say God. Every other person failed. And that was why God decided to do the job by himself. By sending his only son, Jesus Christ, and the power of the Holy Spirit. There was no real peace. Where there is no Jesus. There is no real peace. Where there is no permanent solution. Right from the creation of the world, God saw many things that human beings will not be able to do themselves. From generations to generations, there have been constant struggle to do what is right, but no one did what is right. No one was able to do what was and what is still right. God decided to make a deal with the human beings. The real deal of peace when he sent Jesus Christ. Every other person came. Abraham, Moses, Ezekiel, Isaiah, and all the prophets. Every other person came, but they could not get the job done. God decided to send his son, Jesus Christ, the real deal who came to restore the relationship and fellowship between God and man. We are going to read further, but take note of this. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and, not, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Not of works, lest anyone should boast. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Therefore, remember that you, once Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by what is called the circumcision made in the flesh by hands. That at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus you have once, but now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace. You were told to take note of verses 14. For he himself is our peace 
who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of separation, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, that is, the law of commandments, contained in the ordinances, contained in ordinances, so as to create in himself one new man from the two, thus making peace, and that he might reconcile them both to God in one body through the cross, thereby putting to death the enmity. And he came and preached peace to you who were far off, and to those who were near. For through him we both have access by one spirit to the Father. Now therefore, you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom the whole building, being fitted together, grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are being built together for a dwelling place of God in the Spirit. This message taken precisely from Ephesians chapter 2, from verses 14 down to verses 22 and the book of the Gospel of John, chapter 14, particularly verses 27, will lead us to today's message titled Jesus Christ is the real deal. Meaning, Jesus Christ is the real peace deal. The book of the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verses 27. Jesus himself said, My peace I leave with you. My peace I give you, not as the world gives, do I give you. If you are looking for peace of heart, kindly look for Jesus. Who is Jesus Christ? Who is Jesus Christ? Jesus Christ and the word of God are one. In other words, Jesus Christ is God speaking to you. God speaks to his children through his word and by his spirit. There is no real peace in a heart that does not contain the living and eternal word of God. If you are worried, troubled, anxious, frightened, and even panicking, this is a sure sign that your heart is empty without the word of God.
God's word is your spiritual defense that will help you overcome the powers of the enemy. A soldier without a weapon is a soldier who is controlled by fear, worries, and death. What is the cause of fear? Sin is the cause of fear. What can enable you to live above sin? In Psalm 119, verses 11, David said, Your word, O Lord, I have hidden in my heart so that I may not sin against you. How can you be talking about peace when you are not ready to put the words into practice? There is no peace for the wicked. Who are the wicked? The wicked ones are those who hear the word of God, talk about the word of God, even preach it without putting the words of God into practice. For instance, Satan is the first wicked being. Who is the first wicked being? Can I hear you? In the wilderness, where he appeared in the form of snake to test Jesus and tempt him. He also quoted the scripture, meaning he could preach. He could also pretend to be teaching. He could also talk about the word of God, but himself never put the word of God into practice. Satan has children everywhere. How can you be talking about peace when you are not a doer of the word of God? The doers of the word of God are peacemakers. They are the ones that are expected to receive and maintain peace. Everyone is crying out for peace zero all around the world. We need peace in our marriage. Are you a wife? You are crying out for peace. But you have terrible characters that are promoting wars, violence, anger, intolerance, hatred, enmity between you and your husband. Are you a married man? You are saying, I need peace in my marriage. I've had enough of these troubles. Anytime I go out, I'm expected to come back home and enjoy peace in my marriage. Ask yourself, what are those attitudes that are working against the word of God? that are not putting the words of God into practice. There is no peace for the wicked. Satan is the first wicked being. He is the first wicked being who never tried or even desired to put the words of God into practice. He has the words. He talks about the words. He even quotes the words. That is why he can go into the minds of people and tell them, did you not hear what the Bible said in so so and so, so chapters and verses? You have the right. Go ahead and commit sin. You can ask for forgiveness. He talks about the scripture, preaches the scripture, pretends to be teaching the scripture, but he never puts the words of God meaning the scriptures into practice. He is therefore 
the number one wicked being. He is the father of everyone who hears the words of God and fails to put them into practice. If you want peace, then be a doer of the word of God. Tell your neighbor, if you want peace, then be a doer of the word of God. Peacemakers are doers of the word of God. Everyone is crying out for peace. You see people saying there is insecurity in their region or state. Your neighbor is only secure because of you. If you're a peacemaker, you will be a doer of the word of God. You will not be used by evil spirits to kill, to steal, and to destroy. Blood is sacred and must not be wasted. Why are you killing? After killing, you're looking for peace. What kind of peace are you looking for? John chapter 14, verses 27. Jesus said, The peace that I give is not the one that the world gives. What kind of peace are you looking for? Jesus Christ is the Prince of Peace. He is the crowned Prince of Peace because he is simply the first doer of the word of God. He was tempted like all of us to say, no, I will not do the word. He came back to his senses and said, Father, not my will, but let your will be done. He acted on the word of God, even against his own will. It was this decision he took and finally died for all of us on the cross of Calvary that brought about eternal peace. He paid with his own blood. What are you doing that is not promoting peace in your place of work? What are you saying that is not promoting peace in your place of work? Am I the only one? Must I do all the whole job? There are other people. Why only me? After all, others have been promoted. When it comes to working and working, they call my name. But when it comes to promotion, they exclude me. Because of that, you have become lazy. Unwilling to do the right thing. Jesus Christ brought peace. The lasting peace deal to the world with his own life and blood. What are you doing? Why are you not giving your best? You are shifting that responsibility to someone else. There is no real peace for the wicked. Look at many abandoned jobs in your office. You said, no, it's not me that will do it. Your colleagues also said, no, we are not the one that will do it. So the works are abandoned and people are suffering. The job that's supposed to have been done within one day is being piled up for years and people are suffering. 
There are so many unattended fouls that are supposed to have been attended. Many things that are supposed to have been facilitated. If you had allowed yourself to be the doer of the word of God, even in your office, can such negligence, laziness, wicked act bring peace and promotion where you are working? Can I hear your no? no. Can I hear your no? no? Who is the cause of lack of promotion? Your boss or you that refuse to do the right thing? If you know the right thing, why are you looking unto others to do the right thing? Why are you not doing the right thing? If you know the right thing, do the right thing. When it is time to do what is right, you must and should act, not someone else. Tell your neighbor, when it is the time to do what is right, you must and should act, not someone else. Are you talking about nations today? You see one tribe saying we have been marginalized and oppressed. Others who say no, we are the one in charge and we are highly populated. We should continue to dominate even when they are doing the wrong thing. Everybody keeps having one or two grudges in his or her heart. And no one is ready to put the word of God into practice. If you're offended, what did the Bible say? Learn to do what? Forgive and forget. Learn to do what? Forgive and forget. This world cannot exist without offenders and the offended. Get this fact clear, clearly noted. This world cannot exist if there is no what? Offenders and offended. If you are being offended, forgive. If you are the one offending, repent. So that there will be what? Peace. When you forgive, you are the doer of the word of God. When you repent, you are the doer of the word of God. There is no real peace deal where is the real peace deal. No Jesus Christ, no peace. When I say no Jesus, I mean N-O. No Jesus Christ, no peace. Jesus Christ is God's standard of obedience. If you don't have God's, God's standard of obedience in you, you will not have any single peace. If you like, run from one continent to another continent. If you like, run from one village to the town. If you like, Go and borrow money. If you like, let the whole world come and help you. If you do not have God's standard of obedience, which is Jesus Christ in you, 
you will not have the real peace deal. How many times have you been helped? Reconciled? Cancelled? And even spoken to by a group of people? And yet you still lack peace. Someone will say, if I borrow these millions, billions or trillions, if I do this business or that business, if I have this property or that property, I'll be able to have peace. You have borrowed the money. You have been helped. Even some said, don't, don't give us the money again. Meaning, some said, don't pay us back. And yet, there is no peace. Each tribe must learn to be a doer of the word of God. Your obedience is a powerful weapon that cannot be destroyed, defeated, or conquered by evil spirit. Listen. Your obedience to the word of God is a very powerful weapon that cannot be defeated, destroyed, or conquered by your enemies. Every one of us must return to God through his word and by his spirit. That is where we can find the permanent peace. Life is useless, worthless, and even meaningless without the peace of God. Life is what? Meaningless, worthless, and even useless without the peace of God. It is the peace of God in your heart that makes your own life more enjoyable. Satan has been existing even before many people. Many he lives, he has lived longer than many people. But there is something he lacks. What is that thing? The peace of heart. He is the wicked one, and there is no peace for him. Let us look for something we can find. That is the peace of heart. If you are a student and you are sent to school, go there with the spirit of obedience. Obedience to God. Obedience to the school authorities. Obedience to your parents who are also under the influence of the Holy Spirit. That will enable you not only to excel in your studies, but also to have peace of heart that will prosper you anywhere you go. There is no single prosperity. There is no single prosperity in war. Write it down. There is no prosperity in war. There is no prosperity in hatred, anger, worries, and anxiety. 
where there is war, there is nothing like development. God gives us life so we can develop from one stage to another. This shows that life itself is in stages. We need to develop from one level, one stage to another. There is no development where there is what? War. Check your heart. There is constant war between good and evil in your heart. You want to do what is good. I don't know. Spirit will come to your heart and say, why are you doing that? Are you the only one that knows how to do the good thing? What have you achieved in all the good things you have been doing? Why can't you rest a while and taste, T-A-S-T-E, and taste the other side? You can see that already there is what? War in your heart between good and evil. There is war in your heart between the truth and lies. You want to say the right thing. Just say things the way they are. But there are forces within your conscience, within your heart and minds that are telling you, don't say that. Why can't you think first about the consequences of what you want to say? Why do you want to say the truth? Everybody lies. Even the devil will refer you to Psalm 12 verses 2. That says, everyone lies to his neighbor. So even if you tell lies, you are not the first liar. People have called it smart lies. White lies. This shows that there is a war between the truth in your heart and lies. Think about what you are saying. Your heart is supposed to be delivered from the forces of darkness. You want to help people. But anytime you want to help people, there are voices within you that will tell you, why do you want to help this person? Have you forgotten the other day she abused you? Look at the way she walked and passed you without even greeting. When last did she appreciate what you have done? Why do you want to help again? At least you need some appreciation. These are satanic voices within. Waging war against the spirit of generosity in your heart. David said, once God has spoken, I act. He has trained his own heart, his mind and conscience, always to be spiritually alert. Not only to hear the voice of God, but also to act upon them. What about you? Why are you not doing the same? Only the doers of the words of God are real possessors of the real peace deal. Only the doers of the word of God will receive things from God. What you give is what you receive. What are you giving? If what you have been giving have not been yielding or bringing into your life the good things of life, you are a free moral agent. You can decide to change your seeds. The real seed of life is the word of God. 
That is the seed of life. Meaning, the word of God is the good seed. What is the good seed? If the whole world would come together to talk about peace without talking about putting the words of God into practice, it will become what the Bible calls vanity upon vanity. Meaning all will be fruitless except everyone in the world begins to put the words of God into what? Practice. I must learn to hear the message of God and put them into practice. And you, my neighbor, must learn to do what? Hear the message of God and put the same words into practice. That is when all of us can have the real peace deal. If I don't obey the word of God and I find myself killing, becoming a terrorist, causing your security to be threatened, if, I, if on the outside I come together to say, okay, that will be peace zero, whereas I have evil plots to assassinate you, whereas I have evil plots to terrorize you, and everybody around you. Such peace will not last. For peace to reign between us, you must be a doer of the word of God. And I must be a doer of the word of God. Jesus Christ is the first doer of the word of God and is God's standard of obedience. If I say I put the word of God into practice, um, I am only learning to do what Jesus did. I'm only learning to do what? Why do you hate Jesus Christ? The Prince of Peace and expect peace to reign. Why? When they talk about Jesus, you say, no, he's the son of a carpenter. We know his family background. He's our brother. We know his town and his village. You hate someone you should love and you love someone you should hate. Jesus Christ is the number one peacemaker. He was calm and not violent. He was violent against evil spirits, against evil, not against evil flesh and blood. You would have said that people in your village are your enemies. Even the Bible tells you if your enemy is hungry, you should do what? Feed them. If they are thirsty, give them what? Water. If they are homeless, Provide them with shelter. The reason is because your family members, people from your village, co-political parties, or people from other political parties, people from other tribes, or even other nations, are not your real enemies. We are not created to fight against flesh and blood. Play your own role and leave the battle for God. Let us stop blaming each other, hating each other in the name of tribe, race, religion. Or in the name of your political ambition. You want to become a president just because the sitting president is not following your own ideology of hate speech and the like. You are now regrouping yourself, inciting other people to indoctrinate other people 
and then promote hate actions and speech. If you assume office, sit on the throne of leadership in this crooked way, will you also enjoy the peace that are attached to the throne? There is no peace for the wicked. It is possible to sit on the throne of leadership without promoting hate speech, without blaming other people, and without shedding innocent blood. You have just brought politics into humanity. That should not be like that. When it comes to humanity, it is something that God himself has made. The works of God must not be destroyed. Let not your political ambition destroy humanity. Destroy your fellow human beings. As we are seated here, can we begin to say, which tribe do you come from? That does not make a sense. The world supposed to be together, binded together by the Spirit of God, Jesus Christ and the whole and God Himself. We should love ourselves and care for other people. That which you cannot do to yourself, that which you know will hurt you, don't do it to someone else for God's sake. So that there will be peace. Can you see why the message is titled Jesus Christ is the real peace deal. People have been seeking for peace. In different ways. You cannot condemn somebody and expect peace to reign. Jesus said, Oh, I'm sent to bring peace here. I'm the prince of peace. I cannot condemn these people that crucified me. Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they're doing. But you say, Come together. Let us kill all of them. For they know what they are doing. Is that not what you are doing now? Is that not what you are doing now? You are in a position of leadership. You said, these people never voted for me into power. Therefore, there should not be anything like development in their area. Even when they are entitled to that. You say, no, it is only for those who voted me into power. I will not attend to them because they knew what they were doing. That was why they did not vote for me. Look at the case of Jesus, the real peace deal. He said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. He reconciled everybody back to God. In that manner. What about you? The same you are seemingly crying out, I need peace. 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 When you are an instrument of war and violence, repent. Repent! Satan has been an instrument of violence. He has witches and wizards that suck blood. These are evil spirits that promote wars and bloodshed. Anytime they want to hallow the dead gods, check, you will see catastrophe and things that always promote wars, bloodshed, and violence happening all around the world. Which spirit or spirits, do you think has or have been causing all this evil? 
witches and wizards and other forces of darkness. We are the temples of the spirit of God, not the temples of evil spirits. As the living temples of God, we must learn to hallow only the living God Almighty, not the dead God. Anytime you are extremely angry and just want to squeeze somebody, kill the person, and even die in the sin or on the sin, always remember that evil spirit in you are at work. Tell me how many people that have been killed by evil spirits that ever went or entered into heaven. You cannot kill people and find yourself in heaven unless you repent. Heaven is a place where God's peace resides forever. If you want to enter into heaven, you must be a peacemaker, a doer of the word of God. You must be holy, righteous, self-controlled, humble, obedient, generous, joyful, peaceful, and of course, have all the fruit of the spirit of God. You have been pitying yourself from the beginning till now without acting on the word of God. Self-pity cannot take you to heaven. Only your bold action, only your bold willingness to act on the word of God can. I believe this message has actually enabled you to know that there are peace dealers everywhere. But there is one peace dealer that is the real deal. Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the son of the living God, is the real peace dealer. Humble yourself under his mighty hands of humility, obedience, faithfulness, self-control, genuine love, kindness, joy, and holiness so you can receive the peace he gives not as the world gives in Jesus Christ's name Amen. let us rise up for prayers Father we thank you we have strayed by not surrendering ourselves to your son Jesus Christ, the real peace deal. We have dealt with you treacherously, only coming out to cry out, we need peace. God give us peace. Whereas we've been instruments that have been used to promote violence. Only the truth we are able to say will set us free. And that is why we are here 
to say the truth that will set us free today. We ask for your inner grace. We believe, Lord, we ask for your inner grace. Grace to receive Jesus Christ into our hearts and see him as the real peace deal. Fill us with the spirit of holiness more than ever. Fill us with the spirit of righteousness more than ever. Fill us with the spirit of self-control Take away anger. Amen. Take away envy. Amen. Take away bitterness. Amen. Take away stony hearts. Amen. That have been promoting killing, stealing and destruction in the world. In the name of Jesus Christ. Right now we stand against all anti-peace spirits. We stand against Satan, Lucifer, snake, witches and wizards. Spirit of violence, Fire. bloodshed, Fire. all evil cases Fire. that are against your children Fire. all around the world. Fire. We command the evil spirits behind them Fire. to be destroyed by the fire of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Holy Ghost fire. Fire! fire. Fire! 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 Same fire to them. You're going to be aggressive now. It is time to chase them out of your heart. You're going to be aggressive. Be aggressive. You Satan. Lucifer. Poverty. Hardship. 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 Spirit to wife. Spirit to husband. Anywhere you are. Holy Ghost fire. 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 Same fire to them. Same fire to them. The spirit of disobedience. Spirit of disobedience, barrenness, fear, doubt, doubt, hatred, holy God, fire, 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 Same fire to all of them. They cannot continue to attack you. These evil spirits are worse than terrorists. You spirit of disobedience, immorality, drunkenness, drunkenness, death, death, sickness, disease, Loss of memory, anger, depression, 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 madness, 
madness anywhere you are. Holy Ghost fire. Tear, 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 tear. Same fire to all of them. Same fire to all of them. All spiritual terrorists terrorizing your finances. Spirit of death, failure, carry over, carry over, carry over. Loss of memory, loss of memory, forgetfulness. Where are you? Where are you? Holy God fire, same fire, fire, fire. Same for out of them. Make sure you're praying. They are not friends, they are enemies. Same for out to all of them. Same fire to all of them. Same fire to all of them. All anti marriage spirits. Spirit of lack of affection, hatred, infidelity, barrenness, barrenness, hardship, hardship, rejection, anywhere that hiding in your marriage, Holy Ghost fire, Holy Ghost fire, Holy Ghost fire, tear, 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 tear. Same for all of them. They must leave. Same fire to them. They cannot just live comfortably in your marriage. Same fire to them. Witches and wizards that are attacking your marriage, the front of your womb. The blessings of your family. Holy Ghost fire. Holy Ghost fire. Tear. 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 Same fire to them. Same fire to them. Same fire to them. The root of poverty in your family. Root of barrenness. Root of barrenness. Holy Ghost fire. 
Tear! 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 Say fire to all of them. Same fire to all of them. Your spiritual security is important. All evil spirits that are causing your security, threatening your security, causing you not to be secured, even in the dream. Spirit of wet dreams, evil attacks, spiritual wife, Spirit, your husband, astral traveling, astral projection, moving objects, moving objects, impotency, weak erection. Where are you? Where are you? Tear, 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 tear. Same fire to all of them. They cannot tie down your business. The three wise men were blessed and they have something to give. All evil powers that close the doors of your blessings. Holy God fire. Tear, 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 tear. Say fire to them. Self out of them. Self out of them. Self out of them. Self out of them. Idols. Spiritual husband. Which is a wizard. Which is a wizard. Holy God fire. Tear. 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 Self out to all of them. They must leave your bones. They must leave your blood. They must live your life and your health. Say fire to them. All sicknesses in your life, hypertension, diabetes, liver problem, kidney disease, kidney disease, fibroid, 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 infections, infections, Holy Ghost fire, set fire, tear, 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 set fire to all of them. To them. Say fire to them. Say fire to them. They must not be comfortable. Say fire to Satan. You Satan. Lucifer. 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 Serpent. Holy Ghost fire. Holy Ghost fire. Tear. 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 Say fire to all of them. Same fire to all of them. They must leave you forever. They must leave your blood. You hurt IVAs. Cancer. Osa. 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 Where are you? Madness. Deafness. Dumbness. Dumbness. Holy Ghost fire, set fire, set fire, tear, 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 set fire to all of them.
Same fire to them. Jesus Christ is the real peace deal. All satanic deals, all satanic deals in charge of sicknesses, diseases, hardship, failure, disappointment, hatred, divorce, separation, Holy Ghost fire, set fire, set fire, set fire, fire, fire. Same fire to all of them. Same fire to them. Lose your family from all generational curses. Lose your family and your children from suffering, hardship, poverty, delay, disappointment, fear, lies of sin, Holy Ghost fire. Fear, fear, fear. Same fire to them. Pray your way. Make sure you're praying within your heart. Continue to pray. Continue to pray. Continue to pray. Continue to pray.
Continue to pray in your heart. Ask God to fill you with the spirit of Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit. The spirit of peace. Continue to pray in your heart. Make sure you're praying.
Continue to pray. Leave him. What are you doing in him? Turn the name of Jesus Christ. What are you doing in him? Speak quickly. Turn your kingdoms. Lose him. His finance. His marriage and health. Turn the name of Jesus Christ. Pull out the sicknesses, the diseases, the evil rings and covenants. What have you done to him and the family? Tried to make him useless. Say that clearly. Tried to make him useless to destroy his life. How? What did you use to make him useless and to destroy his life? Block his jobs. Block his jobs. How did you do that? Nobody wants to employ him. Nobody wants to employ him. Nobody wants to employ him. What did you use to block his job and stop people from employing him? Oh, oh his certificates have destroyed them. They are just like paper. What did you do to the certificate? How did you destroy the certificates? How? I just... There's what? Put it, put, I put something on it so that it doesn't... It's not effective. Who are you that are destroying him in that way? What are your evil names? Uh, Leviathan. Leviathan. Speak louder. Leviathan. I'm Leviathan. Leviat Leviathan. Yes, I'm Leviathan. Where is your base? In the deep ocean. What is the name of the ocean? The Atlantic Ocean. How do you operate and how many people have you tied their jobs, destroyed their jobs and their lives? How many people all around the world? A lot of them. Many, many, many people. And many, many people. What did you use to destroy them? Like what did you use? What did you use to destroy people like that? They, I just, I just covered their certificate, their qualification. So as soon as anybody sees, they just throw it away. What certificates does he have? Oh, he's got a lot of certificates. Mention them. He's got a doctorate. He's got engineering degrees. 
He's got a lot, but they are all useless. Say that clearly. Uh, he's got a lot, but mention all of them. Don't hide any one of them. Mention them. He's got two bachelor's degrees. He's got postgrad two postgraduate degrees, and he's got a doctorate degree. And they are useless. What course? Or rather, courses. He didn't get all these certificates and degrees. Oh. Uh, engineering. He's got two engineering degrees. He's got a postgraduate in construction and project management. He's got a, another one in computer design for mechanical degree, engineering, and he's got a doctorate in ex educational leadership. Yes, he's very, very smart. How do you mean? He is very, very, he can solve problems. But, I, oh. What are the problems that he is currently solving that makes him to be very, very smart? Uh, when it comes to mathematics or analytics, he's very good. He's good, he's good, he's good, he's good. Uh, in leadership, he's very good. Uh, uh, uh. Who, who else is hiding in him apart from the Leviathan from Atlantic Ocean? Yeah, I, I'm holding his finances. I've put a tight grip on his finances. Uh, who else is hiding in him? Mention your names. Who else? Lucifer, Lucifer. Lucifer. Say that clearly. Lucifer. How do you operate, you Lucifer? Yeah. What are your evil assignments? Yeah. Huh? I just reduce him to nothing. Nothing, nothing, nothing. How? Explain. And how did you tie his finances? Uh, I just make sure he doesn't go above a number. Meaning, if he does not work, there will not be any means for him to be financially blessed. Is even, that what you mean? Even if he works, there's no pay. Nothing, no reward. He just, he's just there. There are so many people, they have gotten employment. They are even working. Yeah. Yeah, they give in their best, but when it comes to receiving payment yes. for what they have done, they are not even being remembered. Yes. Many of them are working without being paid. Yes. Who is the cause? I am the cause. Who are you? I am the cause. I told you I am Lucifer. I am the cause. How many people have you caused to be working without receiving millions. payments for what they have done all around the world? How millions, many? Billions and billions of people. But they don't know. They don't know. Billions of people. How do you mean that they don't know? What did you use to blind their mind they from just, knowing? Huh? They just keep on working, keep on working, hoping that it will change, but it will never change. Oh. What must be done, either by them, either by them, or someone else, to get people like this completely delivered from your evil hands, Lucifer, Leviathan, and the like? They need to come to a place like this. What is the name of this place that you say they need to come to? They need to come to Koja. Call the full meaning. City of Jesus Christ International Ministries. Say that again. City of Jesus Christ International Ministries. Meaning you are saying City of Jesus International Ministry? Yes. Say that yourself. City of Jesus Christ International Ministries. 
who is in the city of Jesus International Ministry. Jesus. That sets people free from your evil hands. You Jesus. evil spirits. Jesus. Jesus. Christopher O.J. preached a message, taught a message today, titled, Jesus Christ is the real peace deal. Yes. You were hiding in him when that message was being taught and preached. Yes. What is in that message that exposed you now and that will destroy all of you? Peace. Jesus Christ is the real peace deal. Is that message yes. from man or from God? Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. It's from the Holy Spirit. Say that clearly. It's from the Holy Spirit. It's from Jesus Christ. There are so many peace deals that have been recommended by people all around the world. Yes. They will say this kind of peace deal will solve this problem and bring peace to this tribe, to this country, to this nation, to this continent, and even to this region. Which of these peace deals is the real peace deal that should be welcomed by everyone? In the world. Jesus Christ is the real peace deal. Jesus Christ is the real peace deal. <laughs> what if they say, we are children of God. Jesus Christ is our brother. We know where he comes from. Look at where he is from. We know his family. We have history of his birth and fail to know that Jesus Christ is the real peace deal that will bring peace to everyone and every region. What if people say, no, we don't know Jesus, so we don't know him. Everybody must not accept him. He is a human being. What if people are saying that? Answer me quickly, you Lucifer. What if people are saying, we don't know Jesus Christ, he's just a normal human being. We know his family descent, we have the history. He's our brother. They know him, they know him, but they don't want to admit the truth. What is the truth that must be admitted by everybody? That Jesus Christ is Lord. Say that clearly. That Jesus Christ is Lord. Is he the Lord of some certain people or the Lord of everyone in the world? Jesus Christ is the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings. Yes. What message do you lose if our Leviathan and other powers of darkness have for? Regions that are at war. Regions that are in conflict. Regions or nations that lack peace. What message do you have for them that will enable them to know that Jesus Christ is the real peace deal? The Bible says, if my people shall call upon my name. I will hear them and heal their land. And Jesus Christ is the only one that can bring peace anywhere in the world, anywhere in the universe. Yes. Who blinded people's mind? Who blinded people's mind? conscience, and even hearts from knowing that Jesus Christ is the real peace deal. It's Lucifer and the kingdom of darkness. Yes.
Jesus Christ, the real peace deal, was born at Christmas. And through him, everlasting peace entered into the world. Any moment from now, there will be festive period, season that marks the birth of Jesus Christ. What message do you have for everyone who would assemble all around the world to celebrate Christmas and other festive periods? What message do you have for them, you Lucifer, that will not allow them to be tormented by you? Yeah, they need to seek Jesus. They need to not just have a festival. They need to, to acknowledge God, acknowledge Jesus as their personal savior. How should Christmas be celebrated? In sin or in holiness? Christmas in holiness is a time of reverence to Jesus. Say that clearly. Christmas should be a time of reverence to Jesus. Many people go out partying, clubbing, carousing, and promoting immoral activities during Christmas. What message do you have for them that will enable them to celebrate Christmas the way God has planned it to be celebrated? They should fast and pray and seek the face of God. That again. They should fast and pray and seek the face of God. <coughs> what have you done to his marriage? I destroyed it. Say that clearly. I destroyed it. What did you use? I destroyed it, always quarreling and misunderstanding. Go ahead and explain. What has he been crying for? And who made him to be crying? I just destroyed it. I just destroyed it. You have been exposed to now. What will happen to his marriage and to the things you have destroyed? You evil spirits. I'm going to lose him forever. Say that clearly. I'm going to lose him forever. Why are you crying when it comes to your restoration? Why are you crying? Why did you suddenly start crying? Why? Why? Do you not want them to be restored? God's hand is over his life. Speak louder. God's hand is over his life. If all of you, Leviathan, Lucifer, spiritual wife, and ancestral spirits are destroyed, what will happen to his marriage and all the things you have destroyed in his life? And they will come back to him immediately. Immediately it will be restored. There are people by his side who are there to him. That's his wife and his son. <laughs> what kind of sickness did you cause him and probably others in the family? Diabetes, 
high blood pressure, asthma. Yes. 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 Let's hear from you, madam. You've listened to the confessions of the evil spirits. What do you know and what do you have to say about these things? Yeah, this is my husband, Peter Renner, and um, he does have like five degrees. He has a PhD, he has two uh, master's degree and two undergraduate's degree. And um, we've been married for 27 years and um, he's only worked like maybe one and a half year of the 27 years that we've worked. And everywhere that he sends his resume, he either applies for a job that's above him or a job that's below him, or even if he applies for the job that's something that he can do, um, he doesn't get the position. And it's almost like now he's gotten to the point where he's practically given up um, to the point where even when we try to find a position for him, he, it's like he finds a reason why it's not gonna work he out, so. Yeah, he does have this um, spirit of joblessness, and it's been seriously affecting our marriage. In fact, I'm um, just kind of fed up, really. And what, and what, and what do you believe will happen to him, happen to you, and the so-called things that have been destroyed by evil spirits? I believe if uh, um, this is a genuine um, conver conversion for him that things will change in our lives and change things will change in our family. Jesus Christ, what have you done to members of his own family? His father's side and his mother's side, what have you done to them? I have created enmity between the two groups. Which groups? The father's side doesn't like the mother's side. Meaning there is no love, no there's, understanding. There's no love, there's no understanding. Yeah, there's nothing. Yeah. What did you use to create that enmity? I used the marriage. The, ma the father married his mother. And that started the whole confusion. The father had a child with another lady from their own tribe. So that's what happened. Mistakes are made to be corrected. Many mistakes are correctable. Marriage is a blessing from God. It is not a curse. Many marriage is a good thing. You cannot use the marriage and their errors to attack them. Jesus came to correct mistakes. Mistakes he did not make. Why are you using their mistakes to cause disunity and confusion? Why? Because I wanted to make it generational. Yes. Right now I send fire to all of you and I send fire to his heart. I send fire to the blood, his finances and his career, and I command deliverance to take place. I send fire to gout. 
And I send fire to every spirit that is affecting his marriage. Holy Ghost, turn the devil, Jesus Christ. Remove the weakness. Remove the weakness. He leave his heart. <laughs> what you are seeing is just something that looks like ordinary saliva, but it's not. These are satanic poison forces that are affecting his blood pressure. And causing, causing him other sicknesses and diseases. Turn the name of Jesus Christ. <coughs> Father, thank you for giving him another chance. Touching his certificates, his marriage, his health, his spiritual life. And the fruit of his womb. Not only to accept you, your son Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, but also to prosper. I send fire to all these evil spirits and I command all of them to be destroyed and never return to him anymore. Holy Ghost, turn the devil, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Give him a new heart. A heart that cannot be controlled by joblessness, poverty, weakness, sickness, disease, and death. Holy Ghost, turn the devil, Jesus Christ. Right now, receive a new heart. Receive. Be free in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. What happened to you during the prayers? Something inside me came out from my stomach. What was it? I don't know. It was like an ugly, ugly feeling. It was like an ugly, you know, bitter, bitter thing came out of my stomach. Forces of darkness ranging from Lucifer, Leviathan, and other powers like spiritual wife and ancestral spirits. We are the one that tormented your life in the past. God has set you free now. Thank you so much. So you can move on. Thank you so much. I have suffered so much.
your crowns and your rings. Through the name of Jesus Christ. Satan, Lucifer, snake, spiritual husband. Turn the name of Jesus Christ. What have you done to her? Huh? Huh? What have you done to her? You know everything that I've done to her. Say what I've done by yourself. I've completely destroyed her. How? What did you use to do that evil jobs? I used her marriage. I used her job. I used everything. Who are you? Who are you? Speak quickly. Spiritual husband. Mention your names. You are not the only one, spiritual husband. Say all. Snake. I showed up in a vision to her about a month ago. What did she Show see up. in her vision? How did you show yourself, you snake, the head to her? Of a snake. The How? Head of a snake. Just, just like that. Ugh. And she, she was startled. I showed up as witchcraft. I had witchcraft in her office. I threw it at the window. She saw it in a dream. She woke up. She sees things and then she tells you everything that she sees. How do you mean you said you are the witchcraft? How do you mean you said that you are the witchcraft in her office? How do you operate? She hired an office manager and she fired the office manager she continues to pronounce de destructive words over her practice everybody she works with they work with her for a while and then they just curse her staff curse her they just take her money she steal from her she has nothing what have they been stealing from they her? They steal her products, they steal her money, and they try to destroy her name. Who are those that have been doing that evil jobs my, in our office? They're my agents. How do you mean? Which kingdom do they belong to? Kingdom of God. Or kingdom of darkness? Darkness. What is it in her that is making you to send your evil agents to attack her and her career? She's light. She's light. She How was, do you mean? She was born light. She's the only one in her family that has done so much, so well. But every step of the way, I have destroyed her. <sighs> what have you been using to destroy her, apart from what you have said now? Anger. Explain. Anger, anger in her husband. Now I've transferred it to her son. Anger! I destroy her with anger. And now she's bitter and... She frustrated, she is resentful, she's dark, and she's supposed to be light. Don't push me! Leave me alone! In Matthew chapter 4, verse 6, 16, the scriptures call on those who sit in a region where there is darkness, to rejoice because they are light. 
Christ Jesus has finally come. You say that she is darkness. And Jesus, the real peace deal, the light of the world, has just located her today. What will happen to your evil darkness and to all the things you have destroyed in her life and career? Christopher Orji, you prophesied to her two years ago that, and that she's going to be successful, that she's going to make a lot of money, but I made her doubt it, and she's just been going around in circles, and the more she goes what around in circles... What did you use to make her to doubt the message of prophecy? I gave her enough trouble in her office, and she is confused and distracted. She doesn't sleep. She's doing everything. She's like an octopus, but she doesn't have enough hands to do everything. And now she's just spinning her wheel. And she's just, now she's spinning her wheel. And now she's, she's, she's tired and she wants to give everything up. She's just, she just wants to walk away. I tried to get her to kill herself and she won't do it. I was trying to torture her last night for her to just to go someplace and di just die. But she says, why should I do that? I don't want to go to hell. Are you also the cause of suicide? Yes. And suicidal acts that are being yes. carried out by people and all around the world. Huh? And depression. And schizophrenia, all mental problems. Who like, are you that have been causing all these kind of problems? Who are you? I am Lucifer. I am Lucifer. Say that clearly. I am Lucifer, Prince of Darkness. I promise and I fail everyone. I'm a shape shifter. I make you think and trust, but then I destroy you in the process. The Israelites were almost stuck at the Red Sea, but the God of Israel, the Holy One of Israel, came down, parted the Red Sea, and made a way for them. The walls of Jericho also stood against them, and the Holy One of Israel also came down gave instruction, and through those instructions, pulled down the walls of Jericho. If you said that you made her like octopus to be spining in just one place, are you not seeing the way maker making way for her, even as you are speaking now? She preaches that every time. Even a couple weeks ago, she preached that to her niece who has cancer of the cervix. She preached that Red Sea crossing the last time when I dis 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 distracted her and detoured her from her assignment as an OBGYN. She was preaching that to herself, but I filled her with fear so she would never cross. She never crossed. I diverted her, and she's been in the wilderness for a long time. She'll never get out. She will never get out. Were you able to stop the Israelites from crossing the Red Sea? Yes or no? You, Lucifer? You know I didn't. You know I couldn't. There was the angel of God there. There was the angel of God there. Greater than the angel of God is here at the city of Jesus International Ministry. His name is Jesus Christ. Now listen. Were you able to stop the Israelites from entering into the promised land, the land of Canaan? You, Lucifer, yes or no? No. And I try to stop her through her board's exam. And you, you, you pray for her. You pray for her. Why did you do that? Why? Why? I wanted her to fail everything. And not only that, you prayed for her friend. Why did you do that, Christopher Orgy? Why? Why? No one questions God's servants. For the services they are rendering are for God and his children. Not for you, evil spirits. Not even for you, Lucifer, Satan, or serpent. Now, Why hear you? this. Were you able to keep Jesus Christ in the grave forever? 
No. Baby. You spirit of death? You Lucifer? Baby. Yes or no? No, they faked me out. I thought I had it in the bag. But that was, I, they kept it from me. I didn't know the full plan. And when he died, I thought I won. But I didn't. Who are you that thought that you won Jesus Christ? I am the prince of darkness! Don't ask me any more questions! You cannot release her! You cannot release her! I have had her in the bag all these years. She's been going everywhere. And no. one will come out, they'll come back in. She comes back to her husband, and anger will come in, and I will just walk back in again because she is misaligned. And you can't be misaligned and make it. You do, have to be do you fully know? Alive. Do you know where you are and where she has come? You called her five times. How do you mean? Explain. You told her she needed to come and her family needed to come. And I knew this was not going to be a good thing. I tried to get her son to discourage her from coming. I've, I've tried. I tried. I delayed and delayed and she came. I've tortured her the whole way. What did you use to torture her? And what was her intention of trying to prevent her from coming and visiting the city of Jesus International because, Ministry? Because I knew that you, when they got here, they would see grace. They would see love. They won't see drama. And they will be delivered. Now you've released your husband. I exchanged his destiny. His brother took his destiny. His brother took his destiny. And he's been going around as a useless person. And now he believes it. And now you've come and released him. Why? Who is in Christopher Oji that released this man you have made to be jobless for so many years? Who is in Christopher Oji? Light. You know his name? Is it a fake light? Or the true light of God? He's the light of the world that pierced the darkness and the darkness did not even know him. This kind of qualification and attitudes or attributes are only for Jesus Christ. Why are you giving all these attributes to a mere man, Christopher Oji? That is for Jesus Christ. Yeah! Why are you screaming? Why are you screaming soon after you call the name Jesus Christ, why are you screaming? What is in the name Jesus Christ that is tormenting you? There's no connection between light and darkness. How many people all around the world have you trickishly stopped or even tried to stop from visiting the city of Jesus International Ministry to receive the salvation, deliverance, and blessings. Countless people. What did you use to stop them? They are listening now. Some of them are just becoming spiritually alert. I say, why? I have been trying to come. Something kept telling me, wait, next time. Next time, wait, wait. You have your own church. Your pastor has already prayed for you. You can also fast and pray. They are listening. Now expose your evil secrets. I take their money. I make their money disappear. I plant doubt. I plant fear. I send people to discourage them. Who are those people that you used to send to discourage them? Are they from the kingdom of God or from the kingdom of darkness? They're my agents. How do you mean? What qualities do they have? 
What evil characters do they possess? They belong to the darkness and they're religious, religious, religious people. Say that clearly. They are religious people. What makes somebody a religious person and what makes people religious people? Anybody could be religious when you don't have a connection with the Holy Spirit or with the God or Jesus Christ. Do they also preach the word of God? Have a church or have churches? Of course, they preach the word of God very well. They're very charismatic. They are very what? Charismatic. Where is the charisma coming from? From the kingdom of, of God or from me. Satan? From you, from Lucifer? Of course, me. Say that again. Me, the prince of darkness. Some will say Christopher O.G. is not charismatic enough. He speaks gently, attends to issue gently. He is not charismatic enough. It's not about charisma. Say that clearly. It's not about charisma. You know you have dominion. You have full dominion. You have dominion. You have dominion. <laughs> Who gave Christopher Oji the grace of dominion? The one true light. Can anybody destroy that dominion that is given to Christopher Oji? Either in this visible world or in the invisible world. Can anybody destroy that dominion? Grace nothing, of dominion. Nothing can, that's given by God can ever be destroyed. That's why I still have my powers. Say that clearly. That's why I still have my powers. So you have just automatically answered the questions of people that say, Satan is not working for God. Why is it that Satan, who is not working for God, still has powers? Some have been saying, why is it that Lucifer, who is not working for God, still has powers? Why can't God take that powers from Satan, take that power or powers from Lucifer? Some would say, snake came into the Garden of Eden to separate man and woman from God. And up to today, snake still has power. If God is truly angry, why did he not take that power? From the snake. Is this the way you have answered those questions of people? Say that clearly. I still have my powers. Because? He has not taken them away from me. I can't use it for good because there's no good in me. The power God has given, the dominion God has given to Christopher Orji, is it for killing Stealing and destruction. Those are characteristics of the darkness. Say that clearly. Those are characteristics of the darkness. The, now answer me. The dominion or the power that God, Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit have given to Christopher Orgy is it for killing, stealing and destruction? Yes or no? No. Why did you say no? Because you've been setting people free. For the sake of money or for the salvation of souls? For the salvation of souls. Say that clearly. For the salvation of souls. But some will say, but he has built a beautiful church. He has built this and built that. Some are even trying to know the source of his money. How did he get money? Now answer the question. How did he get what he has? Is it from you, Lucifer? Is it from you, spiritual husband? Is it from Satan? Is it from occultic world? Is it from the queen of the coast or any other power of darkness? God is the owner of everything. 
I can only steal, I can only divert. I cannot create, I can only divert. Who is the source of Christopher Hodges? Grace of wealth. Grace of blessings. God or Satan? God. If anyone plans to destroy this grace of blessings that God has given to Christopher Orji and the city of Jesus International Ministry, what will be happening to the person and his entire groups? Why do you ask that question? Do you know the answer? You got to answer because the people you sent to attack genuine ministers are your evil agents. So you have to tell them what will be happening to them if they try anything like that. Now go ahead. You have warrior angels around you. They fight for you. It's sent fire to the queens of darkness. Agents of darkness in the church, outside the church, anywhere in the kingdom of darkness, Holy Ghost, turn the devil, Jesus Christ. Now go ahead and say that clearly again. Those whose mission is just to come to church, to destroy the church, destroy things around, steal things around, waste the ministry's resources and money. What will be happening to all of them one by one? We can only slow you down. We can't destroy anything you have. We can only frustrate. We can't destroy anything. That is not answer to the question. What will be happening to your agents like that? Say that again. Their darkness, they will be destroyed. Who will destroy them? They will be destroyed by the light. By? The light. Which lion? The light of Jesus Christ. You mean the lion of the tribe of Judah? Say that clearly. Say that clearly. The light of Jesus Christ. It is written, touch not my anointed. You did not anoint. God has decided to anoint. You got no spiritual right to do that. Touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. What are you thinking in your heart? That is against ministers of God. What are you saying with your words that are against ministers of God? And what are you doing or failing to do that are against ministers of God? You have exposed all these consequences. Remember, they are also to be saved. We are not here to kill, to steal, and to destroy, but to save people. Irrespective of their missions, we just want everybody to be saved. That is the reason why Jesus came, and that is the reason why we are here. What will happen to them now that you have exposed the consequences that will be attached to such evil actions? Are they becoming aware now, repenting and getting ready to receive salvation? Yes or no? Not all of them. Huh? Not all of them. Who hardened the hearts of some? 
some, their hearts are hardened and they think they're right. They think they're doing justice. They think they're protecting. Say that clearly. They think they're protecting Christians. By? By keeping them from going to what they think as the fake preachers. You but I've filled them with pride so they can't know the truth, so they can't be set free. You that call genuine ministers of God fake, and fake ones genuine. Are you hearing the kind of evil, demonic, and satanic influence you have been under? How can you be possessed by evil spirits like this? And you are the one calling other people demon possessed. Calling ministers of God fake. Whereas you yourself are the fake one. You do not want to enter into the kingdom of God. Neither do you want other people to enter. And that is why you are everywhere. Even on social media handles. You mount your own pulpit to say, don't go to that church, it's evil. If you go there, you will die. Many of you are even laying curses on your members just because they have decided to go to a place they can be delivered. Repent. These are the evil spirits that hardened your heart, possessed you, and caused you to be self-centered. You cannot fight for God. God fights for himself and also fights for his children. Why are you fighting for God? In the name of religion, you are promoting hatred, hate speech. You are dividing the body of Christ instead of causing unity. Repent. Everyone here is free to go to any living ministry and witness the awesome presence of God for the salvation of his or her soul. Nobody is tied in one place. You are free to experience the presence of God. Not the presence of evil spirits. How do you know this kind of awesome presence of God? It is not by your carnal mind. You must be led by the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God must speak to you. Many people that are here today are here by, are here by revelation, prophetic dreams, and divine encounters. That is why they are here. You can see that those people you tried to stop did not stop. They are the ones here now because they too have had personal encounter, one-on-one -on -one encounter with God, Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. And they don't need anybody to convince them anymore. They have known the truth. And the truth they have known is the one that has finally set them free. And their freedom is forever. How else do you operate? Christopher Orji, you are asking too many questions. I need to go. Get me out of here. You have to say everything before all of you evil spirits will be completely destroyed. Remember you've heard her for so many years. You've heard the husband, the son and everybody for so many years. It is time for you to be destroyed, you evil spirits. So that this family can experience true salvation. That will never happen. That will never happen. It is the, it is the counsel of the Lord. The counsel of the Lord God Almighty that will stand. Not your evil counsel. Are you aware of that? I have my tricks. I know how to get them. I what them. tricks? Expose all of them. I know them. What tricks? Her husband is easily angered. He has been delivered, and all the fruits of darkness are completely I destroyed. I still get him because he lacks discipline in his emotions. 
You can only get anyone who is not in Christ. The Bible says if anyone is in Christ, the person is a new creation. The old things are gone and the new things have come. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has finally set him free from the law of sin and death. That freedom is forever. The deliverance is forever. And the restoration is forever. Are you not aware of that? She's stubborn. She's stubborn. Are you confirming that you will not get the husband anymore? Yes or no? Answer me, you Lucifer. That is up to him. Huh? That is up to him. I will get him to sin, and if he sins, I get him. That's how I've always gotten him. This is not his first time. Based on these prophetic revelations that I've spoken in the power of the Holy Spirit, are you confirming that you will never get him? This lady you are possessed, the son nor any member of the family anymore, yes or no? The son is sealed. He's sealed, but he has issues. But I still can't get him because he has a lot of people praying for him. And he has a beautiful heart. In Matthew chapter 11, verses 28, Jesus did not call people who did not have issues. And that was why he said, Come unto me, all ye that are weak and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Meaning he called those that are burdened, people that have various issues, so he could help them to settle the issues and solve their problems. If he claimed that the son has an issue, that is the reason why he's here, for permanent solution, which will be given to him by God. And he has already received that. Check. Are you not seeing that? Answer me quickly. Yes. Why are you trying? Do you think you can manipulate my mind here? We are grounded in the word of God. You are not guessing. We know what you are doing. He's an ancient soul. He Who is, is an ancient soul? He's full of wisdom. He's Who? That son. That son. I tried to destroy him before he was born, but... You he cannot was... destroy someone you have not created. The parents were looking for the fruit of the womb. And they were inspired by God to go to the synagogue church of all nations to have an encounter with God's kingdom builder, Prophet T.B. Joshua. Yes. And this child was born. Yes, TB Joshua, TB Joshua. Do you ever think you can destroy someone you have not created? The kind of baby you have not formed. That is why you cannot destroy him. I try to fill him with hate. I try to fill him with anger. I try to fill him with rejection. I try to isolate him so he will not be as bright as he's supposed to be. This child was, was born premature, yet he is so smart, as if nothing happened because he had men of God like T.B. Joshua that prayed for him, and he was delivered safely. Are you confirming that you cannot destroy someone you have not cre created? Someone you have not formed. Are you confirming that fact? That truth to be true? I can destroy their destiny. I can divert their destiny. Say that clearly. I can divert their destiny. I am good at that. I give them a fake star because they don't know that they all are created as stars. Did you divert the destiny? Uh, did you divert... The destiny of Jeremiah? No. The prophet? No. Did you divert the destiny of Samuel? 
No. Did you divert the power of Jesus and his destiny? No. If you had been failing and will continue to fail, how do you ever believe that you would divert the destiny of someone who is formed by God through his word and by his spirit? Are you not seeing that you are having a dangerous mission that cannot be accomplished? He is formed by God through his word and by his spirit and his destiny cannot be diverted. He is here now. What will happen to him and to your evil mission? I knew he would be delivered. I knew he would be delivered. I tried to get him to talk his parents out of coming. Say that again. I knew he would be delivered and he would be back to his new old self of being happy and joyful. I got him to, I was trying to get him to get to talk his parents out of coming here. How? What did you push him to be saying or doing that worked against their coming to this place? What did you push him to be doing or saying? He didn't want to come to Enugu. Say that again. He didn't want to come to Enugu. But he has finally come. Who defeated you and your evil thoughts? That almost worked against their coming to this place. You the were, city of Jesus International Ministry. You were praying. You know you were praying. You were praying every step of the way. You were praying. Now, what message do you have for people who are probably trying to visit here but are being challenged by one circumstance or the other? Being stopped by one circumstance or the other? What message do you have for them that will enable them to hold steadfastly to their faith in God and believe that God himself who started the job will finish the job and bring them here for their salvation. What message do you have for them? They are watching you. Why would I give them messages? I don't want them to come here. Say that clearly. Why would I give them messages? I don't want them to come here. Now I send fire to you. Check. Your kingdom and everything. Send the devil. Jesus Christ. Now send message to them that will separate them from your evil chains of captivity. And they, push them to come here. If they come here, they will be delivered if they have a genuine heart. You can't stop that. Now send message to them that will make that happen. If they want to be delivered. Mm hmm they should come here. Where? To the City of Jesus International Ministries. Why are you recommending the City of Jesus International Ministry for them? I am not recommending it because it's not in my best interest for them to come here. Why did you mention the name of the City of Jesus International Ministry? Why did you say that this is a place that we delivered? Why? Because this is where they come and I don't see them again. You are being exposed. What will happen to you? You were hiding in the husbands and you were exposed and destroyed. And you believe you would hide in her. And you are being exposed now. What will happen to all of you. Say that clearly. I don't know why you want to release her. I have all these cases and situations to keep her from just moving forward and now you want to deliver her? Just leave her alone. Leave her alone. Life is in stages. You have to move from one place to another. Life is giving. Life itself is a mission. Every receiver of life is a missionary. They are not static. They move from one place to another. She has to move from hatred to love, from hardship to prosperity. She has to move 
from poverty to blessing. She has to move from confusion to understanding. All the evil cases you have planted against her to freeze her finances and destroy her career must be destroyed so she can move forward. Remember you've heard her for so long. And that will happen any moment from now. You are not saying anything again. Now I send fire to all of you. I send fire to Bermuda Triangle, your base. Indian Ocean. All Caribbean waters. And I command witches and wizards, ancestral spirits, spiritual husband, queen of the coast, Lucifer, Satan, serpent, hardship, poverty, delay, death, suicide, depression, madness. Evil attacks and all marine agents to be consumed by the fire of the Holy Spirit. Holy Ghost, turn the name of Jesus Christ. Pull out everything. I send fire to all wicked spiritual octopus. The nature of stagnation in her life. Chain of deaths. False accusations. Evil cases against her life. And I command the spirits, evil spirits behind them to be destroyed. And I command the case to be settled. Holy Ghost, turn the name of Jesus Christ. I send fire to her office and to everyone there and I command deliverance to take place. Both spiritually and physically. Turn the name of Jesus Christ. Turn. I command her life, her heart, her finances, her glory, her destiny, and destinies of people you have caged in this manner to be taken out of your evil kingdoms, kingdoms of darkness, and to be placed into the kingdom of God forever. Holy Ghost. Christ. The weakest spirit of death and suicide. In the name of Jesus Christ. Spirit of madness. Anger. Christ. Yeah! I command members of the family to receive deliverance. No, no, no. Your no has been turned to yes. The cancer, the ulcer, spirit of death in the family. Upon any member of the family, I command them to be consumed by the fire of the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost, in the name of Jesus Christ.
Let them be free in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm free. Thank you, Jesus. I'm free. Thank you, Jesus. What happened to you? I could hear myself talk, but I didn't have control over what I was saying. God has set you free, you. set your husband free, Thank you. and set your lovely son free. Thank you. So you are all free in Jesus Christ's name. You are smiling now. I'm happy she's free. What about your dad? I'm happy my dad is free as well. And what about you? I'm happy I'm free as well. Are you happy to be in Kojim in Enugu State now? Yes, I'm finally happy to be here for the first time. Thank you, Jesus. So after the, this wonderful exercise and the like, you still have to find time to visit the Synagogue Church of All Nations because himself was is a product of answered prayers that were offered by Prophet T.B. Joshua. So you need to go there and testify as well. God bless you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for setting me free. Thank you, Jesus. We are free. Tell your neighbor, Jesus Christ, is the real people unites everyone. Say, neighbor, do not be used by evil spirits to cause division in the body of Christ. Say, neighbor, we have one baptism we have one faith in God. And we have one God. The living God Almighty. Say, neighbor. Stop saying. This is my church. That is not my church. Say, neighbor. We are one. We are one body. In Christ. Say, neighbor, neighbor. See, what see what you can do to help someone to know Jesus, his true love, his true nature, and spirit. Say, neighbor, neighbor. Stop, condemning stop condemning other religions. Say, neighbor, Stop becoming a religious person. Instead, be a genuine child of God. A genuine child of God is harmless. Is harmless. Peaceful. Say, a genuine child of God Always know that Jesus Christ is the real deal. Say, a genuine child of God. Always know that Jesus Christ is the real peace deal. Where genuine children of God are, 
There is nothing like killing. There is nothing like stealing. And there is nothing like destruction. Say neighbor. If you are a genuine child of God. I am secure. Because of your harmless nature. Say neighbor. Be a genuine child of God. Forever. Say as for me. I am a child of God. And I have chosen Jesus Christ. To be. My real. Peace deal. Forever. And ever. And ever. And ever. Say neighbor. When you are around me. Your life is secure because of Jesus Christ in my life. Say, neighbor, when you are around me, you will have the everlasting peace because of Jesus Christ in me. The real Peace deal. Say neighbor. Because of Jesus Christ in me. The prince of peace. I say to you. Shalom. 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 Say neighbor. Because of Jesus Christ. In this place. I say to you. Peace be with you. Peace be with your marriage. Peace be with your career. Peace be with your nation. Peace be with your continent. Peace be with the world. And everyone in the world. Forever. And ever. And ever. All right. Let us position ourselves for the grace. Grace of the living God Almighty. And of his son, Jesus Christ. And of the Holy Spirit. Always be with each and every one of us. Always be with your health. Your marriage. The fruit of your womb. Your going out. And your coming in. Your dream world. Your thoughts. Your words. Your deeds forever and ever. In Jesus Christ's name. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life and you shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever and ever. This week is the week of peace. The incoming month is the very month that the Prince of Peace was born. Meaning, the incoming month is your month of peace. Say neighbor, I have made a permanent deal with Jesus Christ. The real peace deal. 
Say neighbor. neighbor. I can never be disappointed. If you get back home and someone begins to make noise, cause you to get angry, either your wife, your husband, or your children, or even friends, remember you have made a great deal with Jesus Christ. Your real peace deal. Your peace can never be destroyed by anyone. In the name of Jesus Christ. Shalom. Members, you should be warming up for our uncommon vigil. You should be warming up for our what? Uncommon vigil. That might be announced next week, Sunday. That will prepare us for Christmas. Merry Christmas in advance. Merry Christmas in advance. Commas, new commas. I get it. Highly welcomed in Jesus Christ's name. And you viewers, if you have been making efforts to visit, you should know that we are not fighting against flesh and blood. If there is any obstacle or challenge you've encountered as you're planning to visit, you should know that God Himself will be glorified at the end. Follow the right channel. Wait patiently and allow the ministry to be the one to give you invitation to visit. Don't just buy a ticket without visa and then enter plane and land here. What is right is right and what is wrong is wrong. We are praying for you, and by the grace of God, you will be attended to. Did you hear what I said, viewers? We are praying for you, and by the grace of God, you will be attended to. God bless you. Shalom. Shalom.